Welcome to day number seven of the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games. We have just two more days to wrap up this historic event in the beautiful southwest region of France in the Basque area. We are at Bay Ritz at Grand Plage. I'm Bo Hodge along with Mike Electronic. Aloha to the world tuning in. And we are just moments away of finishing up round number three. We will conclude round three. We'll move on into round four. And by day's end, we're going to get into the quarterfinals. Aloha. Bonjour, monsieur. Good morning. Yeah, well, bonjour in this part of the world. And uh, looks like we got some pretty nice surf on offer. The swell has hung around. Conditions have improved vastly from last night. And uh, we're going to get in the water with another great day of competition. Yeah, we ended yesterday with our first eight heats of the third round. There's a total of 16 heats in round number three. Uh, we have a total of 64 surfers in round three. We're going to cut that in half. The top 32 make round number four. There are a total of eight heats in round four. We'll cut that in half. Top two advancing, always 50% advancement. And then we'll have our four quarter, four quarter final heats by day's end. So you can see the teams lining up. There's Peru. There's Japan. In fact, Japan's going to go back-to-back -back heats. Coming up here is in heat number nine and heat number ten. And let's meet our surfers coming up in this heat number nine. We're going to have Kevin Cortez from Nicaragua in red. Uh, surfer in white, Jonino Arcia will be from Peru in the white jersey. Our Japanese competitor in the yellow jersey, Yuri Ogasawara. And in the blue jersey from Germany, Arn Bern Bernwinkel. So another four-man heat. Best two ways for the final score. Top two surfers advance on into round number four, the final 32. And more excitingly, we are working our way to the medal round coming up on Sunday. And it looks like Sunday might. Uh, Marcos has, has got the schedule for just semis and final. Well, I'm sure they're going to pick the very, very best tide and conditions. Uh, only going to be about an hour of competition, but uh, should be uh, well worth the time. There's the lineup that we just gave you. Heat number nine, Yuri will be in yellow, Kevin in red, Jonino will be in white, and Arn will be in red. And Jonino, one of the past recipients of an ISA scholarship. The ISA has given out nearly a quarter of a million dollars to junior athletes around the world. And we'll tell you about his young story. But take a look at the postcard scenery here at Bay Ritz. Yeah, it's almost out of an a adventure tale, a James Bond movie. But uh, no secret agents here. We've got uh, everybody showing their colors. And look at these pretty little waves coming in. The tide is uh, starting to drain out, so we're going to see it get a little hollower as the morning progresses. But uh, plenty of ample little waves here to perform on. Just moments away from the countdown from our beach announcer, the set to go for this heat number nine. Surfers are ready. They're eager. I'm ready. I know you're ready. I know Jay and the whole crew over the Action Sports Productions, those guys have been working overtime, making sure the webcast has been uh, spot on. Not only the English webcast, but we have a Spanish webcast, and we also have a French webcast. And there we go. Another 15-minute heat is now underway. Again, we're going to stick to the format of 15 minutes due to the time restraints and the declining of the swell. We totally missed two days ago. It was totally flat. Not even a ripple came in, so we lost a full-day competition. So... Round three and round four, 15-minute criteria. Quarterfinals will be reboosted back at the normal 20 minutes. And here we go. Yellow, red, taking a look. No go. We see white and blue paddling over to the left with yellow. And let's see white. Jonino taking a look here. The 21-year-old from Lima, Peru. He'll be up and riding. Yeah, well, this was the uh, no-priority situation. Everybody's on their own. Junia Ursia takes first strike there but goes down. So uh, first thing in the morning, first wave of the day, first uh, attempt, not successful. Well, Jonino coming from the powerhouse country of Peru. They've won three of the last six World Surfing Game team gold medals. And uh, they always come in with a very solid, a very consistent, and a very professional team. Yeah, well, and they've got just thousands of miles of beautiful coastline and some of the most consistent surf on the planet. So, uh, you know, well-oiled, well-surfed, a, a beautiful surfing country, and um, they are uh, uh, very, very competitive. 
The score's coming in for Janino at 2.17. Still early times in this first heat of the morning. Heat number nine, round number three. Here we go. We have a paddle. It looks like our surfer from Nicaragua. This will be Kevin Cortez. Well, Kevin Cortez, this wave was a little sleepy at first, but it's standing up now. Gets a little tap off the top, trying to get to that lip section and gets there just a little bit late. So he's going to have to uh, jump back on his board and get back out there because that's going to be a small score. And let's uh, look at what we saw from our surfer in Peru. Just drifts that tail and uh, catches an edge. A little bit better effort here for the Nicaraguan, but as you can see, he's kind of doing those mid-face soft taps, and then he gets caught behind here, so not going to go very high on this either. So Janino from Peru in white opens up with a 2-1-7. We're on standby for call of Kevin Cortez from Nicaragua, now in at a 2.9, a 2.9. So no priority between yellow and blue, Arn Bernwinkle in blue, and Yuri. Okasawara from Japan in yellow. But time ticking away. These 15-minute heat might, they go by fast. Yeah, uh, everything happens fast. And uh, good thing we've got a priority system here. Uh, ISA has introduced the priority system just a year ago, and it's been a wonderful addition to uh, the whole concept of running these heats because uh, in the past you would – really just be jockeyed by any competitor that wanted to paddle around you. And in these kind of conditions, these kind of small conditions, you know, there's not too many waves. Surfers have plenty of time to jet back out there and grab a wave right after they've grabbed a wave. So with the priority system, even with 15 minutes, uh, there should be an ample and fair playing field for all these surfers. So the first three and a half minutes are ticking down. You can see yellow and blue. They're sniffing out their first rides. And here we go. Arn Bernwinkel is going to take this one. He looks right. He's going to go on his forehand and a closeout set. So that will give Yuri from Japan first priority. And that tide's still a little high out there. But we've seen during the free surf, there were some good open uh, three-wave combination waves coming through during the free surf session. Yeah, and, and it will definitely start to do that, Bo. Look at this left-hander. Um, and uh, here's our surfer from Peru, Ursia. One off the top, looking crispy. This wave's, uh, you know, got a little bit of a backwash ripple in it, so he's kicking out. And it's just, is, you know, probably another half hour of tide draining, and we're going to see uh, that backwash disappear. Standby for scores, last of white, last of blue. Once they get locked in, we'll pass them to you. 2017 ISA World Surfing Games, day number seven on. And here we go, Joninho. little snap off the top there. I like uh, how uh, smooth this surfer is. Maybe um, a little smooth. Let's see. This was an interesting situation because I saw red on that wave uh, when we first watched it there. You can see from this angle just the little whisper of red getting out of his way. I don't think he interfered, but we'll see what the judges say. Uh, you're not supposed to be on the wave when uh, the surfer with priority makes an effort there. There's Team Peru cheering on Jonino Ursia. Again, uh, very early in his career, he came from a small fishing village, Mike, and the ISA awarded him the... Uh, ISA scholarship that they do for a lot of juniors from around the world, and he took that to a benefit to not only uh, use it to help get equipment to help his surfing in Denver, but also became a junior national champion in Peru. And then just four years ago, I understood the IOC, the Olympic Committee, invited him and Fernando Aguirre to present his story to the Olympic Committee to help tell the story, to help build the case to where we are today, where surfing is included in the 2020 Olympic Games. And Young, um, now he's 21, but uh, at that time, you know, he was a junior prodigy that was coming through the system, benefited with the ISA scholarship, and turned it into a junior champion in Peru, turned it into a national team champion uh, for the traveling team, and now possibly will be surfing in the Olympics. Well, no doubt uh, great stories like that are changing the view uh, the world has about surfing and surfers. I mean, it wasn't too long ago, uh, Gidget was doing beach blanket bingo and, you know, surfers were uh, uh, outcasts or, or, you know, 
goof offs and these these guys are serious athletes and uh, education is important and whoa, there we go yellow but look at the wave out the back mike in position here we go surfer in blue this is going to be our german surfer arn bernwinkle yeah good looking set waves got a nice face to work with gets a rebound off the whitewash cuts back left so that wave didn't quite open up uh maybe like we thought it was but uh, at least it was a, a set wave so he's going to get some um uh, points there for those first maneuvers. Kevin Cortez sitting with first priority. Let's watch a series of these replays, Mike. First up, this is going to be the German uh, surfer, Arn. Yeah, he's looking smooth. Everyone looks like they're pretty relaxed. German surfer uh, doing a sort of a soft tap right there. So he's going to keep the score at bay. But uh, he's only got a 1.0. Definitely going to be an improvement from that, Bo. Yeah, our leader at this stage is Unino uh, Garcia with a 377 and a 217. Kevin Cortez in second. He's got a two wave count of a 4.4, needing a 305 to go to first. As a wave approaches, we're waiting for that wave score to come in for Arn Burnwick. But until then, here we go. Kevin Cortez up and riding. Well, Cortez got himself a left hander, a little bit mushy to start with. Let's see if he's getting a reform on the inside. Just a couple little mid-face taps. There we go. A little bit higher on the lip line. Gets a whitewash bank there on the inside. So uh, that's going to help his cause. He's probably going to move into, uh, well, maybe move into first place with that wave. Well, the last wave score for Arn Burnwinkle in blue gets a four-point ride. This was on the opposite side. Yeah, you can see this wave is really not providing... Uh, much vertical energy. He's getting some taps right there. This moves a little better, but he didn't really take advantage of that section. Just kind of stuck his board up there. Not a lot of spray, not a lot of uh, uh, velocity. So he's going to keep the score low. Yeah, Arn Burnwickle has now moved into second, pushing Kevin Cortez in red in second. There's our Japanese competitor coming up in the next heat. Heat number 10, that's Renta o Oto. He'll be getting uh, ready. You got a surfer from Japan, Uruguay, Australia, Costa Rica, all battling it out. And there's the lineup for heat number 10. So still waiting the score. Last of Kevin Cortez. Time remaining, 5 minutes, 55 seconds. We are in heat number 9, round number 3. A total of 64 surfers in this round. Mike, and entering this round, we had four teams with all four male competitors starting this round, including France, Brazil, Japan and Mexico. We had 10 teams with three surfers entering in this round. That was Portugal, South Africa, the United States, Costa Rica, Morocco, Peru, England, Spain, Australia, and Ecuador. Coming into this round, teams with two surfers included Nicaragua, Uruguay, Tahiti, and Sweden. And we had 10 other teams with one single member remaining on their team in this round number three. And it's all shaping up because those are important stats because those are valuable team points. Yeah, and France definitely has such momentum with uh, the girls placing one and two. But here is Team Peru, uh, Junino Ursia in the white, looking solid, really uh, looking smooth and relaxed. You know, he doesn't look like he's forcing anything right now and uh, still got a bit of time on there. So We'll see how long he's able to stay that relaxed. Yuri taking a look here, a Japanese competitor, the young 17-year-old on his second wave, 440 remaining. He opened up with a 1.27. Here he goes, big open face, and only one turn on the inside. He seems just out of rhythm in this heat. Yeah, real uncharacteristic. Usually we see the Japanese surfers get off to a pretty quick start. Uh, consistently getting uh, mid-range scores all the way through their heats. Let's take another look. So kind of a, a sleepy takeoff, comes out to the shoulder, just a little bit mushy out there, so not a lot they can do about it. This section, a little more amplitude, but uh, that's all she gave him. And uh, this is a beautiful carving cutback right there. Beautiful style. Just uh, really love the way this guy does it a little bit of variety there it gets an off the lip with those cutbacks so that's probably going to be the best score of the heat mike you're right a five six seven for yinino and he's currently in the first position kevin cortez in second arn bernwinkle from germany in blue now needing a one nine eight to overtake cortez and oga sawara now needing a score of a four seven one time remaining in the heat three minutes 30 seconds remaining 
The situation up in the top left-hand corner. You see the waves approaching. A little bit of a, a variable to offshore wind conditions. Um, a draining tide. We had high tide earlier this morning, so we got a good six-hour window to get our round three, round four, and quarterfinal heats done by days in. We're going to end early around between 2 and 3 o'clock this afternoon local time here in France. Well, Ursia is taking a look at this inside wave. Got to love the uh, angles and viewpoint that the drone gives us. Really gives us uh, such an insight now as to what's going on in the lineup even before they catch wave. And there is a, uh, that's Jar Perez from Costa Rica. Very, very uh, fast, springy surfer out of, uh, I think, the Hako area. Coach Jimmy Hogan there giving him a few last words. And uh, he is going to continue uh, impressing us with some snappy moves. So Jardinio Ursia from Peru in first. 9.44 two-wave total. The breakdown on his last two rides of a 3.77 and a 5.67. Kevin Cortez from Nicaragua in red in second. He has a 2.9 and a 3.07. Needs a 6.38. And in third place is the man with first priority, Arn Bernwinkel from Germany, now needing a 198, only a 198 to go to second place. And Yuri Hogasawara from Japan in fourth, he's still in it. He needs a 271. He's just registered a 3.27 on his last wave. One minute, 50 seconds remaining. Bernwinkel, Ber Bergwinkel, excuse me, with first priority. Second priority is Cortez. And that's second and third battling for that valuable spot. Well, it looks like there's a few little bumps coming in. This is going to be an important ride for the young Japanese surfer. He's going to take the right because he's got fourth priority. And here's Cortez with second priority. Unfortunately, he goes down and deep bottom turn into a nice off the lip. So that was probably the squarest move we've seen outside of Ursia's. And uh, he will definitely uh, improve uh, from fourth place. Here we go, a German surfer, Arn, taking advantage of the wave approaching him. He just goes around one of his competitors. A couple of cutback carving turns. You see that fatness of that ride. He's really hopping in. Now he'll kick out. 55 seconds remaining. Heat 9, round 3 of the Men's Open Division of the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games from Burritz, France. Well, before that wave of uh, Bernwickel, uh, Ogasawa, Ogasawa, the Japanese surfer, was definitely going to move up, but uh, Bernwinkel has just a one point in his score line. He's going to replace that, uh, albeit not a big score, but it's going to be making the requirement for the Japanese surfer a lot more. So, um, But right now, I think uh, Ursia is definitely solid for first. We'll see if Cortez can hold on to that second place. Well, here we go. Our Peruvian up and riding on his backhand. 15 seconds on the clock. Great carving combination maneuvers. There's the third hit. Probably the biggest one. And a little bit of a smile and spring to his step as he comes in. And great successful heat calculated with five seconds remaining. And there's the countdown. So standing by for the score for our Japanese competitor. He registers a 4-6-7. Jumps up in the second. So unofficial results are Sia in first. Ogawa, uh... Oga Sawara in second, Burnwinkle in third, and Kevin Cortez in fourth. There's the lineup for the next heat. When we return, heat number 10, round number three. You're watching the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games live from Baritz. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games. We are in heat number 10 and getting ready for another exciting round. I'm Bo Hodge along with Diogo, and here we go. Let's introduce our surfers out in the water right now. Rento Ooto from Japan will be in red. Luis Maria Itura from Uruguay. He'll be in the white jersey. Our Australian, the 25-year-old from Manly, he'll be uh, in the yellow jersey. That's Blake Levitt. And Jair Perez from Costa Rica will be in the blue. And here's Jair. Yep, second turn there for Jair. He's driving fast, of course. The wave's still a bit affected by that high tide. But Jair, uh, nice turns. But uh, for me, the story of the start of this heat is that 8-6-7 that Blake Levitt got right off the bat. Yeah, the surfer in yellow um, from Manly Beach. And we're going to try to get that for you. The 25-year-old Australian. Australia coming into this contest, you know, usually one of the powerhouses. But um, they've only had, um, let's see, three of their surfers make this round. So we'll see how they survive as they work on into round number four. And here we go. Diogo, this yep. is Blake Levis wave. Let's take a look at what he did. I mean, he must have done something major. There it is, that's something major. For an 867, oh man, bro. He, the, the wave just kept on getting him and he just went to town on it. Well, the right stayed open and usually most of these rights aren't staying open, but that time it did for him. And here we go, Blake taking a look from the northern beaches of Sydney, the 25-year-old, setting the pace out on the outside with an 8.67. There's our surfer from Japan. Japan went... Advancing out of the last heat. Uh, it did, Yuri Ogasawara. And uh, Team Japan, of course, one of the most energetic teams. Not bringing any of the big names and still uh, in contention, Bo. But uh, let's take a look at the replay of uh, Jair. I like how how crouched he is. Look at that. J keeps getting projection from those bottom turns. But you can see the contrast between this wave and Blake's. Blake's was way steeper and just kept on giving. So, yeah, it's a 4.4 bow, so nothing major there. Well, Luis Maria Itura from uh, Uruguay has a four-point ride, so these guys are posting some good solid scores. Let's watch Blake on wave number two. He's going to be on his forehand, taking the left, gaining some speed, nice carving maneuver, trying to make it around this section, and this is going to be a throwaway for Blake. It will. At least it's going to improve uh, his little bit. And uh, let's see what uh, scores he's going to get for that. Yeah, as we watch out the back, uh, Hayer not going to go for this wave. Let's go down beach and end floor. What's going on on beach side? I am with Janine Garcia, who won the first heat of today. It seemed like it was a bit of a sleepy start of a heat. It was a little bit slow, but fun at the same time. And happy to be here and represent my Peruvian team. Uh, yes, keep going. You made it look easy. Yeah, I was relaxed. Uh, I, I had a, a good confidence uh, on my surfing. Uh, I was trying to get the good ones and make myself a good job. Uh, happy to, to make my hit and Congratulations, you want to say hi to whom? Yeah, uh, hola a todos en casa, eh, espero me, me estén siguiendo la transmisión en vivo, el evento está muy bueno, eh, Perú sigue en carrera, saludos a toda mi familia, los quiero mucho, gracias a la Federación de Tabla, al IPD, por todo el apoyo y a todos mis patrocinadores. Muchas gracias, congratulations. Thanks you guys. Thanks so much and congratulations advancing on and through in the course of a former past recipient of an ISA scholarship that's helped him not only become a junior champion, but a national champion in Peru. And now he's on the big world stage and in round number four of the World Surfing Games. Yeah, it's just, it just comes to prove how important and how uh, uh, how can how deeply can the impact of ISA scholarship can, can be, how deeply affected you can be by it. It's so good. I mean, uh, uh, the... The ISA scholarships, um, I mean, the ISA is not only about competition, it's also about educating and about giving opportunities. And this is one of the great examples in Junior Garcia. And it's great. It's great. I love it. Here we go. Atura now going on this wave. Wraps another beautiful transition and right on the closeout. 
and we can hear Team Uruguay not too far away. Probably Santiago is probably yelling that one. Look at that. That was uh, that, I, I believe that that score is going to rival with a uh, with that eight six seven from uh, Blake Levitt. I mean, this is the first one. This is Rinta Woto. He served it good, but you can see that these were all uh, face turns, though. And uh, when we see the replay of uh, Luis Maria Iturria, you can see that it's pretty much leap. Look at that. Just boom. Foam climb with a lot of projection. Hits it hard on that third turn. And when another one. The and last two were the most impressive. And while that was going on, Jair Perez from Costa Rica, he found yet another wave. He opened up with a 4.4. He did. Uh, but again, the contrast between, between these waves from blue and red and the ones from white and yellow is so big. I mean, it's really, really interesting uh, how Luis Maria and Blake found these waves. And uh, it's going to be interesting how they will to see how they will back, back these waves up and uh, how Jair and Rinta will answer back. The scores aren't here for uh, Luis Maria, Bo, but uh, like we said, it's going to rival that 867. Well, just want to remind you, this World Championship is being presented by the French Surfing Federation, and our great sponsors include Visa, Roxy, the French National Center of Development of Sport, the Nouvelle Aquitaine region, and, of course, the Basque Country area. Our official radio station, France Bleu, our TV affiliate, France TV Sport, and our media partners include Surfline, the official surf forecaster, Surfos Magazine, and Passion Extrema. Still on standby for scores, we can tell you, Renta, from Japan and Red, he has opened up with a 5-3-3, so he's in the game. And there's Luis Maria now scoring in at an eight-point ride. So combo that with a second wave, and our surfer from Uruguay with a 5-3-3 and an 8.0 has a good commanding lead at this stage with seven minutes remaining. Blake Levitt with an 8-6-7 and a 2.0. Blake needs a 4-6-7 to regain first. Jair Perez now needs a 5.78. He's got a couple of high fours. He's got a 4.4 and a 4.9. And we go straight to live action. That's Woto trying to get some of, some of those big scores on his scoreboard, too. He's going to hit that section hard for sure. He does well, but only three turns. PT told us uh, earlier in this contest that uh, this is kind of a number of turns type of contest in the sense that the best, the more turns you get and the best they are, uh, the better scores you have. Um, and we go straight to live action with the Ituria bow. Yeah, let's watch him on the attack. Now he's our new heat leader. So now he's going to be picking apart his backup wave. Now remember, both Blake and both Lucia have eight point rides. Here we go out the back. Perez taking a look, sniffing this wave down. He has second priority behind our Aussie in yellow right next to him. And look at the contrast of ages in this heat. Our young Japanese surfer, 16 years old. On screen right now. Now he's exploded with a 6.67 and a 5.33. So he's now has moved into second place, passing the Aussie from Manly Beach, Blake Levitt. Levitt now needs a 3.34. So a very tight competitive heat. And here's the backup wave looking forward to doing better than the 5.33. And Luis Maria not going to do that. He just gets in at a 3.13. So again, Luis Maria, 36 years of age. And Renta Ooto is 16 years of age, a 20-year gap. But it looks like the veteran and the seniority is ruling here in this heat. Ah, oh man, and so deserving. That eight-point ride was a great wave. And uh, we'll see what happens because Renta Ooto is a very smart competitor. He showed us that um, in the earlier rounds. And Blake Levitt, he only needs a 3-3-4, but uh, he only has five minutes he has to keep focus on he really needs to keep in mind that he needs a, a small score and if he gets it he's gonna pretty much close the door on the rest of the guys so Blake Levitt is the man to follow for the next five minutes as Luis Maria Iturria with that eight and that five three three of course uh, pretty set in those qualifying spots but uh, we can never count Rinta or Jair out uh, we just think it might be a tad difficult for them well, I was just going to point out there, uh, Diogo, that 9.3 for fourth place, usually 9.3, you can win some heats, but not in this heat because the level has been pushed up. Three of our four surfers already in the double-digit range. Perez from Costa Rica needing a 7.11. Levitt from Manly Beach needs a 3.34, and here is our heat leader. Yeah, that's it to here. Trying to get something more than a 5.33. Kind of a face turn and another one. Now more like it. 
and uh, Ituria, 36 years of age. Looks fit, looks healthy, looks very confident in his surfing. Not sure if he's going to be that score better than a 5-3-3, but it will help him to build some confidence. Well, the 36-year-old from La Paloma, Uruguay, representing his country. Very proud here and doing quite well for Team Uruguay. And uh, it's great to see him um, do so well. And Uruguay's doing quite well. Two of their four men still alive in the third round. And here we go. Blake Levitt's going to answer back from Manly Beach. This will be Blake's uh, sick, excuse me, his third wave. And he's up and down. Yeah, the wave didn't look like much, but look at Jair Perez first turn there and just a, a lip slide there. But uh, that first turn for Jair was good, but the wave lacked uh, a bit more. It looks like the scores are coming for our two times uh, Latin American champion. That's Iturria. But uh, Blake Levitt, ooh, ooh. he's going to have to really focus on getting that 3 3 4 because. Uh, Things aren't looking pretty at the moment. Well, there you go. A 6.33. He outdoes his low wave by one full point. The 5.33 is now gone. So Luis Maria from Uruguay now in a commanding lead with an eight-point ride and a 6.33. Second place, our Japanese competitor, the young 16-year-old, needs a 5.67 to go in the first. Needs to improve on his low wave. Also a 5.33. And now Blake Levitt has just taken second place on his last wave. It was only a 3.37 but it is .04 better than our Japanese competitor. So thus, Renta in red. Ooto now needs a 5.38 to regain second. Very close heat here. Jair Perez from Costa Rica now needs a 7.15, two minutes, 15 seconds remaining. Yeah, uh, a bit surprised there, not because um, uh, of the surfing, but because I thought the score could be a bit bigger. But nevertheless, Blake Levin uh, doing exactly what uh, um, was supposed for him to do. I mean, with three minutes to go, needing a 3-3-4, you don't want to lose needing such a small score, do you, Bo? Well, S look at the separation. 0 0.4, four one-hundredths of a point, 12.04 for Levin. Ooto, 12.00. Here we go. Surfer out of Manly Beach, the 25-year-old from the northern beaches of Sydney. Not finding the combination of turns that he needs to improve on this 3.37. And here we go out the back. Our Costa Rican surfer Perez up and down with a minute and a half to go. So now all attention to the man in red with first priority. The 16-year-old from Japan, Renta Ooto. Remember, Japan comes into this round sending all four of their surfers in round number three. Yeah, absolutely. Very exciting moment for Team Japan. But Lake Levitt, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the only right-hander where we'll see such a big score today. I think Blake was so smart in getting that wave, reading it, knowing that we'd, it would line up with the bank and just break perfectly. And of course, uh, rocking it pretty good. 8-6-7 as we see Otto paddling. Now, as he was just taking a look, he has first priority. So Levitt is probably not feeling too comfortable with his situation, knowing that... Uh, the surfer in third bow only needs a 5-3-8. Well, 30 seconds remaining. Will there be a wave in time for the 16-year-old from Japan to move on into round number four? He's been surfing very consistently in this heat. He's only had two waves. Those are his two counting waves. They add up to 12 points, but they are four one-hundredths of a point behind the Aussie Blake Levitt. 15 seconds to go. There's our Costa Rican surfer. He needs a 7-1-5. Uh, Oto from Japan needs a 5-3-8. And there's the final seconds. 5-4-3-2-1. And there's a congratulations between Australia and Japan as they separate, and what a heartbreaker for our Japanese competitor. There's the lineup for our next heat, heat number 11. When we return, we'll introduce them and bring you more exciting surfing action. You're watching the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games live from Baritz, France. Thank you. 
Bon dia, welcome, bonjour, willkommen, bienvenue. We are at 2017 ISA World Surfing Games, live from the Grand Plage of Biarritz in uh, the southwest of France in the water for new surfers. And uh, our surfer in yellow, Vincent de Vignac from France, is uh, the first to start uh, things in this heat and uh, in quite a way, Mike. Wow, what a great way to start the heat for Team France just on such a roll. Duvignac just picking a gem and looking beautiful. Surf that wave really well. And, um, you know, right as the gun started. So he is uh, going to be putting a good score on the board. Meanwhile, Australian Nathan Cook looking snappy there. Two little quick snaps, but this wave not nearly the platform that uh, Duvignac was able to start with. Duvignac, of course, sneaked through that uh, hit in the third, in the second round yesterday, getting a big score in the dying seconds when he was in need of uh, that score. Let's take a look at the replay once again. The wave had a bit uh, size on it, Mike, and uh, he went to town. Yeah, unfortunately, he was unable to take advantage of that big first section, but beautiful, smooth turning right there. Nice off the top, and then he gets this bonus crack right there. Not sure if he rode out of that, though. So the judge is going to take that in consideration. Maybe that score won't go as high as I thought, but still a great way to start the heat and uh, the best wave of the heat uh, in these opening moments. In the water with Vincent de Vignac are also Jace Robinson from England, Francisco Uzuna from Argentina, and Nathan Cook from Australia. We see... Duvignac taking a look at that wave, he's going to lose second priority. But uh, nevertheless, uh, Duvignac, we are still waiting for his scores, but uh, for the looks of it, they're going to be uh, quite big scores. Taking a look at uh, what uh, the judges are dropping at the moment, it's an 8.5. Yeah, pretty generous. I mean, uh, having looked at that replay again, I think he did some beautiful work on that wave. But uh, looking at the replay, it didn't look like he finished that last maneuver. So I just wanted to take it back a tick in my own head. But obviously a great way to start the heat and beautiful surfing from Duvinac, no doubt about it. As we see Red just uh, taking a look at that left-hander, it's Jace Robinson, love this angle. Oh, but uh, he didn't like what he saw there. Yeah, well, Robinson uh, being very, very selective there. Le Left-hander looked like it had some promise, but, of course, when you're in the driver's seat, you know, you got that flow, you got that feeling. And here is Usuna. Gets a nice off the top to start with. Sort of had to struggle around that little section there. Re rebound back into the foam, waiting for this thing to get steep again. And here he goes. Really kind of missed that section and uh, doing a little better work on that. So a little bit of a flow issue for my taste, but uh, a, a strong ride. And here's Duvignac. Yeah, this is the replay of the last uh, wave of Duvignac. He's going to put uh, another score in. It's going to be a backup. Meanwhile, let's throw it down to the beach where Enflor is uh, with our last heat winner. Take it away, Enflor. Looks like we're having a bit of a, an issue there with the sound, so we are back with live action. Well, three, give me so uh, confidence and three, more three, like three, my friend says, Patan, tranquilo, tranquilo in the water to to looking for a, another a second good score. And coming out this round with a, a win and a big smile on your face, seem pretty happy. Really, really, really happy for for uh, earning point, points for the for the team, for the winning team. We already lost uh, two two guys from Open. We are only two more left in the in the fourth round. So we're gonna try to to go as long as we can and represent the Uruguay. Wanna say hi at home? Arriba a todos, quiero mandar un gran saludo a toda la banda que estaba mirando ahí, a Uruguay, al Palito Sanoki, a B, a mi mujer, a los niños, Iker, Vale, Nagos, besos para todos, a mi madre. Vamos arriba a la Celeste, sigan apoyando. Muchas gracias, congratulations. <laughs> Back to you, boys. Thank you, Ben Flor. Thank you, Luis María Iturria, our boy from uh, 
our man from Uruguay who took the win on that last heat over Blake Levin, Rinta Woto from Japan, Blake from Australia, and Jair Perez from Costa Rica. Eight minutes to go. 3.9 for Zuna's second wave and a 5.83 for Duvignac's second wave. So the judge is really liking uh, what the Frenchman uh, is doing in this heat. Just two turns there, but uh, a 5.83. Yeah, well, those were nice turns. I'd say on the first wave, it was a gift from uh, Poseidon. That wave came right to him. Beautiful set wave, large set wave. So uh, very, very, very uh, high score there. And the second wave, you know, it was closed out, but he managed to get two very, very uh, vertical turns on that. So really uh, working to get that second score. Good job for Duvignac right now commanding this heat. And uh, already half time is used up. Midway through the heat, Tuvinga took a very commanding lead from uh, pretty much early on. And uh, our scores are a bit slow this morning in the sense that there aren't many waves served. So this is a perfect moment to uh, tell you that the World Championship is presented by the French Surfing Federation with support from Quicksilver, Air France, the French National Olympic Committee, Atlantic Pyrenees Department, Biarritz, L'Equipe, and our media partners, Gravidad Zero, Vibrish, and Waves, and our drone is back in action, and so is uh, Vincent Duvignac. Yeah, well, he is just having fun in his own backyard right now, getting the benefit of local knowledge firsthand right here. Duvignac just racking up another decent ride. We'll see where this comes in, see if it surpasses the 583 or under. Meanwhile, uh, all three other surfers just scratching for even a mid-range score. Yeah, it looks like our uh, surfer from France is just having a different kind of reading of the ocean. Let's take a look at this wave, Mike. Well, he gets that initial float maneuver and then just cranks two cutbacks in a row. Okay, I like this angle better. Uh, to read the scores and gets that little uh, float there, but nice turn right there, beautiful, and doubles up. So this could actually pass the 5.83. I'm, I'm thinking that it might. It's going to rival that score for sure. The judges are going to do the comparison. We have some uh, international uh, judges here, very used to doing competition. Oh. And uh, Yep. No, no, no. I was uh, checking that last wave. I thought maybe uh, the three surfers on the outside would miss it, and Duvignac would pick up yet another double up. So just in great rhythm. But go ahead on what you're up. Oh, there he goes again. Yep. But uh, did you see that big rock that was just on our screen a moment ago? The weird. I saw the weirdest thing there the other day. I'll tell you about it because just one of the one of another of the cool things we can do in Biarritz. This is Cook. Just. You know what? I don't know what's going on. Duvignac is just a wave magnet. Well, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, Poseidon is uh, sitting there under the sea somewhere with a French flag behind his couch, watching the webcast, uh, drinking a strong French coffee. So uh, definitely throwing Duvignac uh, the blessing of rhythm right now in this heat. Or some French wine. We never know what Poseidon likes in the morning. Croissant, you name it. You name it. Pain au chocolat. But uh, I was talking about the the rock we were seeing. But nope, Jace Robinson will not let me tell the story as he starts things off with a big turn there, Mike. Yeah, great wave choice. Robinson waited for this wave. So far, it's paying some dividends. Going really strong on his backhand. Didn't get the closeout at the end, but really, really nice finishing maneuver. So uh, this is going to be the first wave that really rivals what we've seen uh, Duvignac do. And here we go. Osuna looking like he's on a decent left. A little bit slidey and skatey on that first turn. So this wave f flat compared to uh, some of the other waves we've seen. It's Absolutely. starting to get steeper. One nice crank, but... Uh, overcooks that and loses it. Just behind him is Nathan Cook from Australia. Yeah, Nathan. Uh, another case of uh, overcooking right there. Got a little flare on that cutback, but then he lost his edge. Commentator's curse. But uh, there's a big rock on the right, 
um, we saw uh, a, mo a moment ago. I'm sure the production crew will show uh, sh will show us that rock uh, later on, and I'll tell you what it is. But uh, I saw some kids uh, swimming for and paddling from the beach there, just throwing themselves from the rock. Just the craziest thing. And that rock is, I don't know, but it, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's pretty big. It's a big height to jump from. And uh, this is the replay of Nathan Cook last Nathan Cook's last wave. You see, he pushed that uh, tail hard to get some more points there, but uh, his foot slipped off, and we go straight to Francisco Uzuna. Like you said, Mike, the wave was uh, really flat, and uh, he didn't really have that those amazing sections that uh, we saw Vincent Vignac and also Jace Robinson use. Look at that, Team Australia, Aussie, 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 supporting uh, Nathan Cook. Looks like in the next heat there, we've got Crosby Colapinto from the United States, Dane Atchison from Team Australia, Vincent Romero, uh, Team Spain, and Brandon Benjamin from the South African component. So another good heat on offer, round three, heat 12. And time is ticking down, two minute warning here. 6.70 for Jace Robinson's last wave. Puts him in the second place. Let's take another look at that. Believe he gets a, or this might be another wave. No. Yeah, it is another wave. It's a different wave, yeah. So Jace Robinson working it's on a yet seven. another good score. It's a 5.17, Mike. So Jace Robinson. Now in a better second place with Nathan Cook needing a 9.38, Ozuna needing a 7.98, and this is Nathan Cook going for that big score that he desperately needs. There's an impending um, section coming for him, but uh, that's not going to be it. He's going to need much more than that with uh, under 90 seconds to go. Well, Duvignac just getting another uh, fun-looking ramp there to float. He's not going to let that one... Uh, he is not. Eat up his time, so he kicks out early, gets back out there, doesn't like what that wave had on offer. Not going to go into his top two, but uh, pretty much a lock on first place. Robinson would need an 8.0, and all the other surfers are comboed to even hit first place. But let's see what Jace Robinson could do here. Needs an 8.08 .08 to take over first. Looked like uh, he was gunning for the big score, but can't ride out of that. Jace and Vincent Duvignat, Rip Curl teammates, so a bit of a team action going on here also for them. Although this is not about the brands, this is about the countries. And England and France have a long story of rivalry in sport and uh, on other stuff too. So it's really interesting to see this heat as we go again with Vincent Duvignac. This is a, just a, a victory lap for him. Going for a backside there, there. Uh, but... Um, he goes down, Nathan Cook, uh, uh, this wave won't give him that six, uh, 8 6 one, although he did improve his situation with his uh, previous wave of 3 2 7, uh, two, eight, seven. so it looks like it's Team Europe once again moving on over the rest of the world. Vincent de Vignac from France and Jace Robinson from uh, England moving on to the fourth round. And Nathan Cook and uh, Francisco Zuni say their goodbyes uh, from the ISA's World Surfing Games 2017. We're going on a short commercial break and we'll be right back. Stay tuned because next heat is a cracker.
Welcome back to the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games in beautiful Beirut, France. We're in day number seven action. Round number three, heat number 12, a total of 16 heats make up this round. We've got a big round to conclude here and move on into our round number four action. We will get to quarterfinals by day's end. But let's introduce our surfers in this exciting heat as heat number 12, the youngest competitor so far. Remaining in the competition, we got a 15-year-old from San Clemente, California, in red, Crosby Colapinto. From Australia, in the white jersey, Dane Ashen. In the yellow jersey, from Spain, Vincent Romero. And in the blue jersey, from South Africa, Brandon Benjamin. I'm Bo Hodge, along with Mike Latronic. Welcome to our seventh day. This marathon is starting to round the corner, Mike. And tomorrow, our grand finale of the men's open. Yeah, looking forward to this thing heating up even more. Lots of action right here. Vincent Romero cracking a couple of forehand hits there. And uh, here is uh, Benjamin from South Africa. Ops to go on the left. Only one maneuver on option there. So an opening wave for Romero out of Spain with a 3-8-3. Everybody's just kind of feeling out the lineup. They're more towards that north section, Mike, in this heat. Yeah, they seem to gravitate there as the tide drops out, um, providing the most opportune sections down there. And uh, you can see that with the low tide, I mean, it's almost like a swell grower. It's like the opposite, add water and stir, but this is like, take away water off the sandbar and it gets bigger so really interesting how the tides affect this area dane atchison from the australian team doing a nice snap there to finish so uh not a very open ride but got a couple turns in there so that's going to help his cause dane 27 year old from copacabana the same town that uh matt wilkinson's from here we go red out the back that's uh Crosby Colapinto, and I know Mitch and Camille are up, and it's about 12.53 a.m. in early Friday morning, a Saturday morning. Let's go down the beach and check in with uh, On Floor. Vincent Divignac, what an aggressive lead of this heat. Yeah, uh, I had a, a different reason than yesterday. Uh, yesterday, I, I catch my good wave uh, 50 seconds, the last 50 seconds. And uh, this time, yeah, I had um, a really good uh, first one. So, uh, yeah, I'm super stuck in uh, less pressure. And, uh, yeah, I'm happy with myself. And, I, yeah, it was a little bit... Uh, I didn't know where to go uh, before, before the heat. But, uh, yeah, I think I had a good option. With the conditions that have improved, uh, is it easier to put tactics with the direct attack straight when you come into the water? Yeah, uh, you know, the waves are pretty soft, but uh, yeah, when the, uh, yeah, when you get a, a good one, a really good one in the, in, in the, in the current, it gives more opportunity to, to smash the wave. So, yeah, you have, I think you have to mix yourself when you catch a wave and uh, you have to know what, what the possibilities and, uh, and uh, yeah, you, you, have, you have to just think uh, what, what you're going to do on the wave and... Yeah, I know, I know my weapons, uh, I know what I have to do, and I have uh, some really good boards. And uh, yeah, just go for it, and uh, yeah, I got, I, I got a lot of uh, support from my French team, and from the people on the beach, so this is amazing. Yeah. Bravo, merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, merci à tous qui nous regardent. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Anne, and congratulations from the local surfer from Hasigor, just north up the coast, has made his way into round number four. And right now, France has two of their four surfers from this round into round number four. And we'll keep track of Jeremy Flores and Joan Deru as they come up uh, later on in this round. Nine minutes, 12 seconds remaining, a 6.43 combination from the surfer out of Cape Town, South Africa, Brandon Benjamin with a 4.1 and a 2.33. From Copacabana, Australia, Dane Atchison has an opening wave of a 5.17. Vincent Romero from Spain with a 3.83 and no waves yet uh, for the register, but still a short ride for Crosby Colapinto, the 15-year-old from San Clemente, California. You see him on screen paddling there with our Spanish surfer off to the right. Scores are coming in. We'll get you updated. And here's what we missed during the interview. Yeah, well, thus far, it looks like staying busy has been the order of this heat. And uh, 
Crosby Colapinto getting a little left-hander there, doing two little taps. So uh, going to keep that score relatively small. I'm sure he's looking for something to unleash. And there's Crosby. He's currently uh, 15 years old. That WQS ranking is actually his brother, uh, Griffin Colapinto. Griffin is number 24. And uh, I believe that's Griffin's uh, picture there, say, too. It looks like twins right there. No, nah, no. Nah. So we got the hometown right. We got the name right. We got the age right. But we got older brother Griffin's a, uh, picture and his QS ranking. Griffin's over down in Japan surfing the 6,000 event at the QS of the uh, World Surf League. And uh, Crosby making a name for himself. He's an NSSA national champion. He's a Surfing America junior champion. And he'll be defending his title coming up in about two, three weeks from right now over at Lowers when Greg Cruz and the whole crew, as they depart from France, will be putting on the U.S. Nationals at Huntington and at Lowers. Yeah, no doubt. Good surfing running in that family. And uh, look at this little right-hander. Nobody's uh, poking into that one. A little further down the beach. A little double up right. I think the uh, order of the day still these left-handers. So a three-one-seven for Crosby Colapinto. He's in fourth, needing a two-zero-one to go to the second. Vincent Romero in third, needing a one-three-five at this stage. So surfers are trying to build their house. They're trying to build their base. They want a solid high wave and also that backup wave, the secondary wave score, always looms so important. First priority with our Spaniard, Vincent Romero. And here we go with second priority will be our Australian, Dane Atchin. Well, Dane's got a nice-looking left-hander there, using that priority wisely. Goes vertical there on that last turn. So, yeah, these 15-minute heats, real important to uh, stay busy, try to get in rhythm, and, you know, manufacture a wave that's going to get you the score. Right there, first and second priority. Crosby will now have first priority red, and Brandon, our heat leader from Cape Town, South Africa, will have second priority. Seeing a bit of a double up, is that signs of a new old swell you're seeing, Mike? Well, it's uh, definitely signs that the tide is draining out. And, um, uh, you know, Surfline's reported a similar size today as yesterday, maybe a slight decrease for tomorrow. We'll see some of the other uh, locals around here saying that it might drop off uh, rather drastically, but it looks like there's still plenty of swell in the ocean right now. This world championship being presented by the Surf Federation, the French Surfing Federation, and our great sponsors include Quicksilver, Air France, the French National Olympic Committee, the Atlantic Perigny Department, the beautiful city of Beirut's Lake Keek, and our media partners include Great Dad Zero, Vibras, and Waves. Well, Vincent Romero... From Spain, found himself a left-hander down on the far bank. Sometimes these waves double up. This one uh, looking like he's not going to spend any more time on it. So another relatively small score. I think that could be better than the 383. We'll see what the judges give that. Well, we have a new leader right now, a passing our South African, Dane Atchison, on his last wave of 467. And here we go, Mike. We've got a replay. This will be Atchison 467 has put him now in first. Yeah, well, look at how this wave hit the sandbar uh, and got hollow. That's uh, really important, you know, just even on the basis of that first snap and that snap. That's where all the points were. Does another snap, rides out a little bit. So I guess he rode long enough to get points on that. Uh, my taste, I think, you, you know, you really got to show the judges that you ride out of it. You risk losing very valuable points when you don't uh, really make it clear that you rode down the wave and finished your maneuver. Crosby Colapinto with first priority, awaiting his next wave score. He has opened up with a 317. He's in fourth, now needing a 327 to go to second. Our Spaniard, Vincent Romero, needs a 261 to go to second place. Top two surfers make the final 32. Round number four. We're in the round number three. These are 64 surfers. 16 heats in this round, and here we go. Crosby, Colapinto on his second wave. Bottom turn, hits the white water and goes down. Uh, pretty critical error right there. He had first priority, missed out on that wave, and uh, now he's got to wait. Still got ample time, so he should be able to get himself another wave or two with uh, nearly four minutes remaining. But uh, 
unfortunately goes down on that good looking set wave. Well, Vincent Romero now has locked in a 5-6-7. He has moved into second. Brandon Benjamin down to third, needing a 5-4-1. Crosby Colapinto with a 1.1, not gonna do it. He now needs a 6.34. Time is ticking away. Three minutes, 22 seconds remaining. Heat 12, round number three. Yeah, well, here comes a peak. It looks like uh, Cola Pinto's got this peak on the right all to himself. Let's see. Uh, looks like our surfer from Australia on the left. Another good-looking left-hander. So solid off the top to start. Good tap off the lip. Let's see if it doubles up. No, it dies out. Atchison looking to replace a 4-6-7. And here goes surfer in blue. Brandon, Brandon Benjamin from South Africa. And, and those waves, those last three white waves, Mike, from Crosby, from Brandon, and, and from Dane, not going to be keeper waves. Yeah, uh, you know, Atchison, he may rival the 4 6 seven. I'd like to see the other angle on that. I mean, that was a couple of good hits before it died out. Um, Benjamin, for sure, uh, South Africa is looking at a throwaway. He's got that 2 3, three so he doesn't need much to improve himself, but uh, he needs a, a 5 Point four one in general and here goes a double up look at how the way this wave is kind of growing so two good hits already and a nice shoulder look at this wave is forming up on the inside a lot of maneuvers really coming together here at the end hits it hard so Vincent Romero doing a good job right there uh, definitely going to throw away the 383 and uh, solidify his top two placings here and Atchison in the white Another uh, wave that looks like it's got some juice to it. So good job there. A nice couple of slashes there. Cut back. Throws another little whip right there. So Atchison doing a good job, I think. Uh, so it looks like our surfers in first and second are going to add to their wave count and increase their margin for the lead. Let's watch a replay as we only have about a minute and 30 remaining. Well, Colapinto here in the red snaps off the top. He needs to really get a Hail Mary going here because he needs a pretty good score. And meanwhile, uh, Vincent Romero, I believe, is going to make the requirement even higher. He could possibly even go into first place on this ride. Yeah, finishes well, taps it real hard right there. Multiple maneuvers. And this is an interesting score right here. He gets that first little snap. Beautiful uh, swack right there back into the foam. Little bonus tap right there. So he might even improve on the... Uh, 517 it's going to be close it's a very small wave compared to the larger lefts he was getting earlier well mike i think you described it right for crosby colapinto the 15 year old from san clemente with first priority 40 seconds remaining needing the hail mary right now scores are not in for vincent romero or for dane atchison on the last exchange but it's going to push up the margin right now crosby needs a 541 but more importantly he's probably going to need maybe a seven or an eight point ride yeah, big score dropping for Romero. It's definitely going to um, put him into the lead. There it is, and here it is. Last hurrah for Brandon Benjamin. Gets a tap off the top, but just nothing left. You can see the look of frustration. Here's Colapento. Needs a Hail Mary. Needs close to an excellent score. Nice floater maneuver here. Not a lot of juice left on this wave. And that's all she wrote. And there's the sound of the horn. A 6.67 for Vincent Romero puts him in first. Dane Atchison from Copacabana, uh, Copacabana, Australia in second place. They'll finish 1-2. There's the lineup for our next heat. Heat number 13, round number three. When we return, we'll have that heat and the finish of round three. You're watching the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games live from Baritz, France. We'll be right back after this.
Bonjour, welcome back to Bay Ritz, France. We're in the Basque Country, and what do I see? I see some blue sky out there. We woke up with some fog moving in this morning. The fog has dissipated. It's been cool conditions. Now it's going to get warm, and this is the man of the hour, Joan Daru from the home country, the host country, and let's introduce all of our surfers. We are in heat number 13, round number three of the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games. Joan Daru in yellow, representing Team France. Sebastian Correa from Peru in the red jersey. Daiki Tanaka from Japan in white. And from Mexico, from Sayulita, Mexico, Dylan Southworth. I'm Bo Hodge along with Diogo Alpendre, and we've got another exciting heat. Jawan, he's been on, 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 on. I would not be surprised if he wins the gold medal at this event. No, not at all, uh, especially because he's one of the CD surfers we have here, and uh, he's been surfing good in front of his home crowd, and we go straight to nothing from uh, Daiki Tanaka. But yeah, Joan Duru, uh, definitely a favorite, uh, definitely feeling comfortable, definitely surfing good. And I'm with you on that call. I think he can go for gold. Well, taking a look at this round, 64 surfers made round number three. And we're going to cut this in fat half. The top 32 will make round number four as we see our Peruvian surfer, the defending gold medal champion team from Costa Rica last year. But we had four teams with all four male surfers coming into this round. They were France, Brazil, Japan, and Mexico. And we'll give you some more stats. But let's watch Joan on this first wave. I like this first turn, but I think he stopped the motion a bit uh, midway through it so, so that he could put that um, uh, finishing turn in there. Nothing major I expect from Juan, although he was some uh, good surfing from uh, the Frenchman. Yeah, from the local area just up north, right? Yeah, just uh, up, yeah, just up north, uh, really close by, <laughs> really close to Anglais. He, he's just from here, really. Yeah. Uh, this year, he's had three 25th places and one 13th on the first four stops of his rookie campaign. But you know what? He's on the WCT. He's made the show, and he's finding that, you know, it's really hard. But you know what he wanted to do? He wanted to represent his country, along with Jeremy, along with Joanne, and also along with Pauline, the gold medal winner, who are now in Fiji getting ready for the start of their event coming up tomorrow. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be an exciting event for sure, but... Uh for Joanne to go uh, after that gold medal, he needs to take out uh, at least two of these guys, huh? Well, I tell you what, another informed surfer. We got two of the informed surfers in this heat alone. Dylan Southworth in his first round heat, a 16.16 in kind of sloppy conditions. And this guy is from Sayulita, where it's kind of like this, light wind conditions right now. But he was on fire on his first day, and he's been on point. He's opened up with a 3-4-3, currently in second behind Joan. Daru has a 4.5 in first. Daiki Tanaka with a 0 0.83. And Sebastian Carrera in red with first priority, no waves to his wave count. And again, another 15-minute heat with 11.20 counting down. Yep, and a Dylan Southward uh, up and riding bow. Nice first turn there. You can see that he's a bit slower, but he compensates that with uh, so much drama in his turn, so much style. So I wouldn't say that he's exactly slow. I would say that he, he's really poised. A bit like Owen Wright, in the sense that they really uh, drawn their turns, drawn their bottom turns, and it's really good. Okay, see Joan Daru in yellow paddling over on the north side. He's got an open face wave for the goofy footer. Tags it off the top. Nice floater maneuver. Let's see if he can make that connection. It was kind of a little bit of a hiccup bump there. He had to get over the double up, but he's found the open face on the inside. Lots of speed, lots of transition, and commitment to get to that wave because it did not come to him. That's very true, but uh, I think that wave lacked a little bit of um, a really big turn there. Not sure if you agree with me, Bo, but uh, he did really well to keep going with it. He did really nicely then in that first heat, that speed heat he kind of did. But then there was nothing like major. But nevertheless, I wouldn't be surprised if it was uh, Duru's best wave and the best wave of the heat. And then straight to live action with Correa Bo. Second turn for him. Let's see if he's going to make another one. He does. So you can have, there's a bit of a contrast between this wave of Correa and Duru. Duru going for the distance. Correa going for the big turns. Yeah, we had Alonzo Correa, the silver medal winner last year for Team Peru. So 
All four of these teams that are represented in this round, France, Mexico, Japan, have four surfers in this round. Peru sending three surfers in this round. And we'll give you the stats and the updates once we move on into round four. But here we go, out the back, surfer in white. This is the young 18-year-old, Daiki Tanaka from Japan. Slashes up one more time. Can he finish off this ride? As this wave keeps just opening up, let's go down to the beach with Anne Floor. With Vicente Romero, you just got out of the water. Uh, you guys uh, at the beginning you know, of the heat, you had bigger, longer left. Towards the end of the heat, you were surfing all like sh smaller rights. Was it difficult to choose where to sit? Yeah, the conditions is kind of different, like the other days, comparing the other days. There is kind of two, two points breaking, and the left was so good. But I was kind of lost inside, I don't know, I was looking for the good one. I saw Vincent, the hit before, surfing pretty well. I was the first five minutes seated there, and I didn't find a good one. I just made my hit in the last, last five minutes, and I'm super happy. To so what kind of feeling do you take out of the water when that happens, when you're confused during your heat? What can you uh, take out of it to uh, find motivation for the rest of the competition? Yeah, I, I think this kind of conditions, you just need to take the rhythm of the waves, and you know, I was uh, riding pretty well, I think, the waves inside, and I, I think it's good to, to start the morning and take kind of reading for the next one. Good way to start the morning, uh, winning that heat. Want to say hi at home? Yeah, uh, gracias a todos en casa, y ahí vamos a por el oro, espero seguir surfeando así, y ahí vamos a pelear hasta la final. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Congratulations. Back to you. Thanks so much, and congratulations, Vincent Romero. Very impressed with his surfing. His style and his small wave maneuvers could take him far in this event. Beautiful drone shot, Diogo. Check this out. The sky is clearing. Seems like every day we have two different types of weather conditions here in Biritz. What about the weather when we got to bed yesterday? That was... Phew. <laughs> the sky was opening up. It was thunder and lightning and rain and whatever else you could squeeze in there. This is Daiki Tanaka. One more turn, and we've got some scores to tell you about. A couple of good high six-point rides. One for Joan Deru at a 6.7, and even a better one from Dylan Southworth from Mexico at a 6.83. Giroux in first, Southworth in second, needing a 4.38 to go to first. Daiki Tanaka, he's opened up with a 0.83. He's got a couple of more wave scores coming in, and let's watch this wave, Diogo. Yeah, uh, you were talking about tender, and I strongly think that uh, Tanaka is bringing some thunder of his own, especially in this last wave. That uh, backside flow to finish things off was really dramatic, really interesting. And we see the finishing um, part of that wave of Southworth. The body language was uh, going uh, high on that one, so I'm really excited to see what uh, Southworth is going to put on that one wave. And... Uh, We'll see what happens. Let's take a look at the replay, Bo, and uh, it looks like he's going fast. Yeah, watch the combinations, that zip, boom. That He just kind of puts mm. it up there. You know, he's got the variety. He knows if he does the same maneuver over and over and over, the judges are not going to like that. So he's really mixing it up. Yeah, absolutely, and that's what you want to do. Like you, like you said, the judges like variety, like commitment, like uh, flow. And uh, that's our man from uh, Mexico, Bo. Sayulita, where the ISA was just two years ago for the World SCP and Prone Paddleboarding Championships, where Team USA won the team event down in Sayulita. They were an excellent host. And this year's SUP and Prone Paddleboarding World Championships are going to be right here in Europe, just up north in Denmark and Copenhagen and Kiltmoller, known as Cold Hawaii. And that's going to be an outstanding event coming up in early September. We can tell you, Sebastian Correa's first wave score now in at a 6.2. He needs a 4.07. Hang on for the next scoring wave for Daiki Tanaka. He needs a 3.44 to go to second, a 4.38 to go to first. He already has a score of a 6.83, and that third wave score could take him into the lead. But wait a minute. Dylan Southworth has a third wave score. Everything's going to change. Five minutes remaining, and here goes Dylan. Yeah, now going right, and you can see that style. He always takes his time to do what he wants to do, and look at that. Whoa! That was unexpected. Going for the double grab air reverse. Doesn't get the rotation, but just behind him, Sebastian Correa, Bo, 
going for an air of his own, gets the landing, and uh, he's out of there. Okay, guys are taken to the air right now, both for Dylan and both for Sebastian. So we'll be waiting for those scores. We can tell you the third wave score is now in for Dylan Southworth. That puts him in the third place, and he is behind Daiki Tanaka, who has taken the lead. Jawan Daru has gone from first to third. Tanaka's last wave of 5.5. Southworth's previous wave was a 4.53, but we have a red and blue still yet to be tallied. Jawan needs a 4.67. Sebastian needs a 5.17. Four minutes, 10 seconds remaining. The tightest of heats. That's what we're watching here. And uh, look at them. Everyone has a six-point score. Um, and uh, it's going to be in the backups that this heat will be decided. First priority with the man uh, that needs it the most, it's Joan Duru in the sense that he's surfing in front of his home crowd. But look at that, Sebastian Correa. That second turn was good, but goes down after that. Yeah, the judges want to see complete of ride, so... Seabass is going to get out there and do a little bit more. And there's Daiki. I want to know what's going on. Well, Daiki, we can tell you, you are in the lead right now. But that thing could change. And let's watch a replay. This will be last of Sebastian Correa. I like the air. It's not a clean landing, but it, it will get him some points, absolutely, as we go straight to the replay of uh, Dylan Southworth. And look at uh, what he launches here. It goes for the double grab air reverse. Uh, doesn't get the completion. You don't see many of those errors nowadays, but it's good to know that Dylan is not afraid to bring some variety, some variation, and in some uh, exciting moments. 4.33, still another score yet to be tallied up for Correa in red. Here we go, Joan Darug on the bubble of elimination. These are four, six, seven. Yep, two turns for Joan. Ooh, a claim there for the Frenchman, needing a four, six, seven to go over Dylan Southworth and go back into a qualifying spot with three minutes to go. Um, Point one three separating Southworth and Giroud. Let's watch Joanne here on the takeoff. This will be his backhand. He's a goofy footer. Nice snap. Punches it right there on the closeout. So just two maneuvers. Is it enough for a four, six, seven? Uh, I think it's going to be just there. It's going to be close because remember his opening wave was a 4.5. So I know the judges are going to compare wave one, wave three with Joan, and maybe a couple of other waves that were ridden in this heat. Maybe Sebastian Correa's second wave that came in at a 4.33. Yeah, I wish we could see that wave from a new angle because, um, yeah, that was really interesting. That wave from Duru, I'd love to see it from the front. 4.93 for the wave, Bo. So he goes to second. <sighs> And then we'll see what happens. Unbelievable. Look at this. All four surfers in the double digits, all four surfers with a six, is coming down to the backup wave. And Giroux now has a 493 backup. Dylan Southworth in third, needing a 481. Sebastian Correa needing a 544. Second turn for Daiki Tanaka. Look at that. Goes around the section, but uh, the wave lacks drama, lacks one of those big sections. Uh, splitting the pick with Daiki was Joan Duru. He went uh, right as we go straight for an air with uh, Sebastian Correa. He goes down there with one minute and 20 seconds to go. Again, another tight competitive heat. Why? Well, we have eliminated a lot of our surfers. We're down to the final 64 in this round. The top 32 elevate themselves at round number four. By day's end, we're going to have our first quarterfinal heat with our top 16 surfers with semis and final coming up tomorrow. Here we go. Another look as you wanted. Crack. And this is a different wave. So this will be Joan's fourth wave. So more maneuvers. But let's watch Daiki on this wave. On his backhand, second maneuver, wraps it around, closeout section, finds room. Don't know if he's going to improve his situation because he has a 6.83 and a 5.5. Well, very exciting situation in the water. Joan Drew with his last two waves, he definitely improved his situation. I wouldn't be surprised if that uh, last wave of Joan uh, goes uh, close to that 6.7. He has uh, opting to go right now, Joan. A, and a look at the scores coming. It's going to be right there. He's going to improve his situation. He's going to jump to the lead. And Dylan Southworth is going to be needing a bit of a bigger score, just like Sebastian Correa. 15 seconds remaining. Southworth in third, needing a 5.51. Correa in fourth, needing a 6.14. Why? Joan has gone to first, like you said, Diogo, with a 6.37. 
and there's the final seconds. And what an exciting heat. You couldn't get any more drama than four surfers in the double-digit rain, all four dividing, uh, splitting hairs, trying to advance into round four. And congratulations, Joan and Dyke advancing on into round four. We're going to take a short commercial break. When we come back, heat number 14, round number three, you're watching the Men's Open Division of the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games live from Baritz, France. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games. We are live from the Grand Plage of Biarritz with uh, Leonardo Calvo from Costa Rica up and riding on a bit of a bigger board, opting to go backhand. He's one of the four surfers in the water for Heat 14 of the third round, alongside uh, our surfer from Senegal, Tierno Sambe, Taylor Hutchinson from uh, New Zealand, and Imanol Yeregi from Spain. And these this is the lineup for this heat 14th of the third round team friends uh, making it uh, so far three out of four to the fourth round with that win with Joan Duru we're gonna have an interview with him uh, soon but meanwhile again this is the lineup for the heat a very interesting one four different nations four different continents represented and uh, great to see Senegal having a surfer so um, advanced in their first time competing in an ISA event. So exciting times here as uh, Leonardo Calvo has a 4.5 on his first wave. Mike, let's take a look at uh, Blue's uh, first wave too. Yeah, well, a nice vertical hit there. Came a little bit uh, wobbly afterwards, but got his board up there. 12 o'clock, Yarigi. Starts with a 4.0, and here's our man, Leonardo Calvo. This wave, I think, will bode a little bit better just based on the completion. And uh, he skipped that section but got this little bonus turn here on the inside for uh, maybe just a hair of a point more. And we see White paddling up and riding that uh, first wave of our surfer in White, our surfer from Senegal. Look at that. He's really trying to push those backside turns. Unfortunately, the wave didn't really match his power, so he was a bit uh, always behind and uh, overpowering the wave there, Mike. Yeah, it looked like he was thinking more about the competition than the wave itself. Sometimes you got to keep yourself in check there. He's trying to fit in turns maybe where they didn't belong instead of just following the flow of the wave. Uh, I mean, a great competitor will really do both at the same time. They got to flow with the wave and uh, make adjustments as they feel uh, the board and the wa water under their feet. That time, uh, Sambe just maybe overcooking that little section. As we go straight to live action once again, Yeregi on his second wave trying to back up that 4.0, ideally uh, making it uh, a better wave. 
and a much much better stuff coming from our Spanish surfer now compared to that four point ride. But again, um, I like to see a bit more power, a little more uh, strength, and a little more uh, you know a little more resistance against the lip, so you can really get that power from the turns. Am I yeah, wrong well, or am I just uh, over criticizing? <laughs> well, no. That said, he did a great job of uh, you know staying with that wave, having had a decent flow. Uh, got all the maneuvers clicked in, and I think that's going to surpass his 4.0 by, by a long shot. But uh, here we go. There's the power that uh, you might have been looking for, but look what happened there. Hutchinson came unstuck at the end of that maneuver. It's not going to count. Meanwhile, uh, Sambe on a right-hander. He duck dives under. So, yeah, with the lower tide, we're seeing hollower conditions. Still a lot of waves on offer. That last heat was a cooker. A lot of great exchanges right there. We'll see if this heat has as many set waves right now. Uh, there it is, uh, Yoregi getting a 5-6-7. So as expected, I thought that wave would be a pointer bet to better than that first wave. And uh, Mike, uh, I'm not sure if you agree with this, but I read uh, and I, I, I've come to, ch to, to see it and agree with it uh, many times, which is with uh, there's one thing that is hitting the lip, but there's another thing that is putting your board on the lip and letting the lip hit the board. Yeah, well, that's a matter of timing. See, those first two turns, he put his lip, his board near the lip, but the third maneuver, he hit the lip. So he timed it right. And it's also a function of speed and flow. So uh, I, I think that wave was very sleepy and slow, but he made it look pretty good. So he a, did a good job, not to say that he couldn't have, you know, uh, gone Felipe Toledo on the thing, but, uh, you know, what he had to work with, I thought he, he uh, manufactured a good score for a very, very average wave. Last than nine minutes to go in the water. One more heat. We're really excited about what's going down today. We will be running till the quarterfinals, which uh, will then uh, mean, which means that we'll run the semifinal and the final tomorrow, possibly with the Aloha Cup. But we'll see about that depending on the conditions tomorrow. We want to put the surfers in the best possible conditions for the three big heats. But uh, for today, another long day of action. The um, beach is warming up. It's getting hot once again. And uh, let's see if uh, our surfer in red also gets hot in this wave. Well, he's making his way down the line there with those kind of floater maneuvers. Looking for some kind of click at the end. Just a little tap and uh, maybe a little reform on this right decides to get out of it. You know, there's like this little uh, undercurrent over there that sort of sucks up against the wave with the tide draining. So it gets real slow if you're wondering why they don't go for just one more tiny little uh, hit there at the end. But uh, that's it. So I think we're going to go down to the beach. We have the winner of the last heat, Joan Daru, with on floor. Joan, you had the lead, then you lost the lead, then you had half of a wave, and you showed some pretty uh, not happiness, and then you took the lead again for the finish of the heat. Sometimes, does it give you extra motivation to have a bit of frustration during your surfing? Yeah, it was not frustration. I knew. Uh, I had the score, so I was just happy, and I wanted to show the judge I need this, I have to get the score. So that was just I was happy. I was just uh, putting this out of me, and uh, I knew it was the score, and I knew I gonna need another wave. So I just came back fast outside and took another one to confirm it. <laughs> and another win for Team France. Yeah, it's good. I need to make this one to get the title. So I was like, I'm gonna fight for it, and it's what I did, and it's good for the team. <laughs> Congratulations, félicitations, merci beaucoup. Thanks a lot. Back Thank you, Anne Floor. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, a great I heat from our Frenchman with Daiki Tanaka in second. Frenchman and Japanese surfer go on to the next round while we say goodbyes to our Mexican and Peruvian surfer, Dylan Southworth and Sebastian Correa. These are the results of that last heat. Now in the water, Yeregi, Calvo, Hutchinson and Sambe, four different nations, four parts of the world, four nations that are probably here because they want to be in the Olympics. And uh, 
One of the big stories, of course, is that this is the first uh, surfing games uh, after the Olympic announcement. It was during uh, the event last year in Costa Rica that the Olympic Committee announced those big news for surfing. And this is Yaregi making a, trying to make his case of uh, an Olympic. In your time, uh, if you had the chance to represent uh, uh, Hawaii um, in the Olympics, what would it have meant to you, uh, Mike? Oh, it, it's hard to even fathom that idea. It would have been the world. It would have been uh, uh, huge. I grew up watching, staring at the television during the Olympic Games back when you only had three uh, channels on TV. Uh, you know, I mean, nowadays you're just inundated with media. You got uh, Instagram and YouTube and Facebook and yada, yada, yada. And there's like 300 great TV stations, so Netflix, but... Um, you know, it wasn't so long ago uh, you were glued to the television. An event like the Olympics was something that the whole family gathered around. And, you know, you watched your country compete and you saw talent from all over the world to to mix that into your own passion, which for me was surfing. We didn't even have the concept of it because surfing was still just trying to gain uh, support even on a, a regional level and a world level to have its own circuit where there is uh, ample money and whatnot. So uh, it, it would have it just been massive. And um, uh, it's so awesome to see it come to this fruition. Meanwhile, Leonard, Leonard Calvo is uh, working on another good score to match with that 4.5. Already uh, in advancing position and this wave is going to help him immensely. Again, of course, there's uh, also some deep uh, connections between Hawaii, Team USA, and, um, um, of course, the Olympics with Duke Kahanamoku uh, being a surfer, when the one of the most important surfers in surfing history, but also a gold medalist in swimming. So is that something that uh, is really present in uh, Hawaii's surf culture? That uh, Well, the Duke's presence is, of course, really felt, but... Uh, the fact that he was a gold medalist and that he has that dream? Yeah. Okay, so we just saw Yoregi from Spain wrapping up a good wave. But, um, I mean, really, they call Duke the father of modern surfing partially because of his Olympic appearances. He would travel the world and he would bring... Uh, his sport to other countries. I mean, he would showcase it in California, showcase it in Australia, showcase it in Europe. And having surfing be in the Olympic Games was truly Duke's dream. He set it on stage. Uh, I believe it was the Prince of Norway. Um, great off the lip there uh, to start that wave. Looking at this replay from uh, Yeregi from Spain. So right now, Hutchinson's moved into the lead with a 5.27. And Yarigi working on a better score than that 4.0. We'll see where it comes in. But uh, to finish that story, you know, uh, Duke was receiving his medal from uh, uh, a swimming competition and getting al allocates for how great a swimmer he was. And he says, well, uh, I, I really love my, my sport. And, you know, it came to fruition that, like, oh, your sport, what's that? It's surfing. And, uh, you know, it was so uh, <laughs> it, so unknown to the rest of the world at that time. But look at today. Surfing is uh, it's an icon for freedom. It's an icon for um, stoke. It's surfing is a sport, but it's also a lifestyle. And Duke really uh, seeded that vibe, that feeling, that sport, that love of the ocean uh, in his uh, travels around the world. So it's great news that uh, <coughs> the Olympics uh, if Tokyo 2020 will receive surfing for the first time as an Olympic sport. For now, it's a one-off, but if it goes well and if uh, the strategy is right and if the ISA keeps on doing this amazing job and the IOC keeps interesting, hopefully surfing will stay with the Olympics for uh, 20, 2022 and 2026. 20, uh, S uh, sorry, 2024 and 2028. So it, it will be great to see you. We are full on in the Olympic uh, movement. On our way there, we also have the um, Pan American Games and the Beach Games. So it's going to be quite a few years for surfing. And of course, it will all culminate with that big 
uh, moment in history with the Olympics in Tokyo 2020. Meanwhile, let's get back to scores in this heat. Yeregi in the lead, a 5-6-7 and a 4-9-3 on his last wave. So Yeregi is in that first place. Taylor Hutchinson with a 5-2-7 and a 4-7-3 is in second. Calvo with uh, two scores in the four range, needing a 5-5-1 to go second. And it looks like the waves are slowing out, uh, slowing down a bit, but uh, there's still chances out there as we see Hutchinson asking for scores and Sambe getting out of the water, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Sambe uh, pretty much called it a wrap. Really had a, a hard rhythm out there, caught a lot of waves, couldn't put together a score. So unfortunately, that will be an end to uh, his run. And uh, hats off to Team Senegal for showing us their lion spirit uh, this far into the event. Absolutely. Last few seconds of the heat. Looks like it's going to be Spain and New Zealand moving on. And it really are those two countries with Yeregi and Hutchinson moving on to the second, to the fourth round. This is the lineup for the next heat. A very good one. In fact, we'll, we'll be right back after uh, the break. So stay tuned for some more action coming from uh, Biarritz and the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games. Welcome back to Biarritz, France, one of the iconic landmarks here in the Basque Country. There's the lighthouse. You can actually hike up there and take a view. And Mike Latronic went there yesterday, and they cut him off in line. How come, Mike? Well, I actually kind of stalled, took a few pictures, enjoyed the view for a moment. Then I walked up to the door, and uh, c'est fermé, monsieur. It's closed, so I missed it by five minutes. I wanted to go to the top. But meanwhile, trying to get to the top, Miguel Blanco getting to the top of that left-hander. He's already got a 6.17, so good start to the heat for him. And Israel Barona from Ecuador putting it up 12 o'clock at the end of that wave. And uh, looking energetic, Bo. Yeah, let's introduce all of our four surfers here in the heat number 15, the second to the last heat of this men's open main round of the ISA World Surfing Games. And Miguel Blanco, as you said, from Portugal, will be in the red jersey. Jonas Bachmann from Austria, the 19-year-old in white. Rayoni Montero, the veteran from Brazil, and he's got a spring in his step. He'll be in the yellow jersey. And Israel Barona from Ecuador will be in the blue. Another four-man heat. Top two surfers will advance on into main round number four. And here we go. This will be surfer in white, Jonas Bachmann. Starts off with a nice little crack off the top. Ooh, beautiful snap right there. Gets another little bonus one and climbs the foam for yet a fourth maneuver. Jonas Bachman looking real sharp on that one snap. This wave starts off pretty sleepy. Israel Barona taking a, uh, what I call sort of a mid-range wave, possibly uh, just trying to get his amp going. Meanwhile, uh, Blanco making a good decision with this left-hander in this uh, very steep section on the inside, so nice completion there. Well, Israel Barona from Montonita, you remember that spot, Mike. Oh, yeah. Good history for you there. Uh, great memories from Montonita. The people were awesome. The food was great. And, uh, 
you know, uh, people from Ecuador really stepping it up. Uh, Team Ecuador has looked really, really sharp. Glad to see uh, Israel Barona here. Not sure what he's going to get on that last wave, though. Miguel Blanco from Portugal in red with a 6-1-7. Standby for scores. Last of red, excuse me, last of white, last of blue. Here we go. Rayoni Montero sniffing out this wave. Smart pulling back. It was a closeout. Well, he just went from first to fourth priority looking at that wave, Bo. Yeah, unfortunately, but he's a veteran. He knows what to do. It's not going to phase him at all. The wave that he wants, he'll find, even at fourth priority. He's kind of eyeballing this one, Mike. He just may go. Yeah, well, he wants to get his campaign started. You know, these waves are sort of doubling up. Look at that. Actually, he didn't go on that wave, but that left looked like it doubled up um, against the oncoming right. So very, very tricky situation. These aren't like you see what you, you get what you see type of peaks. Got to really uh, anticipate the double ups. Here we go, Surfer in Blue taking a look at this one. This is Israel Verona from Montonita, Ecuador. This will be his second wave. He opened up with a 3.6. Well, a great wave choice right there. Mistiming that big maneuver, and unfortunately, because that really stood up for him. So, And you can see the, waves, the way these waves are doubling up. Bakken trying to read that last section. He's got a 5.77s seven for uh, his first effort on that right-hander. So uh, we'll see if he decides to head right again. Our heat leader right now remains from Portugal with a 6.17 and a 5.1. That's Miguel Blanco. Let's go down beachside and check in with Anne Floor. Emel Alieregui, what was your mindset this morning when you get into the water? Yeah, it uh, was difficult, no? Uh, this morning was bigger and I take the short board, you know, from the small, world, uh, small waves. And yeah, I... I I shoot really good, good ways, and the first one was I five point six or something, and was so close the hit, and finally I, I win with the last one. How is the vibe in Team Spain right now? What? How is the vibe with Team Spain right now? Uh, yeah, uh, we are three right now, so Luis just they lost, and yeah, we are so motivated to do really good this contest and. Let's see what happens. Are you very happy you get through that round? Yeah, so happy. <laughs> Congratulations, you want to say hi to him? Uh, yeah. Uh, oso gusto a Inda Colana Kin, da, bueno, a ver un rengo manga tan se mosa tea chan. Chasu a chiquis de naida, da, bueno, al de un hondo en ango. Congratulations. Back to you guys. Thanks so much, Anne, and congratulations. Advancing on in. Team Spain coming in with three surfers in this round. They're going to have their three surfers going into main round number four. France, Mexico, Japan also coming in with four surfers. Right now, the Frenchmen have got three of their four. And coming up in the next seat, we're going to see Jeremy Flores, Mike. Yeah, always uh, excited to see Flores surf. And uh, here is our man in white. This wave earned him a 3.2. Didn't get a last turn right there, but it's moved him into second place. And Montero finally getting his first start, looking for the double up on the inside. Redirects into the right finds a nice power pocket and uh, absolutely clamps that last section. Well, the surfer home from Sakarema, where the uh, Oil Rio Pro, the WCT event number four, was just recently held. And uh, Rione Montero gets a 4-1-7, so he's still in fourth, Mike, but he needs a similar score, just a little bit better, a 4-8-1 to get into second. So about halfway through this heat, 7-20 remaining, Blanco in first, Bachman in second. We got Barona in third, now needing a 5-3-8, and Montero in fourth, needing a 4-8-1. First priority to the man in red there on the left. Second priority, Jonas Bachman. Third priority to Barona, who's just paddled across the screen. And Montero will have fourth priority, but Montero way far up north of the beach. Yeah, probably a good idea. I mean, he, like you said, he's a seasoned veteran. He knows uh, a lot of uh, strategies that he's uh, worked on all through the years. And, uh, you know, such a capable surfer. Took that little wave, manufactured a mid-range score, and a beautiful last turn. So real impressed with the power he's applying here. And he gets this left-hander. So he's going to wind up. Decides to get out of it. Meanwhile, Blanco throwing some spray, getting his board up above the lip line on that last little click. 
Not sure if he got a turn before that, Bo. Yeah, 6.17 for Blanco, a 5.1. Don't know if he's going to do better than that, but right now Jonas Bachman in second place with a 5.77, but a low score hanging him down with a 3.2. And here we go, Rioni Montero's score coming in. It's going to be marginal, a 2.1. He knows that's not going to be a keeper. It's enough to get him into third, but he still needs that 4.81 to get into second place. Six minutes remaining. This world championship being presented by the French Surfing Federation. Our sponsors include Quicksilver, Air France, the French National Olympic Committee, the Atlantic Pyrenee Department, the City of Beirut, and Lake Heek, and also our media partners include Grape Dad Zero, Vibras, and Waves. Well, Bakken's got himself a left-hander, did one really nice backhand off the lip, and he's following up with a series of hits on the inside. So this is going to be uh, possibly his best wave. Definitely going to throw away that 3.2, Bo. So we'll be on standby for scores for Jonas as he paddles back out. The Austrian, the 19-year-old, doing quite well here in this year's 2017 ISA World Surfing Games. Final two days of competition. We will, by day's end, have eight surfers remaining two semifinals and a final. And talking to Marcos this morning, Mike, he's going to float those semifinals and finals for the most optimum time of swell and tide for tomorrow. It's not going to be a 7 o'clock start. It could be a 9, could be 11, it could be 1 in the afternoon. It could be even later in the wherever the swell is going to hit best our final three heats. Yeah, great call there. You know, give these surfers the very best opportunity. Meanwhile, Miguel Blanco... Just taking a book out of John John Florence's page right there. Just uh, going to the air, going very, very high. Unfortunately, just grenading at the bottom. No no landing there. So uh, Bachman puts in his best score, Bo. Yeah, a 6.37 team net with his 5.77. And Bachman has now taken the lead. Here we go from Sacarema, Brazil. The 35-year-old WCT vet, Rayoni Montero. The 2010 O'Neill World Cup of Surfing Champion. Here he goes, light on his feet, bashes through the white water section. Kind of not happy with his performance. You can see that body language in his face. Yeah, well, uh, more than his performance, I think he's surfing really good. He took advantage of every section. He wasn't happy with the wave. He did those big bottom turn midway into that wave, and then, then the, the lip just wasn't there for him to crack, so he had to do a snap off the top, which generally uh, won't yield as many points as a, a you know a nice oncoming section to crack. So he's going to get a decent score, uh, no doubt about it. But uh, you know, time is ticking, and these other surfers, Bakken, just moved into first place. Miguel Blanco now in second place. So Montero, he needs close to an excellent score to move into advancing position. Yeah, not only Rayoni, but Israel also. Israel from Ecuador now needing a score of a 7.68. Rayoni needs a 7.11. Three minutes, 13 seconds remaining. Heat number 15, second to the last heat of main round number three for the men. Coming up next, our final heat of this round. 64 surfers have elevated themselves in main round number three. And we're going to move into main round number four, where the top 32 surfers, another eight heats, will be run in round four. We'll cut that field in half. The top 16 will make the quarterfinals. And, Mike, when we go to the quarterfinals, we'll expand it to 20 minutes. Here we go. Well, Miguel Blanco currently in second place. He's got this little grower. Does that nice uh, tack right there, throwing a ton of spray. And here is Bachman's wave. This wave started a little sleepy, but you can see the wave just builds up right there. It gets that nice click on the outside. Beautiful sweep back into the section. And then there, one, two, and three in a row. So a lot of maneuvers and a lot of vertical time. And that was his 637. Here we go, Rayoni Monteros. This will be his 397, Mike. Yeah, you see how that wave just died. So Montero ready for battle, but unfortunately... Uh, not a whole lot to swing on. Here goes another one. Deep bottom turn. Cracks it. That's better. That's more what he wanted. Able to showcase his power, but then he kicks out. So uh, interesting choice. Really had a, a, a great maneuver there to start with. It looked like he could have tapped a couple more on the inside. So uh, maybe a sign of frustration, but still two minutes left. He just wants to get back out and find something that he can unleash. He need, now needs an 8.1. Four. Sorry, what is he? Uh, 
Yeah, look at that power maneuver. That's the Sonny Garcia, Pancho Sullivan, Rayoni Montero that we know that won him Sunset Beach and the Vans Triple Crown of Surfing seven years ago in 2010. And he was a year-in, year-out veteran. Was only the second Brazilian surfer ever to win an event at Sunset Beach. And it was in Govea's dad, Fabio Govea, winning back in 1993 the World Cup of Surfing. Rayoni, the second Brazilian. And then uh, we saw Adriano de Souza, the third Brazilian to win an event on the North Shore, the first Brazilian to win the Pipe Masters. Rayoni, he's just out of sync, isn't he? Yeah, he's coming unglued, and I, I, I got to correct myself. He didn't need an 8. He needs a 7.11, so a very attainable score for a surfer of his caliber. Uh, you know, this is where you just really got to hold the mental game together. Well, time is ticking away. 40 seconds remaining. Bakken from Austria in first. Blanco from Lisbon, Portugal in second. Barona from Montanita in Ecuador in third, needing a 6-0-1. And from Sacarema, Brazil, Montero. Rayoni now needing a 7-1-1. 25 seconds remaining. Well, uh, really good tactics there by Bakken. You know, he had a look at that wave. Nobody else decided to go, and then he decided not to go, so he still holds first priority which is key in this dying moment well the final 10 seconds are being counted down and here we go is this the hail mary rayoni montero's gonna get up this wave will count yeah well he has one way to go only and that was right because bakken had priority and uh well it was a hail mary move but unfortunately uh not gonna cut it for the brazilian Brazil sends four men into the third round. Only two elevate themselves in round number four. And unfortunately for Rayoni Montero, he is out of the World Survey Games. There's our lineup for our final heat of this round. When we come back, the final heat, heat number 16, the main round number three, you're watching the ISA World Survey Games live from Biarritz, France. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games. Bonjour. Welcome to Biarritz, France, in the final heat of made round number three. And this one is a banger. Let's introduce our surfers here in this heat number 16, round number three of the ISA World Surfing Games. Jordy Collins from the United States will be in red. The 18-year-old representing Team USA in white from England. Luke Dillon in yellow from South Africa. Shane Sykes and in blue. The host country, Jeremy Flores, the world championship touring surfer representing France. I'm Bo Hodge, along with Diogo Alpendre, and got a couple of rides early in this heat. Nothing marginal, probably throwaways, but here we go, split peak situation. Yeah, we're going with Jeremy in the blue. Nice first turn for him. The wave is fattening up a little bit, but uh, he gets the finish there, and it's going to be a good start for our uh, local surfer. Had a bit of a Split big situation, no possibilities for um, interference there because one went left, the other went right. So it's a safe situation. But uh, Jeremy Flores starting off with that good surfing that uh, we see of him so often in the CT bow. Yeah, uh, a multi-European champion. He was the 2006 WQS champion. And, of course, his big win seven years ago 
when he won the Billabong Pike Masters. He outpointed the current commissioner, Kieran Perot, KP, in that final. Here we go. We'll tell you more about him later. Here we go. Shane Seitz from South Africa. Yeah, Shane has been doing some great backside surfing, and uh, this is exactly what uh, the judges want to see. Excellent surfing. Um, three nice turns. We can hear the Vuvuzelas from the beach. And, of course, Team uh, uh, South Africa really uh, happy with uh, Sykes' first uh, uh, real effort in this heat bow. But uh, correct me if I'm mistaken. Jeremy, after qualifying in 2006, um, he also was crowned Rookie of the Year in 2007, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was the ASP Rookie of the WCT in 2007. You're correct about that. And, of course, he had another big win just two years ago in 2015, those barreling waves at the CT event down in Tahiti. Yeah, Jeremy really excels in big surf. He, is, he shows no fear. 100% courage and commitment, and that's why he got two wins in uh, some of the most difficult and heaviest and slabbiest waves in the world. There's Jeremy Flores, uh, originally from Reunion Island, but he is he is pretty much much of France. France loves Jeremy, and Jeremy loves France. He does, he does. Unfortunately, he, he's not super, super comfortable competing in front of his home crowd. Um, we have seen of him in the past that at the Quick Pro, sometimes he can feel a bit nervous and, uh, you know, sometimes it, it takes a bit of a toll. But we've seen that from so many surfers in the past. I remember, like, straight off my head, Tiago Pires in Peniche, exactly the same thing. Michel Bourez in Tahiti. Sometimes that added, pre added pressure really comes into play, uh, to play and uh, really messes with you. Well, here we go. Jordy Collins up and riding for Team USA. The, he opened up with a 6.67, so Jordy has a quick lead. Here we go, stroking in from Nuki, England. That's Luke Dillon. He's got a 2.33. Flores opening wave, a 3.93. Shane Seitz from Salt Rock in Cape Town. He's got a 5.0, so these guys are starting to establish the pecking order. And this 15-minute heat, it will blow by fast. It sure will, and a Jordy Collins six six seven on his first wave. That's the type of score that really give you some momentum in the heat. We've seen that uh, usually these scores are keepers for the rest of the heat, and we'll count towards your uh, result. There are many opportunities for uh, this type of scores, but this is Luke Dillon trying to get something uh, going for himself. Uh, the wave is lining up good. It's uh, standing up a bit more, but nice first turn. Let's see if he makes it around the section for one more. He does. Gets one more turn. He's going to go for a foam climb. He's not. As we go straight to live action, we do have Flores on the right. Yeah, let's watch Jeremy. He's going to town on this wave. Precision. He's like a surgeon. He's dissecting this wave. And he's got that, that fluid style we're seeing on the posters here at the ISA World Surfing Games. He can just knife those turns, those sharp tail slides right there just riveting just rockets of water out in the air yeah and the style is really pleasing uh plastic it's a very plastic style in the sense that uh, the body really moves in one motion and uh, there's no uh arm off uh, of where he should be and this is white uh, this is white this is a look dylan i like that turn it's the better one but um you can see that he was looking for something more, but uh, it just wasn't there. And this is the way from Jeremy from the start, bow. That first turn is good. We haven't seen that. Uh, cuts back to the white water. It's still going, and he's going to hit the leap there. And a nice way from Jeremy. What I saw there, variety, combinations. He mixed it up. Not every turn was the same, and he's going to get a good score. While we wait for those scores, let's go down to the beach with Ann Floor and see what's happening on beach side. Take it away. With Jonas Bachan uh, advancing to round four, you must be excited about it. Yeah, I'm still a bit under shock because I didn't expect to go this far, but uh, I'm super stoked. I don't know how I just made that heat, but I think I, I just got lucky, got the waves and uh, made my turns and yeah, just easy. <laughs> not easy, not an easy heat, but it was just surfing. <laughs> Uh, team Austria, but you do live in Senyas. Is it nice to uh, get to go home for to sleep in your bed at night? Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't seen my mom for a long, long time. So now when I when I'm home, she's always like cooking good and everything. And I'm, as you said, I'm in my my little bed, and yeah, it's really nice. We just drive a half an hour here, and it's it's like perfect. It's perfect setup actually. 
did it give an advantage to all those countries in Europe that those World Surfing Games happened in Biarritz? Nah, I, th I think so, like for, for small countries like, like Austria, like personally, I don't think I would have gone to, to the ISA if it would have been like in a big country somewhere where it really costs much money to go there. But it's, it's, it's so nice that it's in Biarritz, it's like in the center of the world, it's just look at it, it's so... It's, waves, are, waves are fun, everyone is, is enjoying the, the place and uh, I think Biarritz was really the good, good choice to, to make an ISA. Yeah, but you're doing so well, you're going to have to go next year again. Yeah, we'll see. No, no, yeah, I, I'll, I'll do it for sure because I love competing. I love the, the whole ISA spirit, like all the team gathering together. And it's, it's like just like a, not like a family, but, you know, we're just all having fun. And the contest thing is like, yeah, we, we, we have to beat each other. But at the end, we are all like friends and it's, it's really nice. I think I'll go next year for sure, for sure. Willst du ein paar Wörter auf Deutsch für alle die Österreicher sagen? Bitte, gerne. Uh, ja, an Papa, Jakob, Gollo, alle die gerade zuschauen, Onkel Matthias. Bin in Round 4, Los Tavideros, jawohl. <laughs> Congratulations. Danke vielmals. Back to you guys. Thanks so much. What a great interview. What great enthusiasm. And is he a local from around here? Senor Where's Senors? Is it in Austria or is it here in France? It's here in France, just to the north of uh, Osegore, where the Quick Pro and the Roxy Pro take place. Uh, usually, some of the breaks, um, the se of course, the beach breaks of Senors come into play for those events. And uh, it's one of those good areas. There's, I mean, there's almost a non-stop stretch of beach coming from the Rio Adur, which is just after Anglais all the way up, almost all the way up to Normandy uh, and to Lacano and all that. So you have these villages um, back to back to back to back and Sanyos is uh, the first one after uh, Osegor, of course, Suchts Osegor. An amazing performance by Jonas and he's only 19 years of age. I mean, he, he, speaks, he speaks well beyond his ears. He does and uh, he was giving some very uh, interesting views on being here in Biarritz, why he was able to make it to this event with Team uh, Austria. And, uh, of course, I think that's uh, also part of why we're here, because uh, we are uh, more centered to uh, some of uh, the countries. 245 surfers. That is a, a historic record in the ISA. 47 nations are here. Another record-breaking year for the International Surfing Association. And coming up in 2018, as we are in the fold of the IOC and the Olympic uh, era of surfing with Tokyo just three years away from right now, we could be having more than 50 surfing nations and maybe 300 surfers coming up next year. There's Jordy Collins from Carlsbad, California, and that's Southern California between L.A., Oceanside, down San Clemente, towards uh, San Diego. And Jordy, kind of quietly, he's in second place. He's kind of lurking over there. He's got a good opening wave, a keeper of a 6.67. He's got a backup wave of three. He's just dropped that with that floater of a 3.57. Yeah, and we cannot count Shane Sykes out. He only needs a 5-2-5 bow, and he has put on some great performance in his past heat, so I wouldn't count him out. Uh, and I wouldn't count Luke Dillon either. I mean, Team England has been one of the few surprises in this event, and uh, Jeremy is not safe at all. England came into this round with three surfers, two of them already in round number four. Yeah. Great and stuff. Luke is trying to be three of three. So England's making a statement. And, of course, he's from uh, Turkey and over there in Nuki area on the uh, southwest coast of England, a very rich area where they have the, uh, the board masters for many years that was growing through the 80s and the 90s of, of professional surfing. Yeah, one of the great contests in the world, uh, the great tradition, great history of that event. It has uh, really kicked off a lot of careers, uh, not only for British surfing, but also for European surfing. And I think it's one of those towns that is so focused in surfing, which is uh, really, par we can kind of find some similarities between the culture there and the presence between um, Newquay and uh, Biarritz or Rossigar. So it's one of the most important towns in uh, Europe for surfing and the far surfing community. All right, Shane Sykes with first priority. That's why Jeremy Flores gave him this way, because he has to. And Sykes uses priority. Surfer out Whoa. of Cape Town throws the tail and goes down. Now with first priority is our leader, Jeremy Flores from Reunion Island representing France, trying to go four for four for the surfers in main round number three into main round number four. Time remaining. Look at Jeremy. He's got his hands up in the air. 
He wants situation. We'll give it to him. Three minutes remaining. You're in first with a 6-3-3 and a 3-9-3. You know he wants to improve because of that because look at him. Between him and Jordy Collins, .02 separates first and second. Bo, I'm not sure of the math, but uh, with four surfers out of four in round four and the gold and silver medal for Team France, uh, it has pretty much it has to be pretty much locked in for them. You can never say pretty much has lo been locked in for anything, <laughs> especially with the ISA. Those guys could go all down in the next round, and anything could be happening. You know, so we're just tracking, and that's all we can do because it'll it'll be amazing. Sometimes a team can win gold medals. But their other performers did not do as well, but as like we've seen in Peru. Last year, they, they didn't win individual medals as much as the other teams, but their team were solid, and they were in the top ten of pretty much every category. Yeah, it's just, that's the talk of uh, what's a team. Is a, a group of uh, people acting together to a common, towards a common uh, goal, or is it just uh, a bunch of people uh, acting for their individual goals? And I think Peru last year was... Uh, really going for a team goal and they act as a team, a compact uh, element working towards a goal. And um, yeah, that's uh, exactly what uh, what gave them that gold medal last year. There's the Brazilian flag coming up in the next seat. Heat won round number four. Elevanto Santos will be coming up there. Pedro Enrique, Wesley Dantas and Johnny Corso, two Brazilians, a Portuguese surfer and Mr. Porta Escondido from Mexico. So here we go. Jordy Collins taking a look there. One minute, 15 seconds. Riding, though, this is Luke Dillon from England. Yeah. Again, Luke Dillon trying to make something happen, but uh, he's out of there. The wave had lacked potential. But uh, Pedro Enrique, he's half Portuguese, half Brazilian, so it's going to be a good uh, hit next one as we go with Shane Sykes. Look at him go. Small wave. He knew he had to get something going. Maybe not this way. Maybe he can find something in the next 50 seconds. He needs a 5-2-5. Dylan on the way prior needs a 5-4-8. Collins and Flores are sitting 1-2. The veteran WCT surfer and the young American in red are in the position with first and second priority and first and second in the seat. Yeah, that's very true. Very interesting heat. Uh, very important one, too, as we go straight to live action with Jeremy. But the wave closed out on him. 30 seconds remaining. Will Jordy Collins catch the next wave and hold off Luke Dillon, who has second priority? We can see Collins. He's kind of in the middle there. Dillon is off to the right. Shane Sykes from Cape Town paddling back out. And look at Jordy Collins. He is scratching over to Luke Dillon. A bit of offense, defense. He wants to make sure he doesn't catch a wave. But look, there's just three seconds remaining in the heat. And it's going to be Flores and Collins in round number four. Yep, great job from Flores and uh, Collins. Jeremy op opting for a different strategy, going right, probably trusting his uh, forehand more than his backhand, although the lefts sure are looking better. But uh, Jeremy Flores making things happen on the right with that 6-3-3, the second best wave of the heat. There's the lineup for our next round. Main round, number four, heat number one, two Brazilians, a Portuguese surfer, and a surfer out of Mexico. We're going to have the call for that and much, much more. Welcome to Burris, France. You're watching the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games. We'll be right back after this.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the beautiful city of Biarritz for the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games. We are live at the Grand Plage in the southwest of France. In the water is heat number one of the fourth round. So it's uh, a new round right here, right now. Four surfers in the water. Johnny Corzo from Mexico, Wesley Dentes from Brazil, Eli Valton Santos also from Brazil, and Pedro Henrique from Portugal. This is uh, exactly him, Pedro Henrique. My name is Diogo Alpendre. I'm from Portugal alongside Mike Lutronic from Hawaii. Mike, once again, good morning. A really exciting heat and really exciting to uh, kick off round four. Yeah, round four. So things are squeezing down even more. The uh, number of competitors left in the contest now just 48. I believe we have 16 heats in this round. Sorry, 32. So there's only eight heats in this round. And um, this is uh, where the points really start to factor in. So um, you got a lot of uh, smaller points in the, in the later rounds. But as we go into these later next two rounds, the points jump up. Let's go down to the beach where Anne Flor is. Uh, is it Jeremy Flor is with you, Anne Flor? <laughs> yes, I'm with Jeremy Flores and the whole crowd, the whole beach is gathered around us. You're the big superstar here in Biarritz, France. How does it feel when you have to walk all across the beach and you have all those people like taking their phone stick pictures? Ah, it's, it's amazing. It's, uh, it's always a good experience. You know, I think uh, later when I'm older, I'm all fat and drinking wine and eating cheese. I'm going to be thinking about that and telling my kids how fun it was and how special it was. It's a great experience. But yeah, the crowd here is amazing. The French crowd is amazing. They're, they've been behind us since the whole event. Uh, personally, uh, I'm, uh, personally, this event is already, I feel like uh, we already won because we, uh, the crowd is so, so amazing. So. So technically, you know, like we have to do good results and stuff. But I mean, for the for the beauty for the beauty of the sport, I think this is already a victory for the whole event to have this amazing crowd. So it's and of course the whole team friends still full going into round four. That's definitely like full confidence. Uh, how difficult is it to keep 100% focus when you know sometimes uh, overconfident can can play against you? Yeah, that's what I've been telling uh, the team. I mean, they're all amazing. They don't need any any help for anything. They they've been dealing with 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 all this much better than me. Uh, so uh, you know, we we help each other. But uh, every night we tell each other, you know, we got to find the right balance between too confident and too much pressure and kind of negative. So we got to find the right the 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 balance. So I think everyone's been doing amazing. I'm just trying to follow their step, and uh, they you know a, a lot more to come. Uh, with the surfing getting into Olympics, how do you think that's going to affect the sport? Uh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, this is, I think, a first a bit of taste of what's coming for the Olympic Games. I think the, the, a lot of a lot of people in the world is going to discover our amazing sport. Uh, it definitely deserves, you know. All my respect to all the sports in the Olympics, but there's a few sports sometimes I watch in the TV and I'm like, man, you know. I think surfing should be should be a, should be an Olympic sport because it's a lot harder and a lot, lot more extreme. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a cool experience. Uh, I hope I'm still fit enough and I'm still uh, I'm still good enough to make the team in three years. But if not, I'll definitely be helping the whole team and I want to be part of uh, the staff. I want to be part of this beautiful story. Félicitations, Jérémy. Est-ce que tu veux nous dire un petit mot pour tout ce public qui nous suit ici à Biarritz? Oui, je voulais remercier à tous. Franchement, on reçoit on reçoit tellement d'encouragement depuis le début de la compétition. Pour nous, euh, sans parler de la, des résultats. La compétition est déjà, est déjà, on va dire, euh, gagnée par rapport à l'amour qu'on a, on a reçu du public. Donc euh, maintenant, c'est que du bonus. On va essayer de tout donner pour, euh, pour ramener euh, ce titre par équipe parce que ça n'a jamais été fait. Donc ça serait historique. Et, euh, et voilà, donc on va essayer de continuer. Je voudrais remercier à tout le monde pour, pour nous suivre. Les réseaux sociaux, sur la plage, il y a tellement de monde qui nous suit. C'est énorme. Merci. Félicitations, Jérémy. Back to you guys. Thank you. 
<clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you so much. And Floor, a great interview with Jeremy Flores covering a lot of matters. Of course, the Olympic uh, uh, surfing's new Olympic status uh, making Jeremy really happy. And of course, we would love, as surfing fans, we'd love to see Jeremy represent uh, friends uh, on those uh, Olympic Games in Tokyo 2020. Live action, this is Wesley Dentis, our gold medalist from last year's Juniors in the Azores. And uh, this is a replay of uh, the first wave of uh, Pedro Enrique. It's a 4-3-3, nothing major there. And uh, this is Ellie Velton going for a great aerial maneuver and getting the completion. I think it's a 3-8-7. This is uh, live action. This is Johnny Corzo from Mexico, uh, Mike, and uh, our surfer from Puerto Rico opting to go on those right-handers that we saw Jeremy surf to. Well... Dantas definitely getting the best of that exchange with some really, really uh, impressive power moves. Um, landing a 6.5. And here goes Pedro Enrique. Opts to get out of that wave. He's just got that 4-3-3. Santos now with uh, priority. He's got uh, pretty much any wave in the lineup. Pick of any wave in the lineup. Really, really... Uh, specialist when it comes to the air. You saw him uh, rotate that air 360 pretty uh, effortlessly, nice and fluid. Tide is uh, now moving in. We're starting to see a lot more water coming in, so uh, it's only a matter of time before um, uh, the uh, top to bottom breaking waves uh, feature more reforms. It gets a little mushier, but I, I think we've got another hour before it starts looking funky. And uh, here we go. Santos, a little bit of a tail slide, uh, manages to pump through it, but uh, definitely uh, off timing there. Maybe could have taken advantage of a, a, a down the line section there, but just slid uh, a foot or two more than he would have anticipated. But uh, he's, uh, you know, even though he got two maneuvers in, he's probably going to throw away that 387. Ellie Vent, I feel like Ellie Velton, as soon as he stands up, he's eyeing a section for an air. And I think he was thinking too far ahead, and wh that's why he's a uh, foot slipped off on that occasion as we go straight to live action with Corzo on his backhand, Mike. Yeah, and contrast in styles, because Corzo, he's just really springy, really fast. I think, uh, you know, he's one of those young kids that's uh, trying to make a name for himself on the uh, qualifying series and for his home country of Mexico. And what better stage right now to test his uh, uh, resilience than right here at the ISA World Games where he's faced with a lot of... Uh, uh, top contention from around the world. Meets, meanwhile, let's go over the scores on our screens first. Highlight that our surfer from Tahiti here in yellow, Arihoe Tefafana, will come up next as we see Ellie Velton Santos currently in second. Big tail slide from him, but nothing more after that. Ellie Velton with a 473 and a 387. He's in second. In the lead is Dantas getting the better of that initial exchange like you were expecting, Mike. A 6.5, a 2.23 two, is his backup. Corzo, we're still waiting for uh, a score. No, we're not. It's a 3.57. That's, back that's the backside wave we saw of him just minutes ago. And uh, his uh, second best wave, a 2.33. And Pedro Enrique has a 4.33 and nothing more after that. Uh, Arihoe Tefafana in yellow going over where to sit in the lineup with Hira Terina Tufa, one of the great Tahitian surfers, a past um, WCT trialist uh, here in Biarritz, Mike, as we see one more of those beach days, although I would guess that some people are a bit intimidated to come down to the beach as uh, yesterday we had quite a storm um, as soon as we, we wrapped up the day event with a, a lot of lightning, thunderheads, rain, and uh, some unexpected uh, climateric behavior there. Yeah, it was quite frightening. Actually, there was a lot of lightning strikes, and uh, organizers smartly and justly uh, called off the competition as soon as those strikes started happening. Very, very dangerous situation. You never can predict Mother Nature like that, especially when she's uh, slightly angry. But uh, up until then, we saw the surfers doing fairly well in those really testy conditions yesterday evening. Uh, you saw Wesley Dantas right there. He is definitely uh, taking off on that little wave, probably looking for an air section. 
Seven minutes to go. Dante's in the lead. We're still waiting for something more from uh, Enrique and Corzo. These are the four uh, guys in the water. Dante, Santos, Corzo and uh, Enrique. Round four, heat one. Seven minutes to go. And uh, we see White up and riding. that Santos from Brazil. Just generating speed. Look at him transitioning from rail to rail. Go for the, goes for the air. Is he going to get the completion? He does not. Well, no completion, but real interesting how he picked that little double up and then it just grew into a nice uh, potential air section. Uh, um, not making the rotation, but look at this. Starts like nothing, but then it just grows. He's got the momentum just slightly uh, delayed there on the rotation, so maybe just not enough power in the wave. Just enough, not enough power in the wave, but Ali Velten for now is powering through this heat in second place. Of course, we are still waiting for something a bit more uh, more uh, exciting from uh, Corzo and uh, Pedro Enrique. Pedro and Corzo have been uh, putting on some great displays of uh, surfing in this event. Of course, uh, Pedro, um, Portugal's national champion and uh, Johnny Corzo, one of the standouts, uh, young standouts of uh, Puerto Escondido, when that wave uh, breaks, he lives right in front of that, surfs it often, uh, thanks to his two brothers that love getting some big waves there, and thanks to also his father, Big Jim, out of uh, Puerto Escondido. As we go with live action, Mike, this is Blue. Well, Dantas getting a quick right-hander, but uh, all eyes, uh, Corzo, I believe, or Henrique, in the yellow was looking at a good looking left hander right there i think we'll see uh, what's coming here it is so uh, beautiful wave nice bottom turn top turn combination gets the second click doesn't hold up as long as i thought of i thought that wave was going to run down the sandbar but uh, you know two most dangerous words in the human language are i thought and uh, there's johnny corzo he's got a couple of uh, good turns to uh, work off of judge is going to take their time and look at these scores. Four minutes, 45 seconds on the clock. We can see white, yellow, and red on our screen. This is white, Elivanto Santos, taking a look at this right-hander, so a little bit different look for him now on his backside. Starts with a snap off the top, comes in, slides the tail out, but a little too far, so he loses the wave. Trying to hold on to that second place. Eli Van Alten Santos from Brazil. Scores are dropping for Pedro Henrique. He got really dynamic on that wave. Just two turns, but the first one looked really good. It might just be the heat's best wave. So it's probably going to be um, Dantas in danger going down to second position as we see Eli Velten going for the corrupt once again. Four minutes to go, first priority now with Dantas. And uh, we're still waiting for scores for Pedro Enrique. First uh, scores dropped a uh, point towards that uh, high six, low seven range. Mike, what do you think about that? Yeah, well, uh, you know, he just has such a complete attack. Very beautiful style. Came off the bottom, did two nice off the lips with a good bottom turn. And uh, he's going to get rewarded. Uh, not quite as much power as we saw with uh, Dantas's first wave, but nonetheless, very, very uh, polished surfing from Pedro Enrique. Former WCT surfer gets a 6.87 on his last wave, jumps to first, now Corzo second. Corzo got a 5.43 on his last wave, so Dantas and Eli Velten drop from the qualifying positions and are now in look looking for a score. Dantas a 2.87. Uh, Eli Velt in a 464, and this is that 543 from uh, Corzo, and this is the last wave of Enrique. Well, uh, both surfers here on the screen, very, very snappy uh, in comparison to Dantas's power, but Dantas has uh, great speed as well. Corzo trying to increase his situation. He wants to throw away a 393, and uh, meanwhile, Dantas with a very, very low uh, backup score of a 2.23. Uh, even Santos has that 387, so not comfortable with those low scores as backup. Two minutes, 20 seconds remaining. Still plenty of time to Dantas turn things around for him. But of course, Enrique and Corzo will try and get um, 
some good scores on themselves uh, also as we see Dantas paddling and it looks like the wave's gonna wall up nicely in front of him Mike oh he goes down well he threw his weight into that lip everything looked fine but maybe just hitting a little bit of that chop that we see rising up from that um, rip current uh, meanwhile Santos teammate going to the air can he pull through this and ride out of it I don't think I don't think the judges are going to consider it complete. Yeah, but well, he got the aerial antics wired, but unfortunately maybe uh, uh, debatable whether that was a ride out. And here's Corzo. Uh, he might try to get tricky on this end section. Now okay. just another standard off the lip, but that's uh, always going to help to get some extra points. Again, I remind everybody that uh, the surfers that qualify through fourth round go straight to the quarterfinals. That's going to come up later today. Really exciting time here at the Grand Plage of Biarritz. We are here for the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games. And we are really excited about the action unfolding today. Some great heats, some uh, surprises also, but uh, overall great surfing. This is that uh, air attempt from uh, Eli Felton Santos, Mike. Well, Santos really taking it to it. Now, he rides a little way, uh, but the judges throw down a 2.1, so not calling it a completion and uh you know he only needed a 464 so wow you know maybe just a solid off the lip would have got him into advancing position 5.0 that's what Pedro Henrique got on his last wave improves his situation puts uh, uh, definitely some distance between himself and the rest of the gang in the water and there he goes again first turn mark Mike well he's really enjoying these little left-handers right here just uh Milking this one. Let's see what he got on the inside. Gets another tap off the top. So maybe not going to enter into his top two. We'll see. But uh, just seconds left. What's on call here? No rides. I think they're going to be out of time. It, they're going to be right out of time. And the Team Brazil in just one heat lose two surfers. And Team Portugal, Team Mexico celebrate a great uh, qualifying situation for them. Uh, the first two teams putting surfers in the fifth round, also the quarterfinals. That's the lineup for the next heat. Guilherme Fonseca, Yassine Ramdani, Ari Hue, Tefafana, and Anthony Fillingham. Uh, it's going to be a cracker of a heat. And Mike and Bo will be here for the call. Stay tuned. Biarritz is really coming to fruition with some great waves and great performances. Welcome back, bonjour, for the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games. I'm Bo Hodge, along with Mike Latronic. A draining tide earlier this morning at about 6, 7 in the morning. That rock was gone. It was underwater. We've been having some extreme 4-meter, 15-foot tides that play havoc in the competition area. We've been having four or five hour breaks during the high tide section. So we're flirting with the tide early morning and late evening today, but we're gonna get our way through round number four. We're in heat number two right now. In fact, 
We're going to move into the quarterfinals by day's end. Let's introduce our surfers here in heat number two, round number four of this exciting qualifying round. Guilherme Fonseca from Portugal will be in red. Yasmin Randani from Morocco will be in white. Eriho Tefafana from Tahiti in yellow. And Anthony Filanen from Costa Rica will be in the blue. And here we go, Mike. No takers on that wave. It was pretty much a closeout. Yeah, well, definitely hunting was uh, Fonseca, and it looked like uh, filling him in blue. Fonseca's got himself a double up right now in the red jersey from Portugal. Gets up to this section a little bit late, comes unstuck. So uh, typically very consistent surfing out of uh, Guilherme Fonseca, but uh, uncharacteristically going down on what looked to be a wave that might have been meaningful. It looked like it had an inside section to it as well, which right now is really important, Bo. Those waves that come across the sandbar and offer the uh, continued continuation sections. I mean, there's some surfers out there that are able to really, really uh, capitalize off these one and two maneuver waves. But uh, if you can get four or five maneuvers and the opportunities, you're just going to get those big scores. Here's Ramdani from Morocco opting to go right on his first wave, going rail to rail on virtually nothing. So looking really active and energetic. Well, Mike, I know you've been in contact with Team Morocco. Are you impressed with their surf team they've sent to Baritz this year? Oh, yeah, completely. I mean, Team Morocco uh, has impressed uh, the whole world. Uh, you know, land of the long right-handers, but they have been doing very well uh, both on the lefts and the rights. And um, uh, really stoked to see uh, some of the Moroccans here in the later rounds. And we'll see if they can get into round six. Or right now we're in round number four. Sorry, round five. This is round number four. You know, Morocco in the last round, round number three, they had three of their four surfers in the last round. Two of the three have made it into this round, main round number four. But the shocker is Team Brazil going into round number three, they had all four male surfers. Going into round four, they had two of their male surfers, and both of them lost in that first heat of this round. Yeah, well, those last five minutes of that heat was like stepping on a landmine for Team uh, Brazil. And here is our Tahitian, Tefafana. You know, we've seen him really, really look snappy on these left-handers, and uh, no different than on this wave right here, sparking up there at the end. So nice little finish to that wave. 10 minutes, 50 seconds remaining. We can tell you opening ride for our Moroccan surfer, Yazin, coming in at a 3.6. Stand by for other scores as they come across. We're still early in this heat. Again, all heats in round four will be 15 minutes. All heats in the next round coming up for the quarterfinals in round number five will be 20 minutes. We got split peak situation. Let's watch the man in white, Yassine. Well, Yassin, a very, very powerful looking surfer. Ops to grab rail and try to do a rotation. That comes... Uh, unglued there, so uh, all eyes on Fonseca, who's uh, worked over this little left. Well, Guillermo Fonseca was sixth place in last year's World Surfing Games down in Costa Rica, and the surfer in the prior heat, Pedro Enrique, was in fifth place. So both Guillermo and Pedro made the semifinals last year in Costa Rica at the World Surfing Games. Okay, let's take a look at Tefa <clears throat> Tefa Fana's wave little bit soft on the outside you know that this wave didn't really give him any vertical sections to uh, manipulate but uh, gets a nice little uh, click there at the end and throws some spray so well ridden wave just the wave didn't cooperate as much as you would have liked meanwhile Fonseca again sort of those little tap turns at the top is not gonna uh, uh, you know the number of maneuvers here uh, is good but uh, you know judges awarding vertical uh, maneuvers as we're waiting for the scores here's the breakdown in round number four we had four teams in round number three with all four male surfers and only one made it through in the round four and that was team france we're going to tell you more about that because why on floors down on the beach side with another great interview take it away go ahead Dan. Okay, we got a little bit of technical difficulties with On Floor's uh, microphone. We're going to get that fixed and go back down to the beach. We apologize for that. 
So scores are now starting to lock in here, Mike. Let's see. 4-1-7 and a 1.3 for Guillerme Fonseca. He's in the lead. Our Tahitian surfer in yellow, he's locked up a 4-7-7 on and his like opening ride. A lot of hits yet, so we need to keep focus, keep you know, like surfing well, understanding how, what we need to do, and that's the most important, I think. The tide is uh, pretty low right now. How has it affected the, the wave this morning? I think it's going to be better. Like, we'll be a little bit fast, a little bit hollow, but we'll be more waves maybe coming and a little bit easier to get speed and to, to do some turns. Like. Well, congratulations. Congratulations to Team Portugal. Want to say some words in Portuguese? É, obrigado a todos que estão que estão em Portugal torcer por nós e é, foi mais um passo importante para que nós possamos sair daqui com o título e agora é torcer a cada 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 round que vai vir e a cada competidor que vai entrar na água estamos juntos. Congratulations, thank you very much. Back to you guys. Thanks so much and obrigado for uh, Pedro Enrique, 35 year former WSL World Junior Champion back in his day and. Mike, I know you've seen him a lot of times surfing on the North Shore at Hawaii. Yeah, such a spry surfer, man. That kid is, uh, well, that man is uh, <laughs> still surfing like a kid. He's just really, really uh, flexible and fast and uh, explosive at the same time. So had a couple of rides uh, during the interview. Uh, Want to take us through that, Bo, or heat situation? Our current situation, we're waiting for scores, Mike. There were a flurry of waves. Here's some of the replays. Let's watch first up. This is Yasin. Yasin, such a powerful style. There we go. Square off the lip right there. That really bodes well with the judges. Throwing a little more spray out the back. Getting a little tap at the end. And uh, here's our Tahitian. He gets a little vertical right there. So uh, he's going to throw away. Well, he's all looking for a second score. And he's continuing to work it over. So very, very busy on this little wave. Yeah, Tefana is going to be adding to his wave score. He's opened up with a 4.77. We could tell you Yassine Ramdani from Morocco is in the lead right now with a 6.17 and a 3.6. Second place is Guillermo Fonseca from Portugal. Now needing a 5.61 to regain first. Standby for scores. Last of yellow. Tefana now needing only a 0.71 to go to second. And our Costa Rican surfer, he's been out of sync right now, but he's got to find his rhythm. Anthony needs a combination of scores of a 4.55 five, five at this stage to get into second place. 11 minutes remaining. Yeah, very uncharacteristic to see uh, Philigam in this situation. Such a stalwart competitor, hugely capable of uh, pulling out the stops when he needs it. You know, he's capable of high scores. And uh, we'll see what uh, we got here. Now, this is Fonseca. So Fonseca is looking to... Uh, get out of that third position with this left-hander, and he does a nice job of uh, manufacturing some maneuvers here on this open face. He's going to line it up to the inside, but this wave dies out in power. Well, he's definitely going to drop the 1.3. He's got a 4-1 Seca, uh, a 4-1-7 for Fonseca. He finished sixth place last year, lost out in the semifinals, so just one round away from the final. So you know Guillerme and both Pedro are uh, Portuguese surfers in this first two heats of our round four. The um, main four round do want to return back to possibly medal out here in this event at the World Surfing Games. So waiting for scores. There it is, a 5.53 for Tefafana. And we're still waiting for this wave score, Mike. And there it is, a 5.43. So Guillermo is still in third because uh, Tefafana has gone straight to first. Yeah, well, it's a tight setup right now. Yasin Ramdani, he'd do well to get rid of that 3.60. And meanwhile, it's still a non-event for Filigan. He needs two waves. He's uh, really, really... Uh, left himself in a lurch, but still plenty of time to get those two waves. Nine minutes, 30 seconds remaining. So not quite time to panic, but definitely uh, time to get busy. Well, we had four teams with four surfers in that last round, round number three. Only one of them able to hang on to all four surfers, and that was Team France. As we watch Surfer in White, this is our Moroccan surfer. This will be his fourth wave, Yazim Randani. Kind of a slow start. He's going to bail. Not going to be a keeper way for him. He realizes that. Might as well go back out with nine minutes remaining. Yeah, I got just caught behind that wave, so uh, didn't look like he could catch up and get around it. Portugal had um, 
three surfers in main round number three, and all three of them had made main round number four, along with Spain. So Portugal and Spain, and there's Justine Dupont. She's the first alternate for Team France and a uh, former WCT surfer and uh, living the dream out here as France is really 1-2 in the women, and right now they're 4-4 four for four of their men in this main round of uh, main round number four with 32 surfers remaining. With two surfers remaining, we had Brazil. They're gone. Australia, Japan, Uruguay, Morocco, England, and Peru all have two surfers in this round. Japan went from four to two, and these teams all have one surfer remaining in this round, the United States, New Zealand, Costa Rica, Tahiti, Mexico, uh, Austria, Ecuador, and Canada. Mexico, a shocker. They had four in the last round. They lost three in round number three. Well, yeah, as things uh, progress through these rounds, the uh, competition just gets better and better. Right now, Philigan trying to work on a score. If, uh, you can see the body language. He is not stoked on that ride. His uh, heat is already at the halfway point he doesn't have a wave to sit on that he's going to want to keep and meanwhile Ramdani still needs to uh, lock in a better uh, backup wave if he wants to hold on to that transition spot Fonseca only needs a 4.35 so a very very uh, delicate situation yeah, Fonseca from Lisbon, Portugal. Sixth place last year at these World Surfing Games. The surfer in red was second priority and third place, as you said, Mike. Needing to solidify, needing that 4-3-5. Let's watch this man in white and in yellow. Our attention to our Tahitian, who's in the lead. Say Fa'afana. Well, Fa'afana is surfing a smart heat, and he's just uh, ramping things up as we speak. This wave is uh, delivering some options for him in that first uh, waft through a bunch of spray I think he's gonna even uh, jog farther in the lead and uh, maybe get in closer to the excellent range if not into the excellent range on that last ride yeah Ariho Te Fa'afana from uh, Papara where they have a WQS event early in the season and here we go let's watch him on this wave Mike wave doesn't look like much to start but it just threw that first section at him he timed it perfectly uh, gets a little uh, bank there off that last section. So uh, maybe not into the excellent range, but definitely a strong score for the Tahitian. Well, it seems like he's in sync, and it seems like Anthony's out of sync, but he's starting to build his house now with a 2.73. He's got a fourth wave score coming in. He now needs a 7.05, a 7.05 to get into the top two. Five minutes, 50 seconds remaining. Heat number two, round number four of the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games in Beirut, France. Well, it looks like uh, Anthony Filligan from Costa Rica in the blue jersey uh, gets another score. This time it's a 3.17. Puts him a little closer in range. Now he only needs a 6.61 to get into that very important transition spot. But let's keep in mind, Ramdani only has a 3.6. He's going to try to back that up with five minutes left. So we'll see if he can uh, manage his heat time here and get that score before he runs out of time to get himself in a comfortable spot. Well, our surfer from Costa Rica, Anthony Fillingham, a former silver medalist back in 2014 in Peru. He was second behind Leandro Osuna of his first gold medal year. And in that final, it was Lele in first and Anthony in second, Shane Holmes from Australia in third, and fellow Aussie Nicholas Squires made that final in Peru, where Peru won the team, but Anthony had the silver and he's trying to find that momentum of right now. He has first priority, and let's see. No, this will be Surfer in blue. Yeah, this is for Surfer in blue. This is Anthony. Well, he's uh, staying over there on the end section. You know, he doesn't even have priority, so he's trying to make the most of filling in some gaps. But here is our heat leader again, just really showing solid form, being really consistent. That really way. looks, Mike, he really looks light on his feet. Yeah, and, and he's got great timing. He's really uh, hitting the sections at the right time for uh, maximum impact. Okay, four-minute mark is getting crunch time for our Costa Ricans. We saw one Costa Rican surfer on the podium in the women's competition. It was the bronze medal third place for Leilani McGonagall. And I saw Leilani and the rest of the 
Costa Rican team coming down early this morning when we were coming down here, and they were very optimistic. We saw Jair Perez surfing in his earlier round heat. He's out. And so now they only have one surfer remaining. There's a surfer in red. That's Sebastian Olarte from Uruguay. He's getting ready for his next heat. And Uruguay with two surfers in this round. Yeah, Uruguay's uh, really showing form this event. Good to see uh, them rising uh, to the occasion. And with some great surfing, too. We saw a couple heats back. One of their surfers uh, take a heat win. Well, Tefafana has added to his lead. He's just backed up a 5.93, which is his best ride. Combo that with his 5.53. The surfer in yellow dominating out here. Here we go. Surfer in white, Yasmin Ramdani, currently in second place. Well, Ramdani sort of picked a dud right here, and that's one of those things, you know, when you wait that long. I think it's been about six or seven minutes since he caught a wave, and so he is using up valuable time, and he only really should be focused on getting a backup score uh, and replacing that 3.60. So you see the time, 240, round four, heat number two, our Tahitian in the lead. The battle for second place is getting closer. 0.17 separating a Moroccan and our Portuguese surfer. So, Guillerme, if he wants to continue his drive here alive into the quarterfinals, now needing a 4-3-5. Anthony Fillingham now needing a 6-2-5 surfer in blue. Well, that's the thing. What makes it so delicate is uh, the third-place surfer only needs a 4.35. I mean, that's kind of less than a good wave. So, uh, and we've seen him very, very capable of high scores. Uh, here's a look back at uh, Ramdani using up uh, second priority. Unfortunately, this wave just not giving. And there we've got a couple rides. I think that was uh, just to show us that uh, Filigam's uh, really trying to get something going on the end. I think he got a 3.53 on this. So uh, inching ever closer, maybe now he'll go back out and try to get a bigger, better wave. But Mikey has fourth priority, so that's why I think he's over there on the right-hand north side of the peak. Yeah, and um, it, it you know it's, it hasn't been paying dividends though. He hasn't been able to break free of just three point rides. One minute twenty five seconds remaining. Time to perform for Guillermo Fonseca, the Portuguese surfer, needing a four three five. A Costa Rican surfer in blue, Anthony Fillingham, a former silver medalist at these World Surfing Games back in two thousand and fourteen. Now needing a score of a six two five to keep his hopes alive of meddling yet one more time. One minute and five seconds remaining in this heat. Well, you can see uh, Fonseca is on the hunt. He's moving south. He's on the uh, left-hand side of the screen. Uh, him and Ramdani are separated by about 40, 50 yards now. They have first and second priority, so Ramdani's left alone on the left, and here goes Fonseca. He's got himself a little double up. He only needs a small score, and he kicks out, so he's looking for something better here. In the waning moments of this heat, just 37 seconds left. Bo. I thought he was going to go again on this way, but a good thing he didn't because it was a closeout section. He sees something out in the back. Yeah, well, I'm not sure if Ramdani can get over to him in time, but uh, strategy might be to just sit on him and try to make sure you get the wave. And here goes uh, our Tahitian surfer looking like he's going to do a victory lap. Fafani just really... Beautiful backhand surfing, throwing a lot of spray, climbing high where he needs to, and uh, getting uh, maybe one of his two top scores again. Well, he's been the best surfer in this heat, maneuver-wise, wave selection-wise, and he deserves to go into the quarterfinals. That's right. Winners of this round in the quarterfinals, and those quarterfinals will be coming up later this afternoon. The sound of the horn, rounds heat two. There's the slate for heat number three. Coming up next, we'll take a short commercial break. When we come back, more exciting action from Bray Roots, France. You're watching the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games.
Welcome back to the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games. We're in the beautiful Basque area in the southwest of France, known as Beiritz. And we're down to our second to the last day of full competition, day number seven, exciting action. I'm Bo Hodge along with Diogo Alpendre, and we are excited to bring you this heat. This is heat number three, round number four, and let's introduce our surfers out in the water. From Uruguay, in the red, Sebastian Olarte. From France, in white, Dimitri Ovre. From Spain, in the yellow jersey, Jonathan Gonzalez. And from Ecuador in blue, another Jonathan, Jonathan Sombrano. Yeah, and yesterday, Jonathan was one of the lucky guys that uh, got in the water uh, later, after that uh, 8 uh, o'clock, uh, 8 p.m. Uh, um, call. And Jonathan put on a clinic in five minutes, got two six-point uh, rides, um, and was done for the day, made his heat, really put on a display of uh, good competitive surfing. And I think he's going to try and do the same. We already seen him surf in this heat, Bo. Uh, we are still waiting for scores, but uh, Jonathan is a very well-seasoned competitor. He no, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. There's two Jonathans in this heat. Oh, You have right. to be more specific. Yeah, Jonathan Gonzalez. There uh, you go. Zambrano, Ecuador, is one of the cool teams we have here from South America. And um, I'm excited to see what some Brian will do in this heat. Let's go down beachside and check in with Anne Floor. With Aero, Aero de Fafana. <laughs> uh, in this heat, we could see the four of you guys very spread out through the water. Is that because of the priority game? So I think we have uh, different options. So we were looking the waves and maybe they saw some better waves where they were. And yeah, everyone has his, uh, his uh, own uh, tactics, I think. So more of a wa wave choice than really the parody thing? Yes, yes it's, uh, it's really hard to, to get some good waves here, and uh, the priority is uh, really helpful for us. So you can wait only two waves and, and make your hit, and yeah. I like it. On your last wave, even though there was only two seconds remaining, I saw you were still standing on your surfboard and I saw you check out the time. What went through your mind right then? Yes, you know in competition everything can change in the last 10 seconds. So I was looking if, uh, if it left uh, 30 seconds, I would go back again outside. And yeah, I check and yeah. And you secured your spot, your spot for Tahiti in the in the quarterfinals. Pretty happy about that. Yeah, for sure. It was my main goal to be in the quarterfinals. So now I'm here and I will serve 200 for the for the quarter, maybe semis and final. I hope so. Et on est tous très fiers de toi. Tu veux faire un petit coucou à Tahiti qui nous regarde? Oui, merci. Donc, euh, ouais, j'aimerais faire quand même un coucou à Tahiti, même si je sais qu'ils sont en train de dormir, là. Et puis, voilà, encore un coucou à ma copine, même si l'état, elle, elle est toujours là à me regarder. Et puis, voilà, encore un très grand, un très grand merci euh, à, à tous ceux qui me suivent à, à Tahiti. Je vois sur les réseaux sociaux et tout, ça, il y a beaucoup qui m'encouragent. Je pensais vraiment pas, et puis voilà, je suis fier et je suis là pour vous. Pas que pour moi, mais pour tout Tahiti. Bravo et félicitations. Thank you and back to you guys. Thanks so much. Congratulations to Ariho Te Fafana. In fact, Diogo, his last wave was his best wave of the heat, a 6-1-3. Yeah, he kept uh, his momentum going throughout all heat, well-poised, well-mannered, good English. I like this team Tahiti. I like how 
they're kind of a bit underground. They're really calm. They don't make a lot of fuss. But uh, look at him going. He's already in the quarterfinals. Well, you know, a couple of years ago at the ISA World Sup Surfing Championships down in Nicaragua, we had a young 17-year-old, uh, Polonaki Raioa, win the men sup surfing division. And now he has grown out and filled out to be a a man-sized subsurfer, and he's one of the top contenders. And last year it was Zane Schweitzer who won the subsurfing division down in Fiji. And coming up this year in September, we're going to be in a place called Cold Hawaii. And I'm not pulling your leg. It's called Kiltmuller in Denmark to see if Zane can defend his crown, uh, his crown and his gold medal and if Polonaki can come back and win a second gold medal because Sean Pointer has won two gold medals in the subsurfing in the ISA history. And how exciting is it that we're going for them, a non-traditional uh, surfing nation for a surfing event? It's yeah, so but good. Vice President Casper Steinfath of the ISA always wanted to bring the world championships to his host country in this year, 2017. It's going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. Really exciting. Let's take a look at uh, Dimitriou's first wave. He connected the dots so well there. We're releasing the tail a little bit. This is his first. We, we have seen him surf another time after that. This is uh, Zambrano just behind um, our friend from France, Ouvre. And this is Johnny Gonzalez. Look at him go. A backside float there to go over that section. Yeah, 5-4-3 for Jonathan Gonzalez. Combo that with a 4.5. Currently in the lead. Playing catch up on score, so we're standing by for last of blue, last of white. We can tell you Sebastian Olarte from Uruguay with a 5.0 and a 3.83. And how about Dimitri Ovre from St. Bart's, from Guadalupe? I mean, we've seen him on the North Shore. He comes each and every year for the Vans Triple Crown of Surfing. And he's in that top 100 of the QS trying to crack in to possibly join. join Jeremy Flores and Joan Deru on the CT. Yeah, one of the great surfers of this uh, generation of uh, French. I think um, the French had a generation that was so talented, so many great surfers. I mean, at the moment, you have three French surfers on the CT. Uh, sorry, two surfers on the CT that are from the same generation. Sure, it took a bit more for Joanne to get there, but the, that, that generation is so talented. We'll get that right back to that after we see Olarte. Whoa, yes. that was unexpected. Oh, my God. That was fluid. That was precise, and that was on point. Here we go. Zambrano up and riding from Ecuador, from Guayaquil. There he goes. He tries to do the rotation, but he can't surf out of it. But I love the way... That last maneuver from Alarte. I mean, he was fluid and precise. But going back to that talk about the French surfers, I mean, the generation of, uh, of uh, this generation of French surfers has, of course, Jeremy and Joanne, who are great surfers, Marc Lacomar, Jorgen Cosinet, Dimitri Ouvre, Charlie Martin. There's so many names, so much talent in the girls' side. Pauline, Joanne. Yeah. And don't forget about the juniors, the reigning 16 and under, uh, Thomas Debert. And yes. Leo Paul won two years ago. There's the rotation from Surfer in Red, Sebastian Olarte. Love that maneuver. Yeah, surfing in France is huge. And right now, huge. they've won gold, silver by their top two women. And all four men are in this main round, number four. The only team to still have all their surfers alive in the men's division. Yeah, uh, really exciting times for Team France. Going for gold at their hometown. And uh, let's see what's uh, going down for them. We got some scores here, Diogo. We've got a 5.4 for the Frenchman, Dimitri Ovray. And we've got a score for Jonathan Zambrano at 6.23. And it's exactly him surfing there. Jonathan Zambrano, 24 years of age, coming for uh, from uh, Guayaquil. Has El Pelado Playas as his favorite break. Has a lot of uh, competitive accolades. He was Latin American champion and Bolivian champion in 2014. Um, and he's a three times national champ in Ecuador. So he knows what it is to compete. He, know, he knows what it takes. And uh, you know what? These surfers are here for a reason, uh, Bo. And uh, of course, they want to make friends. They want to enjoy themselves. But uh, winning, that's the ultimate goal, isn't it? Yeah, they want to win gold, silver, bronze, copper. They want to represent their country because we are now under the umbrella of the IOC, the In International Olympic Committee. We are now three years away from surfing being in the Olympics, and how proud would it be for the male and female surfer to own the very first gold medal in surfing in Olympic history? I think it would be one of the, great, one of the greatest things in history. I mean, you would go down for history for sure. That would be not only history in surfing, but his, history in sports. And uh, you can't beat that. It's just really, really exciting. 
Dimitri Ovres backed up his six-point ride with a 6.3 and a 5.4, and now he finds himself in the lead. That's wave number three for Dimitri. He'll go back out. Gonzalez in second, now needing a 6.28 to regain first. Sebastian Olarte needing a 4.94, and Jonathan Zambrano needing a 3.71. 10 minutes, 20 seconds remaining. Heat three, round four, men's open division of the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games. That was uh, Team Lee, uh, England walking by. Team England, of course, one of the most exciting uh, at this event. I'm really excited about what they're doing because I was not, I, 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 I'm full honesty here, I was not expecting them to go uh, as far as they have uh, uh, gone. But it's so good to see. It's so exciting. I'm so happy for them. Of their four surfers that started, three of them made round three. Two of the three have main, main round number four. So they're doing quite well. They're doing great. Uh, Ruben Ash coming up next. And uh, he's going to be in blue. Of course, the other surfer is Chase Robinson. He had a tough round three heat, but he made it. And uh, really exciting times for them. And uh, it's time to see. It, it was time to see. And it's great to see England step it up. They had the talent uh, for a long time. They have the waves. So it's great that they crossed the channel and are here to uh, get some good uh, waves going. Well, we're seeing our first of four Frenchmen in this round. Dimitri Ovre from Guadeloupe and St. Bart's is in the lead in this heat, wearing the French flag. Very proud. 6.3, 5.5, two-wave combination coming in at 11.7. Sebastian Olarte from Uruguay now needing a 5.94 to regain first. He has a couple of five-point rides, and there we go. Jonathan Gonzalez has now just moved into second place with his last wave score of a 6.13. He needs a 5.58 to go into first place. Now, that that puts Olarte in third, needing a 5.8 to regain second place. Jonathan Zambrano from Ecuador now needing an 8.23, excuse me, a 5.34 because his two-way total is the 8.23, and we have eight and a half minutes remaining. Again, one of those tight heats, Well, We have our surfer in fourth with that 63 you just mentioned, and uh, look, at, uh, look at the scoreboard. It's just all over the place. It's so tight and so much time still to go. Yeah, look how tight it is between first and second. 11.7 for first for Ovre. Gonzalez, 11.56. 10.77 would be a good score, but for Olarte, this time he's in third, and that's why he needs that 5.8. And don't count out Zambrano from Ecuador. He now needs a 5.34, and just another beautiful day here on the beaches at Bay Ritz. Yeah, look at that. Just people enjoying the beach culture here in the beach. The beach culture here in Biarritz is bare to none in Europe. I mean, it's uh, it's amazing. I love it. I love it. I was not expecting it because the last time I was here, it was about winter time, so it wasn't as packed as it is. So I had never imagined that it would be that it would get so exciting, so big, and so uh, motivated to be at the beach and also check on surfing. Well. Thursday was a holiday, a national holiday, and I understand when a holiday follows on a Thursday, everyone takes Friday off, so we're in the, we're in the midst of a four-day weekend. We are, and it's great to see. Um, Biarritz is also a very common destination for holidays for Parisian people, so we have a lot of people from Paris coming down to Biarritz, making use of those Air, Air France great flights that we took to get here, so uh, it's, it's great. Honestly, it's great. And speaking of our great sponsors, we'd like to thank all of them and especially the French Surfing Federation for presenting this event, and our other great sponsors, including Visa and Roxy and the French National Center of Development of Sports. The Nouvelle Aquitaine region, the Basque Country, our official radio station, France Bleu, and our TV affiliate, the French TV Sports. Our media partners include Surfline, the official forecaster, Surfos Magazine, and Passion Extrema. Passion Extrema, they do a great job. All our media partners in a spreading the word uh, of the ISA message of the United Surfing Nations, the, the surf-stoked people, the Olympics, all that uh, goes across the world thanks to our media partners. As we go straight to live action, this is Zambrano, our man from uh, El Pelado Playas, Guayaquil. And a nice backside turn combination for Zambrano. Uh, he's looking for a 5-3-4. Not sure if that's going to be it, but he's going to improve his situation massively. Uh, because he has the second best wave of the heat, but but he's actually in fourth, though. 
Yeah, you know, I was just thinking, Diogo, uh, three years from now, we're going to see something we've never seen before, surfing in the Olympics. And Tokyo is just not going to have a surf meet. They are going to take, during the two-week span of the Olympics, where all multi-sports have their events, but they're going to celebrate surfing and surfing culture with all the water sports activities, like shortboarding, that they'll compete in. But they're, they're going to have demonstrations and displays of longboarding and bodyboarding and body surfing and sup racing and sup surfing and and the culture and the music and the 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 defining moment of you know who knows maybe the beach boys will be playing wait wait, wait, wait. are you telling me that it will be like a festival thing it's going to be a festival in chiba that's so exciting i, I hope i'll be there uh, to really, if not working, to at least to just check this moment in history. I, I would love to see the worldwide surfing community go down to Chiba and just represent surfing as good as we know that surfing gets. Well, coming up very shortly in July, we're just a couple of months away, the IOC and the ISA will start to redefine the qualifications and the aspects of what surfing will be in Tokyo. How many countries, how many athletes, is there going to be qualifiers like World Cups? Is certain federations around the world going to have uh, requirements to get in? Will this ISA World Surfing Games be of uh, an arm to get into the Olympics? All that's going to be announced coming up this July with Fernando Aguirre, the president of the ISA, and Thomas Bach from the IOC. Yeah, really excited about that. Looking forward to the announcement, just as I was for the August's last announcement of uh, Surfing's, surfing's presence in the Olympics, but uh, that's going to add so much excitement to all uh, team events around the world, of course, and uh, we never know. The WSL Tour might just be a qualifier, too, so yeah. surfing is going to blow up then. <laughs> the ISA and the WSL this year have come together and worked together, especially at this event, because we have multi-WSL uh, surfers, and we, we I was talking to Greg Emsley. Jordy Smith, world number two, was coming on being here. Some of the Australians really wanted to work it in their calendar. Maybe next year, these World Surfing Games will have a bigger window in between their events on the CT, and it'll be just so exciting to see the John John Florences, the Gabriel Menditas, who are past winners of these events, the Carissa Moores, the Courtney Conologs, the Steph Gilmores, Sally. you know, the Tyler Wrights. Um, it'll be so exciting for all them to come back into the ISA for the World Surfing Games for qualifications, possibly, for the Olympics in Tokyo. How good will that be? Oh, it'll I'm, be outstanding. I'm, I'm just looking forward. Meanwhile, Dimitri Ouvre still in the lead. But Whoa. Jonathan Gonzalez, he's been creeping up the, the pack here. He's moved into second with a 5-4-3 and a 6-1-3. Jonathan Zambrano now in third, needing a 5-3-4. And Sebastian Delarte now needing a 5.8 with two and a half minutes remaining. But the, uh, but the distance between this man on our screens, Dimitri Ouvre, and the fourth place, Olarte, is just uh, reducing by the wave. I mean, it's just one of those tight hits. Less than a point uh, separates first from fourth, Bo. Yeah, look at this day. You know, when we had the high tide this morning and yesterday, the water washed all the way up to the sand to the sidewalk. That's how radical these tides are. That rock you're seeing right there was underwater. It was a four-meter tide with about 15 feet in the translation. It was pretty, pretty, pretty flat for the surfing situation. With two minutes remaining, Alarte in red needing a 5.8. Zambrano on screen with third priority. He needs a 5.34. He has to give away to man with first priority, Jonathan Gonzalez. So Gonzalez up and riding, slashes through the white water, up and then down. Under two minutes to go, one minute 45, and uh, really exciting to get uh, a lot of uh, things going on in this uh, event and in this heat. I think this is one of those that will only be decided by uh, the horn sound. And uh, we saw Alarte using his second priority. He's going to get priority over Gonzalez Bow, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the Ouvre with first priority will do. All four surfers in double digits. Three of the four in the 11 point range. I mean, this heat can flip up by one wave either way. Dimitri Ouvre, even though he's been first dominating this heat, if Zambrano and Alarte right here, they've scored their waves, their requirements, we can outpoint Ouvre and Gonzalez. But we have one minute remaining in this heat. And it's a uh, clock uh, ticking down, uh, Bo. And uh, Ouvre with first priority 
will hold on to that uh, lead for as long as he can. Team Friend, of course, making it really hard for the other teams to overcome them in the team points ranking. And at 30 seconds to go, we can see Blue taking a look at that one wave. Counting down 25 seconds. Ouvray from France in first. Gonzalez from Spain in second. Olarte from Uruguay needing a 5-8. Zambrano from Ecuador needing a 5-3-4. We see red and yellow paddling. Red has priority over yellow, so he's going. He's going right there. Two turns on the inside. It was uh, blue, wasn't it? It was Zambrano down the way, and he's claiming it. Zambrano's in fourth. Remember, he needed the 5-3-4. Gonzalez, can he add to his score? There's the sound of the horn. This is going to be a tight heat for the judges to score this final round. We knew this would happen with that group up of the scores. Absolutely. This wave of Jonathan Gonzana was well in uh, the heat's time, so before that horn sounded. But look at this beach day, Bo, and uh, how beautiful is this place. And look at how big the structure here at the ISA World Surfing Games is. Just yeah, all those white tents, those are athletes' tents. There's 47 of them for each and every one of the countries. There's the lineup, heat four, round four. We're going to take a break. There may be a jockey in the finish of heat number three. And when we come back, we'll have all the great results. But, hey, let's watch some replays before then. That was the air reverse surfed out by Jonathan Zambrano from Ecuador. Now, he needed a score of a 5-3-4 or better, so he's got a couple of scores still yet to come. Again, we're going to take a short commercial break. We'll have the results of the last heat and move on into heat four, round four, at the World Surfing Games live from Baritz. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are here at the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games, live from Biarritz in the southwest of France. And uh, in the water, heat four, round four with these four gentlemen. Boawuda Abubakar from Mo Morocco, Cristobal de Col from Peru, Ruben Ash from England, and Noah Cohen from Team Canada. A really exciting heat. My name is Diogo Alpendra, alongside Mike Latronic from Hawaii, and uh, Mike... Um, an exciting heat. Conditions are still here. We are still running. We'll be running for as long as uh, it's possible. And uh, so far, so good. Yeah. And um, you're still deliberating on some scores from that last heat. So this heat is on hold. All uh, the surfers are, well, not all the surfers are on screen, but certainly all the surfers in the world are out in the water down the beach. That looks like a white, white. Uh, that is uh, yeah, that's Noah why Cohen. From the next heat. Noah Cohen has gone back to the well where he found success last night to advance in the clutch dying moments of his round three. I think he had an early round three heat. 
So he's way down to the south. But due to movie magic here, we have uh, all the action. I'm surprised they're not clearing the water. Maybe they're uh, They are. Our beach announcer right is now. announcing it at the moment. But I think we could uh, call the jet ski to help clear it out. Yeah, but I can hear our beach announcer asking uh, in French and English for uh, all the free surfers to leave that area. Not sure why we're still on hold. I believe all scores are in. No, we're still missing a couple scores from the previous heat, Mike. So we'll keep standing by and use this chance to talk about uh, ISA's uh, governance of uh, stand-up paddling. One of the great uh, events of the ISA calendar are those uh, SUP championships that this year will take place early September. Uh, ISA has been actively promoting this su uh, sub for uh, almost a decade with the World Championships since 2000, uh, 2012 and educational programs and always pushing for inclusion, inclusion in Olympic movement events. Of course, um, ISA pushes for all uh, its divisions. Um, and uh, thanks to that push and thanks to that uh, great action from uh, President Fernando Aguirre and all the staff from the ISA, the um, center pattern paddle will be included in the Pan Am Games and in the 2019 World Beach Games. And in fact, just last May, Mike, it held uh, its first ever development program, pro program in Iran. I have a question for you. Yeah. Is that inclusive of stand-up paddling surfing or stand-up paddling racing or both? I, w I believe it's both. Very cool. Uh, ISA also recently signed an agreement with APP uh, to rule... Um, um, to sanction all APP events, uh, ISA acquired minority ownerships, and then now the two entities are aligned as a world governing body for SUP. A very exciting uh, um, division and a very exciting sport, also in its own right. As we see the first wave of the heat, just as the, the horn sounded, our uh, surfer from uh, just across the channel, uh, Ruben Ash from England. Yeah, well, the Brits have definitely paddled across the channel and making their presence known here in France. Ruben Ash getting off to a pretty good start. Let's look at this from the other angle. I'm curious to see if he rode out of that end section. Beautiful off the lip there, and I don't think he rode out. So only a small score, a 2.67. Had he been able to ride out of that last section, I think he would have really gotten a few more points. That makes it uh, very, very telling how important it is for these surfers to really establish uh, that they've ridden out of their maneuvers. I think I see a lot of these guys, they just uh, sort of been taking it for granted and not, you know, struggling to get through that whitewash and get their board back on the flat. Sometimes it's, it's almost better to not push as hard and get to completion that uh, then push really hard and go for a, a huge turn when a good one will get you the score. Of course, when your house is already built and you're in a qualifying spot and you, you have a little bit more room, then, of course, go for that. But uh, when you're still uh, beginning your heat, getting your first scores, I would say that it's probably not for the best if you push that hard. Well, talk about pushing hard. ISA has been pushing the scholarship program hard to the tune of almost $250,000 in scholarship funds being given out, 248000 to be exact. That's and a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah, and uh, it's gone out to about 300 surfers. Well, let's look at this wave. Cristobal de Coles found himself a right-hander. He's got a couple turns working there. Just love how smooth his style is. Just not only uh, makes beautiful turns, but, you know, he's got flair and he's definitely got uh, power. One of the notable uh, past winners of a scholarship program here in uh, the ISA World Surfing Games 2017 is Juninho Garcia, who we have surfed, um, who we have seen surf earlier today. This is the replay of Cristobal's uh, first wave, a 5.17. But uh, while we wait for uh, some other scores, we'll throw it down to the beach with uh, Anne Floor. Anne Floor, do you, who do you have with you? I am with Dimitri Ouvray, just coming out of the water. How much pressure does one have on the shoulder when you have priority and you're leading the heat, but you never know if another wave is going to come through? Um, it was all right this time, so I had a lot of heat. Uh, it was really hard at the beginning, yesterday night and the, the day before. 
So yeah, today I was feeling good and um, it, was, it was a tough one to make because uh, there were, I think I win by 0 0.01, so I'm happy. The French team uh, seems like it's a bit on steroids. Yeah, uh, I mean, we'll see today. Today is a long day, so we just have to rest and make sure we, we make through hits and having fun. Getting into that competition in the team with Pauline, with Joanne, with uh, with uh, Jeremy, uh, how much pressure did it put on your shoulder to perform well, which, which you do? Oh, we all want to really do good because, first of all, because it's in France, it's in Biarritz, it's one of the capital in Europe of surfing, so we all want to do good, we having fun, we enjoy the place and we'll see the result. Félicitations. Tu veux nous dire un petit mot en français? Maman, papa, je sais que vous me regardez, la famille, tu bonjour à Saint-Barth. Allez, on verra pour la prochaine. Ciao. Merci beaucoup. Back to you guys. Thank you and for great interview. Dimitri over holding back a bit on the emotion as they know that they still don't have that gold medal, although they are so close. Well, they're definitely in pole position, but uh, as you know, it really matters to get in the final. And uh, when first place has so many points, first and second place, so we'll really see what happens. But with all of their surfers left in the competition this far up, it is uh, really the odds are greatly in their favor. And this was a nice long ride from our surfer from England, Ruben Ash, just working this little wave to pieces. And uh, he'll do better than the 287. Meanwhile, we saw one click move from Noah Cohen way down the beach. He's uh judge is still deliberating on that score. And uh, Cristobal de Cole, when they showed that uh, beach angle, uh, I really liked that first backside hit. Really powerful, smooth, beautiful uh, sweep on his backside. So he earned a 5.17. And uh, here we go. The peak down the way. Uh, different strategy for Noah Cohen surfing alone way down to the south. Noah Cohen from uh, Team Canada. That wave was a bit of a closeout, but he tried to make the most out of it. We are now with a 20 minute hit, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, that just gives our surfers plenty of opportunity to really um, enjoy the conditions, find the waves they require, and uh, move on to the next round. As we see the Cole up and riding, but he goes down has a 5.17 that was uh, supposed to be his backup. And once again, Ruben Ash up and riding and slashing away. Oh, Ruben Ash just looking very, very fluid, very comfortable on this little left-hander, uh, reading it really well. Unfortunately, I jinxed him just then. Tried a little uh, doohickey there. Doohickey went wrong. But uh, here is our surfer in yellow. This looks to be his second wave. He's already snuck in a 5.5 which is the highest score of the heat thus Ooh. far and uh, goes down on that last section but uh, not before he was able to get a couple of points there ramping up that left hander all the way across until the inside yeah with the tide being as low as it is sometimes it's really hard to get let that last uh, uh, turn in with the completion but uh, let's take a look at the replay of Ruben Ash's mic uh, a small wave that first turn uh, was good, but uh, after that, nothing really. But this wave of our Moroccan, look at that. Yeah, he's waited for better waves, and it's paying off. Unfortunately, like you said, it gets really shallow, and uh, he pretty much dug the nose on that one. But I like the movement. I like the energy coming from Boa Wood, uh, Bubab from Morocco. Um, he put on some great displays at the European Championships uh, in late December. And uh, it's, uh, it's great to see him keep that momentum going to the World Surfing Games. And it's great to see him uh, really uh, excel um, in this event. Because maybe we were not expecting such a result from him. But uh, coming here, dealing with all the pressure, feeling at home and uh, destroying uh, the waves as much as he is. It's uh, it's great stuff, and it's amazing to see. That was uh, Jonathan Gonzalez, our surfer in yellow from the previous heat. Same scores as the surfer in a, er, who won the heat, Dimitri Rouvet, as we go with uh, Cristobal de Col, looking for a last section to heat. Almost looked like he was thinking about airs, 
but uh, there was no chance for there. Yeah, that wave sort of ran away from him. He had to pump it down the line, but successfully tapping a good little re-entry there at the end. So uh, Cristobal de Cole looking smooth, and uh, this score is going to come in very handy. He only needs a two-point ride to basically move up. He may even jump into first place. Looking at it again, there you go. Just beautiful uh, style there. This is where he sort of had to miss that section, so maybe a slight missed opportunity there but uh, made up for it at the end. We've seen so much that the guys um, uh, surfing these lefts on their back can really push their turns hard, and the judges have been enjoying that. But you can see in Cristobal and in Dimitri in the previous heat that um, good forehand surfer uh, surfing is always being <laughs> scored highly. And you can see that Cristobal really pushed for that frontside carve there. It looked really good. Obviously, being um, really um, familiar with surfing lefts as he comes from Peru, which is pretty much the land of the lefts. And uh, Cristobal de Col, a local legend, a great surfer, and uh, his style is, real, is really nice. A well-poised surfer, and uh, we see Blue, uh, Ruben Ash, once again, up and riding Mike. Well, Ruben Ash is just having a little field day on these lefts, but he's been relegated to third place now. Cristobal de Col nailing a 4.77 for his uh, polished act on that last wave. Like I said, he missed that middle section, which cost him. You know, he didn't get that second turn in when that section was really standing up. Sort of had to skip it. But smart surfing, you know, had he tried to force it, uh, maybe he would have just, you know, lost the wave. And um, now Noah Cohen's way down. He's got two threes on his score line, a couple threes and uh, needs to m maybe join the fray here. We'll see if his uh, strategy pays off way down the beach. It's great to see Ruben Ash competing, focused. Uh, for a long time there, he was focused on doing video parts and uh, competing wasn't his focus. I don't think he ever felt really at home competing, but uh, now older, m a more mature surfer in person coming here to the ISA and putting some great heats uh, really establishing a strategy and following uh, following it really tightly and it's good to see that uh, English surfer really come together for uh, this event well we're gonna look at this one on the drone angle he only gets a 3.57 so uh, this uh, work on his backhand not the answer yet and um, with eight minutes 50 seconds to go there's still plenty of time for all these surfers to uh, ramp up their scores hunt for those uh, open face waves that was yellow and red taking a little look at that wave yellow with second priority red with third that's uh, Bawada and Cristobal really close to each other they don't want to miss any opportunity and uh, with these kind of conditions you can't really miss uh, those of course the tide being low uh, some waves close out, close out really quickly, and you don't want to be on one of those. You want to be on one of those corners that uh, just keeps on giving. Of course, the backwash uh, and the, the, those deep water po uh, spots are kind of shaping up uh, uh, the wave a bit when it gets to the inside, like we saw from Cristobal's the call 517. But let's see what happens in this one wave from Cohen. Looks like it's a bit of a slower wave, and it's, that's good for him. Yeah, uh, definitely giving him some more open face opportunities to collect points here. And uh, a couple kids on the beach there in danger of uh, getting poked by his board. Luckily, no, no blood, no foul. And there's uh, our surfer from Morocco. Looks like he finished a wave. Yeah, using his uh, second priority to catch a wave uh, over Christian Cristobal de Col, de Col from Peru in a second place, Boabuda in second. Let's take a look at the replay. Well, he's really exercising that forehand snap. Two good snaps. What has he got? He's got a five-five and a five-one-five. So, I'm sorry, five-one-seven. So it'll be debatable whether that improved his situation. And uh, seven minutes to go. Super low tide, sort of a sleepy situation. But here we go. Maybe looking at the right. Tide should be uh, heading in now. 
and uh, we should be seeing more water pushing in. I think for a little while it's going to be pretty good with the incoming tide, uh, really pushing water in, making for stronger waves, stronger rides. And there's Cristobal de Cole, beautiful snap off the top, gets a little rebound off the whitewater after that as a bonus. So uh, maybe the biggest maneuver of the heat, we'll see uh, how that fares. Let's take a look at the replay from a different angle. It looked really good from my on my eyes too. Yeah, just nice and high over the lip with a lot of power. Was able to get that second click. So um, I think uh, Cristobal de Cole is going to up his uh, score. And Ash going back to the left, going back to the well. That's where he got his uh, first 4.33. Yeah, going back to where he did good earlier. Uh, in the, uh, in this contest, and uh, let's take a look at uh, Buawuda's uh, profile. He's the guy in the lead, but first we'll see the replay of Ash Mike, uh, one of those waves that uh, was helped by the by the deep water spot to shape up. So he did get some uh, work done on the outside, finished well, had a couple of little bobbles there uh, through the outside, so not really a seamless wave going to keep the score uh, within reason. And Noah Cohen's putting out his best score, what we saw <coughs> moments ago. So Buawuda Abubakaru from Morocco, 17 years of age. He's uh, the youngest in the water. Uh, loves to surf in uh, Jack Beach Dar Buawuza. He uh, was born in a Casablanca, still lives there. And he was the gold medalist in uh, the European uh, Championships uh, last year. Like we've mentioned earlier in this uh, heat, as we see Noah Cohen wrapping up a wave, it looks like Noah is uh, waking up and uh, starting to get some uh, better scores, Mike. Yeah, well, it's an uh, interesting situation. Uh, Noah Cohen's in fourth priority, but he's literally a thousand yards down the beach, completely uh, nowhere to be in the scope of surfers in third, second, and first priority. So. Uh, really a non-event for Noah Koa. He doesn't even have to look in at the priority buoys right now. But here he's got a uh, open-looking wave. Let's see if this wave stays open. Nice top turn. A little bit chunky, but gets a nice crisp turn to finish that wave. I reckon that will be his best score. And that's blue up and riding on his backhand. Cohen opting to for a different strategy. Let's see how it play out for him for now not working but that last uh, wave of his was a very interesting one with four minutes to go that's our man on the screen I think Cohen's actually racked up a couple of waves in the last few minutes so the judges uh, putting in a couple of scores this this I believe is wave number five they're still working on scores for rate wave number four but uh, we'll confirm that in a minute this is a uh, surfer from uh, England, that's Ash. Nice floater on that wave. I still don't think it's gonna earn him a, a better score than what he's got on that earlier left. That was a great backside turn for Ash. Uh, he's a bit behind Cristobal and Ruben and uh, Buawuda. Uh, of course, Cristobal on that left-hander with that turn with the great projection got a 5-0-3 as we go straight to Abu Bakar's live action. Love the style there, huh? Yeah, well, but, oh, big mistake there. I mean, he was really working on a better score. Uh, you know, right now, Noah Cohen's just put himself back into contention. He's got a 4.8 down the beach, so he only needs a 5.41. And look at this. I mean, all the surfers in third and fourth are well within striking range to overtake Cristobal de Cole. So um, bigger requirements to get into first place but not by much. I mean, one score uh, in the in the good uh, high good range, you know, seven seven five, would make a huge difference for any one of these surfers. As we see, Cristobal de Cole trying an alley oop there on that left hand uh, left hander, but uh, he's still in second. Noah Cohen a four point eight. I'm surprised with the score. I, I thought that uh, last turn was really nice, huh? Yeah, had a couple soft sections, you know, had a couple crumbles on those outside sections. I think uh, the juice on that 4.8 was the last turn. And, um, 
you know, we got an expert panel of judges up there. I'm, of course. I'm, I'm backing them on that score. But uh, the uh, overall uh, tenor of this heat is it's still anybody's ball game. Obviously, we, we have the Moroccan in first and the Peruvian in second, but uh, the other two surfers really, really uh, within striking distance just with one good wave. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the tide is coming in fast. The waves will shape up a bit better, like you said before, Mike. Um, we, already ha we have also seen in this fourth round that uh, the heats are getting tighter and tighter. The scores are getting... Uh, um, more and more similar as we see Noah Cohen once again. Just a checkup turn there for him. And uh, this is Cristobal the Cool now going left. Look at him go. Nice backside turn for him. And he's doing uh, quite well there, uh, Cristobal. He's just trying so hard to get something more than a 5 0 3. But uh, it's not really working out for him so far. Well, time is of the essence at this point. Only 32 seconds left. So uh, th there we got. Looks like Robin Ash in blue down on this left-hander. He needs just a 5.88. Goes big, gets the air, but doesn't land it. So putting all his chips in one slot there. And uh, unfortunately, um, the house takes the money. That's exactly what uh, Ash got us used to. But the heat is ticking down and it's going to be over. So it will be Bua Wuda Abu Bakr and Cristival the call moving on to the next round. Great job by Team Canada and Team England, nevertheless, with Noah Cohen eventually moving to third and uh, then, uh, sorry, Ruben Ash in fourth. This is the next heat. We'll go in a uh, short commercial and we'll be right back for the call. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games, and we're trudging through the second half of the draw now in round number four. Total of eight heats to the first half has been solidified. This is the second back half, and let's introduce our surfers who are going to be surfing in this water. Uh, Joninho Ursia from Peru will be in the red jersey, and the white jersey, Blake Levitt from Australia, and the yellow jersey, Vincent Duvinac from France, and in the blue jersey, another Aussie, Dane Ashen. So two Aussies, a French surfer, and another one from Peru. I'm Bo Hodge along with Mike Latronic. Bonjour, Senor Mike, or Monsieur Mike. Uh, bonjour, salut. C'est bon. C'est aujourd'hui, c'est très belle. The surfers uh, performing the Jolie Roller. Let's watch a replay of the opening waves here. This is uh, Joninho. 
Yeah, well, Team Peru all in red right there. So Janino getting a couple clicks, gets a 4-5 on his opener. And we got a wave for one of our two Australians. Dane in the water, 2.33. And uh, here he goes, Blake Levitt. Definitely uh, putting up some spray on that left-hander. Good open left to start this heat. Really working this thing over. A little uh, tap on the whitewater there saying, hey, I didn't want this to be over yet. So uh, I think he's going to be uh, relatively satisfied. That was a good opening wave. Yeah, Blake from Manly Beach, Australia, coming into this event. 25-year-old. Uh, last year, Australia totally look different in the last few years they've been one of the main big powerhouses in the surfing of the isa and here we go going to town this is Jonino. beautiful execution right there just time that second click and let's look at this replay starts with a, a nice waft and throws a little layback larry layback into that so getting some moves done and uh yeah, counting about five little maneuvers, right? Uh, two little maneuvers, three pretty big snapbacks. A little bit of repetition going on there, but uh, like I said, that was a nice open long wave to start the heat with. So paddling back out, there you see the Frenchman right there, Vincent Duvenac. France with all four of their competitors making main round number four. They have not lost a competitor in the contest, their two female competitors went gold, silver. And let's watch the first wave for Vincent. Well, Duvenac's really uh, got this place wired, just finding some of the best waves and uh, performing really well, just turn after turn. So uh, good opening wave for the Frenchmen as well. Judges have their hands full deliberating these scores. And it uh, looks like we have most competitors back out in the lineup already. While we wait for these scores, as we watch Surfer and White, this is going to be Blake Levitt. Let's watch him on his forehand. Wraps another second turn, working down the line, staying with the Whitewater section, and there's a closeout. Let's go down beachside and check in with Anne Floor. Buaura Abuka, the series now are 20 minutes. How much does that change the rhythm of you surfing in the water? Les séries maintenant, elles durent 20 minutes. À quel point ça change euh, le rythme que, que vous avez dans l'eau Bah aujourd'hui c'est mieux que hier parce qu'on a 20 minutes, on, on est plus tranquille, pas comme hier quand tu as 15 minutes, c'est un peu pressé. Mais maintenant, j'ai quand j'ai j'ai 20 minutes, j'ai je, je surf tranquille, je cherche mes vagues tranquille, c'est mieux. He likes today much better with the 20 minutes, which uh, allows him to surf and in uh, a more peaceful um, rhythm. As much as yesterday with 15 minutes, it was a lot of stress, and today he's much more comfortable. Uh, alors, effectivement, mais est-ce que ça donne aussi l'opportunité à tes concurrents de se, de se construire et de, et de revenir vers la première position? And does it for your the other surfers in the water when you're in when you're leading the heat does it give them a bit more of opportunity to build them their heat to try to catch up with you Ouais, c'est vrai, c'est bien pour moi mais c'est 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 pas bien pour moi parce que quand il y a 20 minutes, je surf tranquille mais il peut les autres prendre des vagues et faut parce que il y avait un surfeur qui faut que juste un 4, faut qu'il prend juste un 4 et après euh, j'étais stressé, stressé parce que je sais que j'ai 20 minutes, mais j'ai bien surfé. So yes, it did put uh, stress on him knowing that the other surfers were uh, getting closer or had an opportunity to actually build their heat towards him. But in the end, he's very happy with the way he surfed and uh, and then uh, very uh, proud to uh, to bring Morocco into the quarterfinals. Je remercie mon sponsor encore et Org Rip Curl. Et toutes les gens qui sont avec moi et mes équipes et ma famille, euh, mon frère, ma soeur et toute la famille, merci beaucoup. He's thanking all his family and the ones who are supporting him. Thank you very much, congratulations and uh, back to you guys in the studio. Thanks so much and congratulations to our Moroccan surfer. He'll be going on with uh, Cristobal de Cole from Peru from that last heat. And here we go. We are, are exploding with numbers here, Mike. I mean, an 817 from Vincent Duvinac from Hasigor representing France on his opening wave. And he's in third place right now.
Here we go. We got some replays, so let's play catch up. Here we go. One of our two Australians. This is Dane. Yeah, well, Dane getting this uh, wave across the sandbar, earning just a 4.23 for that one. Fellow Australian Blake Levitt from uh, Manly Beach opened up with a 6.17 and a 4.43, but they're all chasing the surfer out of Peru. The man in red, Joninho Ursia, he's got a 4.5 and a 7.17. Duvenac on a one-wave count, only needs a 2.44 to get into second place, and Dane Ashen. Now needing a 6.38. 11 minutes, 38 seconds. Again, all round four heats have been extended to 20 minutes in length. And they used that time wisely to save it the last couple of days with these really fast repercharge type round heats of 15 minute format to get through the day. Why? The volume of surfers, 47 nations, 245 athletes from around the world. And they just didn't expect the volume, and thus they had to eliminate the rubber charge rounds from rubber charge two all the way to the final. They gave each man, each women's one round of rubber charge. So at least there was a, a chance, a second chance for all competitors to stay in the competition. But we've seen some major upsets. Leandro Osuna lost yesterday. The defending gold medal champion going for his fourth final in a row. The two-time gold medal winner going down in the second round. Rayoni Montero earlier today also going down in his round. And other Brazilians, including Wesley Dantes and Elevano Santos, in the same heat of this qualifying four round. And let's not forget Ian Govea. That's right. Ian Govea of Brazil. Brazil's out of the contest. Yeah, unfortunate uh, turn of events for Brazil today. Uh, really came with a powerful team. But uh, just making a, 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 a stepping on a landmine, I call it, there in that last heat. They both uh, had first and second all the way through uh, till the last five minutes. And the other surfers in that heat took over. As uh, we have uh, Blake Levitt trying to take over for Team Australia. Situation a little dangerous for Team Australia with two athletes in this heat. Not only do they have to compete against Team France and Team Peru, they have to compete against each other. So the chances of both of them uh, getting out of this heat are, are uh, uh, a little less. Uh, it's doable. You know, it's, we've seen it happen time and time again, but uh, the variables are high. Well, right now, Australia sitting in third and fourth, respectively. Why? Because Vincent Dubinac has backed up his 817 with a 577. So the Frenchman from Hasigor in the lead in yellow. Juninho Ursia from Peru. He has a 717 and a 4.5. He needs a 678 to go to first place. Our Aussies, Blake Levin in third, needing a 5.51 to go to second. Dane Atchison, Atchison now needing a score of a 745 with 9 minutes, 15 seconds remaining to get into second place. Well, this is where being conservative no longer works. It's time for clutch surfing. You might as well feel like you are surfing in a final. You need excellent scores. It's time to ramp it up, just like Usia did right there. Really, really rewarded on that first wave he got that was like that. I believe it was a second wave on his score line. But his third wave right now, uh, I think, is even better. Deep bottom turn, nice snap, and just hard, straight up off the lip. Beautiful style, uh, well-executed maneuver right there for our surfer in red. That's going to be better than his 4.5 for sure. Well, Jonino now moves into the lead with a 6.8, so new situation. Jonino Ursia currently in first place. Combination scores of a 6.8 and a 7.17. He is leading Vincent Duvinac from France by .03. Three one-hundredths of a point. That's how close first and second is. Now the margin for the Aussies have been pushed up. Let's watch Dane Atchison. He'll kick out. He needs a near-perfect ride of a 9.72. And Blake Levitt uh, from Manly Beach now needing a 7.78. Well, and that's if Duvenac doesn't replace that uh, low score, 5.77. We've seen him just getting 7.8s all day long. So, uh, really... Blake Levitt needs a near-excellent score, and Duvenac's got a low score already. Exciting times here in heat number five, round number four. We'd like to thank all of our great sponsors for making this possible. We are being presented with this world championship by the French Surfing Federation. We're being supported by some fine sponsors, including Quicksilver and Mickey Pecan and the boys down here in Beirut. Air France, the French National Olympic Committee the Atlantic Pyrenees Department, the beautiful city of Beiritz and Laquique. Many thanks going out to our media partners, include Grave Dead Zero, Virus, and Waves. 
you know, you posed the question before, Bo, what if we saw four French surfers in the final? now In the men's division. In the men's division. Logistically, this is possible. However, it would be more possible had we had repercharge all the way through because eventually it's likely with four surfers potentially left into round five that there may be three French surfers in one heat coming up soon. Yeah, we have three French surfers on the back half of this draw. So mathematically, that will be impossible because eventually two surfers from the top draw will meet the other two surfers from the bottom draw. So, wow, there's Team France. You know, history will be made. France has already gone 1-2. If France can win the World Surfing Games, they'll be the reigning World Junior ISA champions from last year at uh, the Azores in the beautiful Azoria Islands. And right now in their host country here in Beiritz. Here we go. Surfer in yellow, Duvenac. Well, Duvenac's just got such a penchant for finding the best waves and surfing with style, grace, and aggression. So he's really uh, got a great formula, doing his uh, French team proud right now and uh, just dominating the lineup. See our water photographers. That's Ben Reed and Sean Evans. Here, let's watch Duvinac again on his backhand, slicing through. Big bottom turn. He gets really low on those bottom turns. Yeah, and he's, he's able to uh, reconnect with his board very quickly and get his board right back into the lip. So he's got a, a great linkage, and I think he's going to take the lead, Bo. Okay, what's the requirement for Vincent? He needs a 5-8-1 or better to get out of second place. And he's only in second place by three one-hundredths of a point. That's .03, and scores are indicating he has the 5.18 and a whole lot more. Yeah, Duvenac's just uh, flexing on that local knowledge. He's got the whole country of France behind him, a lot of team spirit. And um, there's our man in the next heat, Vincent Romero, a neighbor to France who's actually Team Spain is doing excellent in this contest as well. So they came in today's competition in second place. So uh, they are actually, as of this morning, they were tied with France. I believe France, the possibilities have improved for France moving into tomorrow. Well, France hadn't lost a competitor. The men on the Spanish side had three surfers, three of their four in round three. All three are in round number four. Now I pose this question to you, Bo. Mm -hmm. What if there's not four French surfers in the final, which is possible, but what if there's three French surfers and one Spanish surfer, or two French surfers and two Spanish surfers, might as well throw England in there and just make it a nice little neighborhood. Well, it could be the European affair. There it is, a 7.77 for Vincent Dubinac, and now Vincent has reclaimed the lead. It has really put a tight hold on both Aussies. These are the last two Australians remaining alive in this year's World Surfing Games. Blake Levitt, recently on that last wave, uh, did not make the connections enough. He now needs a 781. And for Dane Atchison, he now needs a 9.75. Well, let's look at it again. He gets a lot of speed, goes down the line, cracks the top of this little float maneuver, and slashes. So uh, a decent ride, but it's not going to be the score he needs. Counting down, time remaining in this heat, flying fast. Three minutes, 35 seconds. Duvinac. A 15.94 out of a possible 20. Seems like it doesn't matter which French surfers out in the water. They're dominating here in Bay Ritz. Yeah, they really are. And it's well-deserved. They're really putting together great heat strategies, surfing strong, uh, strategizing their heats well, managing their time, and they've made no mistakes. There's a local water safety patrol doing a guard duty out. In the bay out here, tide is starting to drain out. Maybe that guy will make a mistake. Well, let's hope not. <laughs> yeah, let's hope not. Let's hope not. He's got a dangerous I mean, piece just of equipment. Just fall off his ski for a minute or something no. harmless, you know, like. No. Uruguay and flag, they're going to get ready for another hot surfer coming up, Luis Maria. Stand by for that. That'll be coming up in heat number six. A little bit of a rip there on the inside. You can see the water churning colors there. Mike and I ventured out in the water yesterday during the high tide break. I got one of the surfboards from one of the Spanish uh, Cale uh, co-announcers, but the tide was just so fat. I, the wave was pushing me, but there was no drop. 
Yeah, you might as well have had a skim board, Bo. You probably would have caught uh, more velocity on a skim board. I was, I was playing in the shore break, and I tell you what, the boys at Sandy Beach would be uh, – would be charging that shore break. It's powerful. Yeah, I'm a former lifeguard at the Sandy Beach. This uh, this beach quite different. There's a lot of bigger boulder type rocks on the bottom where it crunches down there. There's the audience down here taking in this year's 2017 ISA World Surfing Games and on this four day holiday weekend here in Bay Ritz, it is just another beautiful day of exhibition. We can start to see a little bit of the side onshore wind, still kind of light. It's not crumbling up the surf, but yesterday when we came back for the evening session. It was almost like a gale storm moving in. Yeah, that, that was definitely some um, uh, North Atlantic action. Uh, the perfect storm, maybe not, but definitely uh, lightning out of a scary movie. I was running. After dinner, I, we went to have dinner, and it was striking every couple of seconds. But uh, striking every few moments, of course, is our Frenchman. Can he do no wrong? No, he's got a minute. He's done. He's like, uh, I'm just going to do an air and go in. What else can Vincent do from Hasigor? I mean, he has made the statement, one of the best two-wave combinations we've seen so far today, and maybe one of the contests. Though he's coming in. The battle is for Australia to stay alive. And let's watch a replay. This is last of Vincent Duvinac. Yeah, well, he's got a, a little double-up work in here. Kind of chop hops it. So it's not going to score very high. Took a little while to get the transition. Uh, but... Uh, a nice little trick to end the treat. Well, there you see a couple of red surfers. That's red in heat five, heat six. Jonino currently in that second spot. So it looks like Australia is bowing out in this heat, heat number five, Mike. Well, this should stir some buckets in uh, Surfing Australia's home office, no doubt, uh, scratching their heads. You know, yeah, well, maybe we should have sent. I mean, these guys are surfing well. There's no doubt about it. But uh, uh, as far as, um, oh, I'm not going to go down that road. Well, maybe seeing Mick Fanning, Ace Bucken, Joe, Joe Parkinson, Parkinson, Taj Burrow. You know, he's, he's, he's living up in Indonesia right now. Get the boys, get the band back together again. Well, you know, with the Olympic era on... Uh, well, let's let's go to break and talk about this stuff. When okay, we come okay. Back. There's the lineup for heat number six. When we come back, that's going to be out in the water. You're watching the 2016, excuse me, the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games live from Baritz. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games, and life doesn't get any better than this. A national holiday, a beach day, and a world championship surfing event in the Olympic surfing era. And here we go, heat number six, round number four. And let's introduce these fabulous surfers who have made their trek from around the world. 
One from Uruguay in red is Luis Maria Uteria. In white from Japan, Yuri Ogasawara. In the yellow jersey from Spain is Vincent Romero. And from England in the blue jersey, that's Jace Robinson. I'm Bo Hodge along with uh, Diogo Alpendre. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Your pronunciation of my last name is getting better by the day. Thank you. And uh, I think we have someone ready. Well, let's go down to the beachside and the one and only on floor. With Vincent Dubignac, what is the magic potion for the French team? The crowd, the French crowd, definitely, uh, yeah. There is more and more intensity, uh, hit after hit, uh, round after round. So, yeah, I'm so stoked to have all this crowd and supporting the French team. It's awesome. As soon as you have a Frenchie in the water, it feels like it's definitely going for a, a win. Do you guys... Um, Feed of each other's success and motivation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, supporting all my team is uh, is magical. It's something magical, and um, yeah, there is a lot of uh, good vibes, you know, in the French stand. And um, yeah, we are all laughing, and uh, yeah, we we are just here to to have fun first, and uh, to um, yeah to perform in the contest. In secondly, yeah, so uh, yeah. So happy. <laughs> How special is it that you guys are all making it through each round? Does it uh, allow you guys to really celebrate and enjoy the moment all together? Does it bring you together? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. right now it's uh, like a, a team sport, a real team sport. Every every round we're bringing more points to the team and the girls al already gave us a, a lot of points. So. Yeah, we are not looking for the uh, for the ranking right now, but uh, yeah, of course, if uh, all the all the boys from the French team are still in the camp uh, tonight and for tomorrow, uh, maybe it, it could be a good day tomorrow. <laughs> Definitely could be a good day tomorrow. Wanna give a little a little hello to ouais. tous nos supporters français qui te suivent. Oh, Allez, coucou à tout le monde, merci de nous supporter. C'est à chaque fois un peu plus d'intensité, série après série. Euh, C'est incroyable de, de vivre ça sur la plage avec tout, tous ces supporters. C'est ouais, juste énorme. Et on a vraiment un super crew. Et, euh, le team est vraiment impeccable et nous supporte à fond. Et moi, je suis trop heureux de représenter la France et euh, ouais, tous les surfeurs français. On est, on est vraiment un bon crew et c'est... C'est vraiment top. Merci. Merci et félicitations. Back to you guys. Thank you so much. And just this thought entered my mind, Diogo. You're Vincent Duvinac or Ome um, Dimitri, and you're thinking, oh, my God, I'm on the French national team, and all of my four teammates are world championship touring surfers on the dream tour of the World Surf League. How special is it for them to be a part of this team? It's probably really, really special, but uh, I'm pretty sure that they have been friends for a long time. So they've showing a they have been showing a lot of humility uh, since the beginning of the contest. So in that sense, I think there are no status uh, better status just because some of them are on the city and other are not. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think that is probably a bit of a key also for a good team management going some on. Some of the great. French surfers who aren't here. Charlie Martin. He was on the World um, Surf Games last year at Costa Rica. Um, there's quite a few that didn't make this team because it was probably the most competitive team to make this year. And here we go. We got a replay here, Diogo. This is surfer in yellow, Vincent Romero. Yeah, that first turn was nice. A bit uh, uh, of a loss of momentum after it. But the smashes afterwards, that's going to be a big one. I, I, is that is that the 5A3? I don't think that's the 5A3 because that I was massive. And this is Jace Robinson from uh, England, 4-3-3, just uh, behind him again, Bo Itzituria. Yeah, let's watch him finishing up here. I like his fluid maneuvers there, finishing off. So judges are busy. They're quite busy right now. Luis Maria open up with a 1-7-3. That wave gets him a 4-8-7 you just saw on screen. That's a Romero open up with a 5-8-3. We can tell you that Jace Robinson from England in blue. Lee Bartlett will be glad to hear about this. He's in the lead, Lee. Jace is in the lead with a 4-3-3 and a 3.0. And uh, uh, Vicente Romero once again on his backhand. He's going to smash this section. Look at that. Boom. Got a nice projection off that turn. Again, wraps around that one. Goes over that little bump and uh, finishes off that wave. 
But uh, during our break, we were talking about Team Australia because it lost all its uh, members in the men's division. But I remember being a kid and starting to catch up on the ISA and really following uh, all the events and all the uh, big results. And Team Australia back then, this was uh, 2017, 16, 8, uh, 2007, 8. Uh, around that, Team Australia was dominating. Oh, they were the dominant force in surfing, you know. Uh, Australia, the powerhouse, the United States, France, Brazil. Those are the big dogs in the world. But everybody else is starting to catch up. Peru, Argentina, Costa Rica. They have made statements. Costa Rica won the World Surf Games two years ago. And last year they were hosting it. And Peru came back to win the third time in six years. So they're, the talent amongst the World Tour is enormous. Just imagine what's going to happen when uh, every team starts bringing their top, top surfers in a WCT when the schedule is adjusted to really allow them to um, compete in this event and not miss a World Tour event. Uh, just because there's that chance that th this event might just be uh, a qualifier for the Olympics. Just imagine what's going to happen to the level. Well, you know, when we go to Tokyo, I, you know, Kelly Slater wants to be part of Team USA. But if they only have to pick one male participant it's going to be tough maybe kelly will be back on his game maybe it'll be kolohe you just never know maybe it'll be john john hawaii and the united states have to join as one surfing nation under the isa umbrella hawaii is honored due to the duke's history duke Hanamoku, and the history of surfing that he introduced not only to uh, the big surfing nation but to around the world and that's duke's dream to bring surfing into the olympics and our tire tireless work from Fernando Aguirre for over 22 years has now finally paid off and we're three years from that living that dream and uh <clears throat> just yesterday before going to bed I was uh, like a lot of us do uh, checking on um, I was on YouTube checking on uh, surfing videos and uh, the last few uh, videos I watch were from uh, Andy Aaron's mm -hmm. uh, a lot of Andy Aaron's videos and I was just thinking as you were si talking about Kelly how incredible it would be to have Andy and then Kelly on the same team. Oh, no. Those <laughs> guys are so competitive. Only one could stand in the room. <laughs> the, the rivalry between Andy Irons was over a bowl of cereal. I know, right? But, uh, oh, man. This is white up and riding Ogazawara from uh, Japan. He's a young gun, but look at him go already in round four, making his guys for a quarterfinal quarterfinal qualification now japan had four of their men surfers in round number three they lost two of them one of them is here right now in the white jersey the other one is daiki tanaka coming up in heat number eight so exciting times for team japan they will be hosting the next isa surfing event in the end of september that's the isa world juniors yeah it's going to be really really exciting i'm um, uh hopefully we'll have some uh some uh, teams that missed out on this year's event, um, on this event, on that next one, specifically um, Team Hawaii, as they are pretty much one of the favorites going for uh, medals there. But, uh, oh, Japan, that's going to be so great to see. Yeah, Japan, uh, they really want to start rehearsing for the Olympics, and I think that's, that's just great practice. And here we go, our Japanese competitor, Yuri, throwing the tail. Can he spin it around? No, he falls off this one. He's putting himself in position, but right now he's just not riding out on the waves. Vincent Romero in the lead right now with a 5.83 and a 4.43. So that puts Chase Robinson in second, needing a 5.94 surfer in blue with first priority. Eteria from Uruguay now needing a wave of a 2.47. And Ogasawara now needing a wave of a 5.67. Look at this corner for our surfer in blue, Chase Robinson. Bam, first turn, game. He's going to hit that section, just a check of turn to get some projection, but uh, he goes down. Nothing major there from our English surfer. Our sole English surfer still in contention. Of course, we lost Ruben Ash a few hits ago. And Luke Dillon. Is Luke Dillon still in competition? Oh, we also lost to, uh, Luke Dillon earlier today. That's right. But uh, we'll see what happens. Ruben Ash qualified for this round, didn't make it to the next one. Let's see if Jake Robinson can make the Queen proud here at Biarritz. Well, nine and a half minutes remaining. This extra five minutes is giving the surfers a little bit more pause because some of these guys would have surfed if they make it into the quarterfinals three times today. Yeah, and that takes it. So although the conditions aren't as uh, physically demanding as they could be, 
and as they were in the first few days, truth be said, uh, that's a lot of heat. This is Vicente Romero trying to up that 4-4-3. Uh, look at him go. He lives really close by, six hour drives in the north of Spain, in the Asturias. Uh, actually, in Galicia, sorry. So a bit more like eight hours drive, but uh, Vicente Romero, great surfing. Aritzaran Baru, he's from the Basque country in the Spanish area, correct? That's correct. Yeah. He's from uh, Zarauz. Has uh, just put up, um, a sh um, how's it called, a surf school and um, a dining place there. Uh, some new business endeavors, endeavors from uh, our former city surfer who uh, we would have loved to see he compete here. Well, now we have a new second place surfer in this, Luis, Luis Maria right now. Yeah, Itoria, look at that turn. He won it and he pushed it hard. You could see his waist turning really hard. And this is Ogasawarabo. Yeah, let's watch him on the attack. He's had some bad wave selection um, on his rotation. I was talking to Leila yesterday, uh, Leandro Osuna, and I said, you seem to be out of link. He said, when I had priority, the, the good waves weren't there, but I had to take waves because I had to make something happen. Sometimes with the priority system, it's to your advantage, the waves come to you, but sometimes you got to take off on waves you really wouldn't have paddled on. I remember seeing really weird things in heat like Kelly having priority and just wasting it on purpose on a bad wave just so he could get good waves under priority oh. and those mind games that he would do with that. Just imagine doing that stuff with a four-man uh, priority system. Well, one time Kelly was comboed by Timmy Reyes. It was like a 19.23 oh. combo at pipe, and then within one minute, under priority, Kelly turned the heat and combo Timmy Reyes. I saw that. Uh, it was absolutely amazing. I was glued to the webcast. And I think that was the year that he eventually won against Chris Ward in the final. So that was such a great event. The the, the, the water was all uh, muddy, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. We had some chocolate rainwater, muddy water that back then. Here we go. Agasawar definitely on his best ride. Now he's going for broke right now. He's got to throw everything. The kitchen sink. He's got to throw all the tables, the dressing. He's got to get going right now because... Six minutes, 50 seconds remaining. Scores coming in for him should be good. He's opening up with a 167. He's got two other one point rides. He's counting a high of a 4.8. And let's watch his wave again. Yeah, I like that last turn, but uh, he was well poised right from the start. A nice slashing turn to start things off. And then look how hard he pushes that. Look at the technique. That tail going all the way around. I hope the judges take a close look at that because Ogasawara oh, got a nice turn in there. Hey, he's only 17 years old. Oh, man. Japan's future is looking so bright, so bright. And the other Japanese surfer in this same round, Daiki Tanaka, he's 18 years old. <sighs> so Japan's got a great junior program, and they're bringing it here to Beiritz on the World Surfing Games. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to, great to see. And, of course, competing at home later in the year. Maybe they go friends, all friends on the event and just uh, <laughs> absolutely dominate the, the performances. Well, we're waiting scores. You can see the surfers, when they raise their hands, they're communicating to the beach announcer. They want a series of things. They want to know the time. They want to know the situation. They want to know the scores. They also want to know the scores of other surfers and where they're playing because if one guy can pass another guy, he wants to make sure to do better on his waves. I remember a specific Brazilian surfer that would ask the beach announcer to repeat the scores when he was over other guys so that the other guys could hear nonstop, you need a 9.5, just to uh, mind games. Was that Adriano de Souza? It was not. Oh, okay. Well, he's famous for that, too. Michel Perez, too. Uh, Tiago Camarão. Tiago Camarão, yeah. <laughs> Vicente Romero, a 6 4 3. And I was thinking, if Kelly doesn't make it to that U.S. team, imagine having Kelly as your coach at the Olympics. I would love that. I would love to see that. 4.33 for Ogasewar. He moves up into third place. That puts our English surfer down the fourth. Jace Robinson now needs a 5.32. Ogasewar now needs a 4.85. And we're at the five-minute mark. We sure are. And uh, Vicente Romero from Spain, he is relatively, relatively close to um, home. So... Uh, it's uh, Vicente has an interesting story. He didn't come from a very rich family, let's say like that, in uh, Brazil. So when he started doing the QSs, he fell in love with Europe. And uh, he fell in love in such a way 
that f he fell in love with a young lady from Spain and uh, he st he strived for a better life so he stayed here and is uh, living in Spain and uh, kicking off his career from here and he's fighting hard for that uh, surfing career and uh, from what we have seen from here in this from he from him in this heat uh, it looks like uh, he's going good. Yeah, Romero in the lead from Spain. Combination of scores of a 6-4-3 and a 5-8-3. Luis Maria Iteria in red right there. Currently in second place. Combination of scores of a 9-6-4. He needs a 7.4 if he wants to go to first. And in third place, Ogasiwara from Japan. Now needing a 4-8-5. A 4-8-5 to go into second place. And Chase Robinson... Our surfer in the blue jersey, now needing a 5-3-2. And there's our leader right now, Vincent Romero from Spain, holding down first place, and more importantly, holding down first priority. Yep, yep, yep. And let's see how he's going to uh, um, really manage and use that first priority. Because, uh, you know what, second and third are with Aogazawara and Robinson. They are the surfers needing a score, so they are the surfers who are going to really hunt the waves and gonna have to hunt those this is jace robinson the wave didn't look like much but uh, he's trying to build something out of it it went for way longer than i thought it was gonna uh, go uh, jace's wave but uh, nevertheless great uh, effort from our british surfer english surfer robinson so there's red raising his hand he wants to hear it again one more time let everybody know i'm in second Time, two and a half minutes remaining. Ogasawara needing a 4.85. He's holding down second priority behind Romero in yellow. Romero in the lead with first priority. So Robinson will be on standby for scores. Robinson needs a 5.32. Don't believe that last wave could get him there. So you know he's going to go back out for more. He's hungry. Remember, third and fourth are eliminated. Japan's down to their last two. And uh, Ogazawara needing a 4.85 with two minutes to go, Bo. He has second priority, so Romero might not be too worried about him and might just stick to Ituria, our surfer in red. He is the surfer uh, needing the biggest score to go up. But uh, Ogazawara and Robinson might just uh, get an opportunity and get that score. <laughs> a little funny situation going down there with our uh, Ituria. The surfer from Uruguay. We have heard from him earlier today on our interview with uh, Ann Floor, and uh, he was happy, one of the oldest in competition, but uh, his surf stoked goes so well with the ISA surfing spirit. Yeah, one minute, 20 seconds remembering. Uh, don't forget, 2019, the ISA is teaming up with the IOC, and they're going to be having the Pan Am Games in Lima, Peru. Surfing is included in this year's Pan American Games coming up in 2019 in Lima and also in 2019 the World Beach Games. The very first World Beach Games will be in San Diego and it's going to be an atmosphere like none other. Beach volleyball, surfing, sup racing, skateboarding, BMX. It's going to be everything beach culture, surf culture. It's going to be exciting. Is it a team competition also? Well, we'll have to just wait and see. Uh, why not? Why not? Why not? Invite that's all the nations from around the world. Bring your best of your best, and let's compete. Yeah, that, that'll be great. And uh, it's sure a really good uh, um, pre-event to the big one, uh, of course, the Tokyo one. But, um, yeah, really excited about uh, what's unfolding in the next uh, three years. As we go straight live action, Oga Sawara. Needing a 4.85, goes for an air, but comes unstuck. And I think that's all uh, she wrote for Team Japan in this heat with Romero and Iturria, our Spanish-speaking um, um, surfers, uh, moving on to the next round. And with the sound of the horn, that's going to round out heat number six. And we lost our last English surfer in the competition. Japan is down to one more. And that's Daiki Tanaka. He's coming up in heat eight. There's the lineup. Joan Daru is leading the cause here in heat number seven. When we return, we'll have the great play-by-play -play of that heat. And stick around for more. You're watching the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games live from Baritz, France.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're back with live action straight from the fourth round of the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games. We are at the beautiful city of uh, Biarritz in the Basque country of France. In the southeast, in the water, is heat number seven of uh, round four. So um, we are reducing and reducing our field uh, from every heat on. In the water, we have uh, four new surfers. Four new surfers that can you can see on your screen. These are Jonas Bachen, Jordi Collins, Joan Duru, and Taylor Hutchinson. Bachen from Austria, Collins from USA, Hutchinson from New Zealand, and Duru from France. Local boy. Already some scores locked in, and it's Collins. Uh, with a 0 for 7, 1, 2, 3 for Bachen, and a pretty low score for uh, Hutchison so far. Official results of that last hit Vicente Romero and Luis Maria Ituria just making it through to the next round. And um, they will represent their home teams in the quarterfinals. So that will be very exciting. We are looking forward to the quarterfinals as they will come up later today. We are saving the semifinals and the finals for tomorrow. And if conditions allow us, we will do the all quarterfinals. That's what's on plan. That's what uh, we are hoping for. And uh, we'll see if it does happen as expected. The conditions are clearing up a little bit for sure. A beautiful day. Sun is out. The the storm that uh, hit us last night is absolutely gone. Clear skies. Uh, an occasional um, an occasional uh, cloud here and there, but overall a great day. And uh, Joan Duru starting off his heat with a 683. That's a great score for him to start things off with. Um, it, it, it really, um, and this is Jordi Collins on a nice left, going fast as usual. Jordi Collins, uh, team captain from USA. Really funny, he was the o the one who um, did the oath in the Azores last uh, um, year in the um, juniors events in the Azores. Great surfer, great personality also. His uh, post-heat interviews are also are always really funny. And uh, this is uh, a drone angle, red, white, and yellow. Paddling for uh, this incoming line. And let's see who's going to be in position. Well, yeah, as, uh, when you said, uh, well, let's get to this. This is uh, John Duru. Checking out that right-hander, but you were talking about Jordy Collins' post-heat interviews. The man has a commanding sense of presence. I really enjoy uh, listening to him speak about his team, 
about representing the United States. And um, we're going to get back more to this heat. But first, we have a the beach north. interview. For surfers, please move further yeah, we do. North. We have N Floor That's down the there side. getting ready. N Floor, you ready? With Vicente Romero going through the quarterfinals. That was great heat management. Yeah, that was my best hit, I think. Uh, I start pretty seven. pretty fast a with a 5-8-3, then I catch Last another backup points. score. Last and points. without priority, I catch more two good ways. And so, you know, for me, it was kind many ways coming for me. And the other guys were, were looking for four points. And I, I, it was kind lucky hit, you know, I was with the rhythm. And yeah, the, how I say in the hit before, I was kind of lost, and this one I was with the rhythm, so I just want to keep going. Team Spain, uh, how much does it mean for you guys to uh, to keep advancing into those quarterfinals? Yeah, we are three still in the contest, so we want to fight for the podium, and we hope to do well. Johnny is in already in quarters, me too, and. Imano is, is in the next week, so we're going. <laughs> Perfect. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Back to you guys. Thank you so much, Vicente. Thank you so much, Hen Flor Marce. Great doing a great job in the beach interviews down there. Um, and uh, 13 minutes to go. Already some scores locked in. You were just telling us about uh, Jordy Collins and his big personality. Yeah big personality and uh, well what would have got here for a replay Jordy Collins himself looks like he's gaining some speed taking to the air nice uh, rotation a little stall on the rotation but he got some good uh, distance from that and uh, finishes well so strong surfing uh, here from blue Jordy Collins and uh, he believe that was a replay of the 5-1-7 unless the judges are yet to put a score down we'll just uh, stay tuned on that but uh, Jordy Collins currently in second John Daru in first got that 6-8-3 coming out with a bang as this heat started Jonas Bakken he's got a small score of a 3-9-3 and uh, Hutchinson from New Zealand really yet to get anything going so he's uh Hunting uh, scores being dropped right now, so we'll see where that lands. 12 minutes to go. Joanne Derue is in the lead, one of the city surfers we have here, and that he, he, he from the city, and that uh, is probably looking forward to represent <coughs> Team France in the Olympics. Of course, uh, France is wildly expected to qualify for uh, the occasion, as they are one of the top uh, teams of the world <coughs> they sure put on a great performance every time they compete on the games uh, in the games should I say okay update looks like there is a new score being dropped for Jordy Collins and it's uh, better than the 5.7 uh, 5.17 initial indications are so uh, we'll have that news for you as soon as the other judges fill in the gaps and uh, this score, he only needs a 2.54 to move into first position thus far. And uh, just about almost uh, half the heat elapsed thus far. And uh, Jordy Collins with a 6.07 on that last nice air rotation. And uh, here he goes again. Blue winding up. What's he got? He's coming down the line. Forget these sections. He's trying to... He went uh, for a little passion pop there. A passion pop, varial airstrike something or other Jordy Collins getting creative gotta love that so uh, not gonna factor into his top two but right now Jordy Collins takes the lead John Drew in second John Drew only needs a 4.42 still sitting with the highest score of the heat with that 683 how easy do these guys take it to the air it's amazing isn't it well, you know, uh, when PT was in the booth the other day, he was uh, really, really on point when he said, these guys grew up with it. Uh, the teenagers of today and even the 20-somethings, it's what they grew up watching, you know. In generations before this, when it was a full-on rail game, everybody was in the water. I mean, floaters were kind of the big thing 20 years ago. And now it's, uh, you know, while well, it was like a few guys, Martin Potter and Richie Collins would take to the air, but in the next generation, we saw um, Taj Barrow and guys like that start to really pump it up. 
and then all of a sudden it's just like you got to have an air game to compete on the world stage um, uh, uh, at least uh, in in most of the uh, events I've seen if you you know there of course there's surfers like uh, you know Joel Parkinson and um, uh, Oh, I'm, ha I'm ha struggling remembering the Tahitian's name right now, but here we go. Here's Red, Joan Daru. He's got a beautiful little snap on the right-hander to start. Comes down. How confidently is this guy surfing at the moment, Joan Daru? Well, I think the entire French team is instilled with confidence, and they're drawing that from each other. So, uh, you know, they're taking this momentum deep into the contest right now. And so far, so good. I mean, we've got a lot of talent pool here besides Team France, so they're definitely on their way. But, uh, you know, anything can happen in these next few rounds. John Daru, uh, nice little slash right there, throwing some spray. And a, a nice backside heat there for uh, Daru to finish it off that wave. Yeah, <coughs> aerial surfing. Uh, Jordi Collins, of course, one of the surfers that is really pushing in that direction in this event. Ellie Velten was also going that way. But a great Durham angle from it uh, this way for this wave of Jonas Bachen. Uh, pushing a little too hard on that last uh, section. But um, he goes down. But the damage was done. I just hoped that he would have done that uh, turn a bit more conservatively as he would uh, have uh, wrapped up that uh, um, wave a bit better. So, uh, Michelle Berez was the surfer I was talking about, the Spartan, as they call him. Very, very, very uh, great example of a surfer who surfs really hard on the rail. He's even adapted. Once in a while, you see him go to the air. Obviously, he doesn't have the same kind of success rate as someone like Chloe Andino or Gabriel Medina or John John Florence, but the uh, rail surfers, the power surfers are having to adapt, and likewise... The air guys, the trick guys, are having to adapt power. So it's really been a fantastic evolution. And uh, J Jordy Collins is uh, showcasing uh, a little bit of everything here to currently hold down the lead. I actually got to see um, Jordy surf in uh, Portugal, in, uh, in Portugal, in Santa Cruz, um, just a few weeks ago. And he was surfing good, doing some crazy airs, just <laughs> overly. I mean, he was super confident he was all over the left just punting non-stop and uh i think he's in a i think jordy collins is a surfer that's building a lot of momentum he's coming off his junior career still doing some junior events but starting to do those qs's and i think he's the type of surfer that can succeed on the qs i see him as a very confident young man as we see the replay of uh, this wave of Jonas Bach, and we saw it from the drone angle. Now, with uh, the more common angle, we see that he went for broke on that last section, but had he finished off with a, uh, just a more conservative turn there, he might have gotten a score better than that 5-3-3 he got. Yeah, I like what he was doing, though. I like, it. I like that he's trying to pull out the stops. Um, uh, we saw it in the earlier heats. Uh, there's no more room for being conservative. A lot of people like to say, oh, you know, you should peak in the finals. But right now, oh. if you're not peaking, you're not getting through these heats. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, Jonas Bach in there, 5-3-3, three, three, backside heat over backside heat, back to back to back. And uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the thing is that it's so hard to keep your momentum going every heat in a contest. I mean, you cannot go for a 10-point ride every heat, can you? Well, certainly uh, that would be the goal. But yeah, uh, mathematically, logistically, it, it would seem that uh, uh, no one is ever going to get a 10-point ride every time they stand up. But getting a 5.53, Joan Drew moves into first place. And uh, with five minutes left, uh, it's like Groundhog Day. Frenchman in first, moving uh, in the direction that, uh, of course, Team France, our host city here in Biarritz, can't be happier. Yeah, absolutely. You see the fl uh, flags there. I wonder if these three flags and the choice of having three flags is on purpose as we go uh, with live action. This is Duru. First turn there. Pushes the tail a little bit, Mike. Yeah, looking uh, spry on that wave. Just beautiful. Uh, powerful flow, good smooth 
um, maneuvering. And uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, just uh, uh, a great, uh, great wave from uh, uh, Joan Duru. Likely to uh, uh, rival that five-five-three for sure. Maybe even surpass the six-eight-three. We'll see. Four minutes and six seconds counting. All right, we're looking at uh, Jean Deru again, just very, very uh, solid surfing from Team France once again. Judges deliberating on this score, still haven't uh, posted yet. Right now the situation, Jean Deru in first place, Jordy Collins in second place. His low score is a 5-1-7. Jonas Bakken, he's sitting in third place. He needs a 5.92 to overtake the young American. He's got a 3.93 sitting on his score line. So um, he'll be out hunting. Taylor Hutchinson, he's sitting with two pretty low scores, needs uh, 8.05 to get in the mix. 7.1 for Juan Juan Deru's last wave. Uh, Vincent de Vignac, Juan Dimitri, and Jeremy Fuller is coming up next are all putting quite a show for Team France. Really exciting time for uh, uh, the French team as they are getting closer and closer to that gold medal they won so much. And um, and uh, it looks like we're still going to have a few uh, sets in this heat. The drone keeps providing us some great shots of the Grand Plage here. And we are really, really excited about... Uh, being here and the surf going down of course you went through again dominating the heat but I, I'm really excited about what Jordy Collins is doing uh, in this event so far we might just be uh, <coughs> witnessing the rise and uh, the birth of a new American star Jordy Collins of course put on a, a great display of action in the Azores and now uh, of course uh, um, doing some great surfing again here at the World Surfing Games. Presented by the French Surfing Pedr Federation, supported by Quicksilver Air France, the French National Olympic Committee, Atlantic Pyrenees Department, Biarritz, L'Equipe, our media partners, Gravidad Zero, Vibras and Waves. These are our media partners and we are really excited about being here and the surfing that's being put on, one minute 30 to go. We can see that Collins keeps on looking for those ramps, just going left fast, faster and faster. He's always uh, looking towards um, a launching section there, and uh, we'll see what happens if uh, he does land one of those big airs that we have seen him try. I think the judges are going to go nuts over that. Under one minute to go. And uh, it's going to get interesting in this last few seconds of the heat. <laughs> 30 seconds to go. And uh, it looks like there will be some more li new lines coming for the last few seconds of the heat and it's uh, 10 15 seconds to go we see our surfer in white Hutchinson he was completely off uh, in his heat a bit lost at sea with Bachen putting on a good effort but uh, unfortunately coming a bit short of what he needed so that's what that's all she wrote for this heat Looks like France and USA move on. Again, Team France putting on a great display of action. This is the lineup for the next heat. We're going on a short commercial break and we'll be right back with more action. Stay tuned.
Welcome back to the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games and just another glorious day here in the Basque Country in the southwest region of France. We're at Bay Ritz and we are in our final heat of round number four and let's get to it. Let's describe as Red finishes up here as our Spaniard surfer. That's the Emmanuel Urigui. We got Daiki Tanaka in white, Jeremy Flores from France in yellow, and Miguel Blanco from Portugal in blue. I'm Bo Hodge along with Mike Latronic, another 20-minute heat. Top two surfers, Mike, will find themselves in the quarterfinals, and the quarterfinals coming up in the next heat. Yeah, the pressure sieve is cinching down, and our surfer in red from Spain right there uh, doing all he could. Uh, at the end of that wave, he was able to get a couple extra clicks, so really working hard. For every single point, he knows he's up against some uh, powerhouse here. We've got a couple of great surfers. Here is our surfer in white, Daiki Tanaka. He's got himself a long section, gets ahead of it, and plants a beautiful off the lip on that closeout. Here's what we saw from our surfer in red, Imano, getting a long left-hander, doing a series of turns, putting his board up on uh, the lip right there. I like the way he uh, flared that section. So he's not done yet. A little click there. Doesn't ride out of it. And the judge is busy uh, double checking that. Finally looks like the water's moving in. The tide's moving back in. And uh, you can see the rip on the right-hand side of the screen really uh, moving out to sea. But uh, that'll diminish as the water starts to push in here. As we pan over to the... Uh Left side that was totally underwater during high tide all the way up to the sidewalk. And you can walk out to those points, the Venus points, and you, onto the upper side of that cliff. You can see down to the south. You can see Spain from here. Yeah, pretty cool. I had a walk over to the uh, lighthouse the other day. And a uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, point jutting out to sea. And I was like, oh, that's another country right there. Well, there's Jeremy Flores, the 29-year-old from Reunion Island, representing France. So far, his teammates, all three, have elevated themselves into the quarterfinals. So Jeremy's trying to make it four for four. They're the last country that still has not lost a surfer all week long in competition. Well, and you got to admire the work ethic of Jeremy Flores. Uh, if I had to put money down, I'd say it'd be four for four, but... That's not discounting the uh, efforts for the other three surfers in the water. So Jeremy has his work cut out for him. He can't make any mistakes. Let's go down to the beach side and check in with Anne Flora. I believe she has Joan Duru. And with Joan Duru, you guys all making it through the to the quarterfinals. Uh, Jeremy's in the water right now. Would you have dreamt of that uh, position when you were a kid looking at the, the World Championship of Surfing? Not really, but uh, now we're happy. We want to. It's good to do a contest at home and the World Championship. So we want to win the medal. We're gonna try. <laughs> and you're becoming a fierce competitor. What advice could you give your young self uh, to lead the way to where you are now? Just keep have fun and just get to not get too serious. Just have fun as long as they can because after they're gonna have a long uh, year of serious and uh, a bit hard. So get the fun a uh, long time. <laughs> Are you still having fun when you compete? Yeah, of course. Compete, sometimes it's a little bit frustration, but I'm still having a lot of fun surfing. That's why I keep going. <laughs> and you're doing great. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Back to you guys. Thanks so much. And one of the local surfers here, just up north of Bayonne, where there's Angled and Hasi Gore, and he feels right at home here at Bay Riz, doesn't he? Definitely. And he looks right at home, too. So, uh, Jeremy Flores got a uh, throwaway. He's now in third priority. First priority goes to the Spaniard, currently sitting in second spot, Daniel da Daiki Tanaka. Excuse me. He's got fourth priority, but he's sitting in first position. Here goes Jeremy Flores on a nice-looking left-hand wall. Tries a very different maneuver there. We haven't seen a layback like that all event long, unfortunately, uh, not coming out of that. Well, Jeremy, out of sync right now. We see our surfer out of Spain, Manuel. He's got a 5-3-3. He's in second place. He's chasing our Japanese surfer, the young 18-year-old Daiki Tanaka, who has a 4-8-7 and a 2-6-7. Still no waves yet for our Portuguese surfer, uh, Miguel Blanco. And already Portugal advancing one surfer into the quarterfinals. France has three. Spain has two. Peru has two. Morocco 
has two surfers in the quarterfinals, one each from Uruguay, Mexico, Tahiti, and the United States, and Portugal trying to get their second man coming on through there. Well, there's the boardwalk and the beach walk here and the high tide yesterday afternoon, Mike, when we got out of the water, was all the way up to those steps. Yeah, I took a walk down the boardwalk at high tide, and uh, you really had to wait for the waves because uh, it was splashing over the boardwalk and uh, splashing over the top of this lip is Jeremy Flores looking fast and furious, but no room on the end of that wave. So just two clicks, a nice solid click on that second one. So uh, he's finally on the board with at least a few points. Well, it's just about 1.48 in the afternoon as we're moving towards another high tide coming up later around 7 o'clock this evening. And here we go. Let's watch Jeremy on his third wave. Yeah, just a little uh, setup move there. And then he drops to the bottom, hits it pretty nice. And uh, as you can see, it just closed out. So there's really no more room to work with there. Former Billabong Pipe Master Champion, former Tahitian Billabong champion just two years ago there's the man in red our Spaniard currently in the lead on a one wave score of a 5-3-3 no waves yet for our Portuguese surfer Miguel Blanco and there well, he is say the man's name and he shows up so Miguel Blanco's got himself a good looking left hander vertical off the top so he's working on uh, what looks to be a pretty decent opening ride in comparison uh, it may r reach up there into uh, Emmanuel's realm. Emmanuel's got that 5-3-3. Uh, three, three. Blanco may be going just a little more vertical, so score's now starting to drop for yellow. Let's see. Jeremy just needs a 4.41, Mike, and um, if he gets that, he could go into second place. But remember, in second place, our Spanish surfer is sitting on a one-wave count of a 5-3-3. Still early times. Here we go. Jeremy Flores up and riding again. Yeah, well, way down the beach, making quick work of another left-hander. Kind of a sloppy crossover wave. Seems like he's trying to force the issue here. Yeah, um, you know, he doesn't like uh, having a score line with only one uh, decent ride. So I, I think the order of the day right now, or the order of the moment, is you got to kind of keep cycling. You know, a lot of these waves are really hard to read. So you could take off on a wave that looks really good. It might die out or it might close out and then, look, you know, take off on a wave that sort of looks odd with a double up down on the end and it stays open for three or four sections. So I think Jeremy's just trying to cycle through that. Well, there you go. Miguel Blanco in his opening wave at 507. So two of our surfers, one for Portugal, one for Spain with five point rides. So that's going to really put some pressure on Jeremy to really step up his game. He's got two scores yet to be added in. Waves number three and waves number four. There's wave number three, a 4.57. Wave number four, need one more judge, and he'll actually jump into the lead with a four-point ride and a 4.57. So a low-scoring affair here in our final heat of round number four. Floor is in the lead with an 8.57 two-wave combination. Tanaka needs a 3.71, and here we go. Jeremy up and riding again. Well, Jeremy Flores does not feel comfortable sitting with fours and fives on his line. He's uh, trying to rectify that. On the world tour, typically surfers looking at eights to advance on uh, these things. So uh, he's bringing that here. He's definitely in a hurry to replace those scores. Beautiful slam off the top on the end of that, but again, another short ride. Yeah, the judges are uh, dissecting this wave score, but once red and blue catch their solid second wave, that's really gonna push up the advancement requirements for this heat. So we could be seeing yet another shocking heat for Jeremy Flores. Remember, when he's paddling back out, he's paddling out there with fourth priority. Score's not in yet for last of Jeremy Flores. This world championship being presented by the French Surfing Federation. Our great sponsors include Visa and Roxy, along with the French National Center of Development of Sport and the Nouvelle Aquitaine region in the Basque Country area. Official radio station France Blue and our TV affiliate France TV Sport. Our media partners include Surfline, the official first forecaster, and Surfos Magazine, along with Passion Extrema. And there's the proud French flags and Team France. And, of course, uh, Jeremy's dad, Patrick 
Flores has been a supporter of many of the French teams, whether junior world surfing games. He's always part of that traveling team going to the ISA events. Well, yeah, Patrick Flores, definitely a force in uh, French surfing, big part of the federation. And uh, wow, scores came in for Flores' last wave. A 6.73, so he does better than what we thought he would do. And now he's made a statement here, putting himself in front. So it paid off for Jeremy to be charging and charging and charging yet those waves. So five wave count right now for Jeremy and his top two waves are there at a 6.73 and a 4.57. Well, I think he's done what he wanted to do. He wanted to get a couple scores under his belt. Now he's gonna wait for something more open. Meanwhile, Blanco, Hitting it twice, pretty nice. So uh, really uh, snappy style. I like what Blanco's been able to do. Meanwhile, our Japanese surfer in white, Tanaka, he's got himself a closeout again. So a lot of short rides right now, Bo. Basically, judges are, are, are looking at scores for uh, two maneuver waves. Let's see if uh, Jeremy can change that. One uh, big turn right there. Another slam unable to come through that. So another... Two maneuver attempt there, second maneuver uh, was uh, unsuccessful. Jeremy grabbing for his leash, getting his board. You see the frustration in him. He's he's such a perfectionist, isn't he? Yeah, like I said, he's he's used to uh, you know putting eights and nines down on a score line, and he doesn't want anything else. He's trying to get that uh, established. He's got the weight of uh, Team France on his shoulders, but boy, oh boy, Team France has wings to help lift them. All their other three men's male surfers still going in this competition, and by uh, initial indications, Jeremy Flores looks to be the fourth. Well, we're gonna be on standby for last wave of Tanaka coming in at a 2.67. Let's watch a series of replays here, Mike. Uh, this is our Japanese surfer in white. He uh, finishes with a pretty nice click off on his backhand. He will replace a 2.67, perhaps. See the beach goers enjoying this beautiful Saturday afternoon. Just one more day. So Marcos, our surfing director, our contest director with the International Surfing Association, hails from Brazil. And um, he is scheduled all the way to run through the quarterfinals. So that means, Mike, tomorrow we are on standby for two semifinal heats, eight surfers working their way, advancing top two of each of those semis for a final four. And the Aloha Cup be on standby. Yeah, well, with these uh, extreme tides here in France, they are definitely going to be on alert for the limited amount of time they might have to finish the competition. Here we go. Tanaka now relegated to third place. Blanco moves into first by virtue of his last wave, which is a 6.37. Good uh double snaps that he did on that left-hander we saw a few minutes ago. Beautiful surfing from our Portuguese surfer. Well, Miguel Blanco has now moved into the lead. They're readjusting some scores here on our screen, so if you're seeing the shakeup, that is the reason why, so we apologize for that. The judges here at Refresh doing a fine job. So they're putting in the score, reevaluating the score for Miguel Blanco. He'll have a slight lead over Jeremy Flores. And now that score comes in at a 6.2 instead of a 6.4. So it goes below Jeremy's two wave count at this stage. And stand by for Daiki Tanaka's third wave score. Okay, well, dealing with some modern technology here. But uh, it is all primitive right now. It's about bashing the lip. And uh, our surfer in white is doing just that, rallying to earn himself. He needs a 6.41 to get back into that transition spot. A 6.44 to move into first place. So we'll see what the judges have on this next wave. His low score right now is a 2.67. Judges working on the... Uh, scoring system but here goes red haven't seen much of this man for a while so he puts up a turn on his backside deep bottom turn slams the lip can he get around this section unfortunately loses the rest of that wave and i say that was a critical error because that wave went peeling down the beach again so uh, just a little connectivity but 
Uh, definitely going to get rid of that 177, Bo. Yeah. Stand by for Emmanuel's last wave score, a Spaniard in red. He's been quite quiet. He opened up with that 5-3-3, Mike, and here he goes, his second wave. He begins really good, bottom turns, and then that wave kind of doubles up, and it gets kind of funky and weird, doesn't it? Oh, it just ran off without him, too. Yeah, he might have had a, a little slowdown on one of those chops, and here's Jeremy Flores. This man does not slow down. Really quick, hard-charging style, very tenacious uh, dug a little rail right there, but comes out of it. Gets another bash to finish the wave. So Jeremy Flores looking to throw away that 4-5-7 and uh, retain the lead here. Well, that's his seventh wave so far. Something tells me he's not done. He's going to go back out for more, and we've got a replay. Last of yellow for Jeremy Flores. All right, so now we got the land angle. Puts one up there. Nice little slash to back that up. A harder turn right there. That's where he dug the rail but uh, finishes with a nice uh, 11 o'clock turn right there. Chance, uh, he's going to add to his wave, wave count and even move up higher. Oh, that's a 1 o'clock turn. Okay, here we go. We've got our Portuguese surfer on his fourth wave, Miguel Blanco. So, sorry, Bo. So, but Blanco's doing a good job of battling back. He doesn't uh, want to rest easy. He's in second place, but uh, a couple of good moves there, and his uh, polished approach is uh, really being recognized by the judges. I think they like the way he really looks smooth through his turns. He not only gets vertical, but he, uh, he, he gets out of the transitions really smooth. One minute, 50 seconds remaining. Heat number eight, final heat of round number four. Coming up next, the first of four quarterfinals. The final 16 surfers the men that have survived these grueling rounds all week long. And let's watch a series. This is our Spanish surfer, Yamano. Well, what's he got here? He's uh, driving down the line, really hitting it hard there at the end. Oh, this is a replay of the last wave of uh, Miguel Blanco from Portugal, really punctuating that last turn. So we'll see where the judges land on all this. I'm sure they're just making the replay machine is probably on toast right now. Point zero three separating first and second, but more importantly, Daichi, Daichi Tanaka now needing a score of a 6.05. Scores are coming in for his fourth wave, and it's going to be just under that as here he goes, Daiki up and riding. Well, Daiki chose to get one little uh, turn before the closeout, making the closeout maneuver a little bit light. And here's our man from Spain in red taking to the air, Let's see if he can pull this around and ride out. Now, obviously frustrated there. 40 seconds remaining on the clock. That'll leave on the outside Blanco and Flores. They're currently 1-2 in this heat. Well, still haven't seen the score come down for Blanco. His last wave was a three-maneuver wave. And uh, really interesting where Zach goes. He's currently in second place, so looking pretty good. But here we go. Here's Jeremy Flores. One click, gets down nice, a little bit of uh, rock and roll style there to finish that wave. Jeremy seems, uh, he's quite tired. I mean, he put a workout in there, about eight waves for Jeremy Flores. And the judges are playing cut, catch up, totally. Oh, they're playing catch up with everybody. There's the sound of the horn. We're gonna have a bit of a delay before we move into our next seat. There's the lineup for the next seat, in fact, We've got some replays for you, Mike. Let's watch one of Jeremy's last rides. So Jeremy sets this one up. Good little top turn right there. Hits it up and rock and rolls it. So a little bit of style there. This right for Miguel Blanco. Looks like he is taking to the air. Pumps it, grabs the rail, gets the transition. Pretty much lands that perfectly. So he is going to get a reward. He's got two good scores coming, Bo. Yeah, and Jeremy's got a good score. And don't count on Emmanuel from uh, Spain. He's... Still in the ticket there, and we're still waiting for it to see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven waves to be entered in. We're going to take a short commercial break. When we come back, we'll have results of heat number eight, round number four, and get started with our first of four quarterfinal heats. You're watching the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games live from Beirut. Don't go anywhere. Oops. 
Welcome back to the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games. And there's the beautiful lighthouse here in Bay Ritz. And on the Grand Plage, low tide conditions, high tide starting to fill in. And there's our first quarterfinal heat. Heat number one, Dimitri Ouvray from France will be in yellow. Pedro Enrique from Portugal in red. Yasmin Ramdani from Morocco in white. And Cristobal de Cole from Peru in blue. And we're still dissecting and watching the judges as they had to put in Diogo, a total of eight to nine waves playing catch up in the final two minutes of that heat. Right now, Flores is one, Blanco is two, and it hasn't changed. Could be a switch between first and second and second and first, but it looks like Daiki Tanaka is not going to be able to catch up to uh, Flores or Blanco or even our Spanish surfer. Yeah, it's quite a lot of a busy heat for our judges. The scores uh, are still uh, dropping, but uh, for the looks of it, it's going to be just like you said, Jeremy 1, Miguel Blanco 2. Or and vice versa. Or vice versa, yeah, you're right. But um, Daiki Tanaka and Imano Yeregi, well, Team Spain and Team Japan performed good nevertheless, but it's, uh, it's a pity to lose them so so in this uh, stage. But, I mean, you can't keep everybody till the final, right? The final only... Um, uh, ask for four guys, and uh, that's what we're going to get. But uh, nevertheless, it's always unfortunate, and it, we're always a bit sad to lose surfers who perform so good. Okay, J uh, Jeremy Flores on his prior two waves, a 6.63 and a 4.63. So he keeps that 6.63 with that 6.37, which was his fifth wave. Now we got two wave scores still yet to come in for Miguel Blanco. And see, there's Team France. This is the nervous time. You know, you've already done the work. But the Wait. judges have to play catch-up, and they want to get it right. But Jeremy, wasn't Jeremy safe from the start? Well, you know, you're never safe until the horn blows. And there it is, a 6.9 and a 6.57 for Miguel Blanco. And he does go to first place by .11. So Miguel Blanco with a 13.47 to Jeremy Flores' 13.36. And now Japan has bowed out. They were, their last hope was Daiki Tanaka. They had four surfers in round three, two surfers in round two. No surfers from Japan in the quarterfinals. Uh, on the other hand, France with the four surfers in the quarterfinals. They're the only team that's still alive that has not lost a single surfer if you count the women that went all the way to the final and went one, two. And we go straight to live action. That's Pedro Henrique from Portugal. Just a one turn, change his position a bit in the lineup. The conditions are still uh, here. We're still running. They're, the tide is still pretty low, so there's a lot of room, a lot of time to run these heats. Of course, we just now started the quarterfinals or round five, whatever you're pleased, whatever um, you like to call it. We'll call it quarterfinals, and we'll let the TV screen call it round five. That there. way we're both right. There we go. And uh, a great, exciting heat to start things off. Portugal, Morocco, France, and Peru. Uh, Portugal and France, uh, long-time rivals. Morocco, a bit of a rival with uh, France and Peru, a bit of an outsider. But uh, they won the gold medal um, last year, so you can ne never count Peru out, and especially with a surfer like Cristobal de Cole, who has been surfing so good. 
We have 16 surfers in the quarterfinal, four from France, two each from Portugal, Spain, Peru, and Morocco, one each from Mexico, Tahiti, Uruguay, and the United States. So we're going to go down to the beach side and check in with Anne Floor. With Miguel Blanco, you just took the lead of Jeremy, Jeremy Flores. What did it take? Uh, yeah, actually my last two waves were pretty much in the last five minutes of the heat. I got a little bit more to the left and yeah, found a little left, did three turns and then got this little right at the end, did an air and yeah, I was stoked. Because it was a hard heat, everyone was surfing good and the, the, there's so much current, like the, the child is just changing so much, it's, it's kind of hard like to, to get a little momentum. But yeah, I'm stoked, had so much fun out there. The secret is to stay always motivated all the way to the last minute? Oh, for sure. Yeah, just got to be enjoying yourself, having a good time in the water, and yeah, try to get the best waves, and try to surf as hard as you can. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thanks a lot, Anne, and congratulations to Miguel Blanco. I was telling uh, Mike, I was going, don't count him out. Even though Jeremy caught eight waves in 20 minutes, he was the busy bee out there. Miguel, he was patient. He knew what he wanted. He knew what he could do. And sure enough, he ends up winning the heat. He didn't really need first or second, but he wanted to win that heat. Yeah, of course. Everyone wants to make it to the next round. <clears throat> Not sure what's going to happen to uh, our uh, field because I believe we're going to start ha uh, seeing some surfers from different heats um, cross paths in the next few uh, heat, so I'm guessing that Jeremy will not surf with Miguel Blanco in the next heat. Yeah, they'll so be split up coming up in uh, quarterfinal heat number three and the quarterfinal heat number four. So uh, we'll see the seating as it starts to come up. Coming up in our next heat are Tahitian, Arijo, Tefafana from Mexico, Johnny Corzo from Morocco, Abuado, uh, and then Jonathan Gonzalez from Spain. And here we go. Cristobal de Cole up and riding on his opening way. Throws the tail. Look at spins that. it 180. Spins it straight back around. So good fluid transitional surfing there from Cristobal. And he's one of our most consistent surfers when it comes to this world surfing games. Yeah. Nothing major yet from Cristobal. He has been surfing good. Connecting some good turns. Doing some great performance and performances. But I strongly believe that he's saving his best for last bow um that turn i think it's uh, the start of uh, something that uh, cristobal will bring uh, to play in uh, the next few heats especially in the semi-finals and final if he makes it but this is do or die and uh, the level in these heats is just crazy look at that turn and the technique the rotation how he r managed it it was really really great and uh, again this is cristobal He's going for an air, isn't he? Ramping up, throws it, lands it, spins it. Almost a little hiccup there, but there you got to score that one. So two waves now for blue for Cristobal de Cole out of Peru, a former medalist back in the 2013 World Surfing Games in Panama when it was won by Sean Jobert from South Africa. Juan Carlos Gonzalez from Panama took second, and Cristobal de Cole took the bronze medal in 2013. Yeah, so Pedro Henrique up and riding. Whoa. No, sorry, this is Dimitri Uver up and riding. Uh, great surfing. So it looks like uh, we have to send a, a message to the people at the uh, Biarritz airport because uh, it start, it's starting to be, uh, uh, it's starting to come a lot of uh, action uh, in the skies here at the Grand Plage. But, uh, Bo, I was talking about the heat sheet and um, the, the path. Uh, that these guys were gonna face because this is exactly what I feared. Jeremy, by making that heat in second, goes to the third heat of the quarterfinals, which means he'll face Duvignac and Joanne de Roux. So France will lose a surfer in that heat. Yeah, well, we knew that possibility was gonna be there. You know, when you have these four man heats and only two can survive, and you got three of your teammates all in one heat. Um, you know, w maybe only one survives. Maybe, w you know, the other surfer. And who's the other It's Ituria, surfer? of course. Ituria. Yeah, Luis so Maria Ituria could knock out one of the French surfers also with the other two. So it's going to be exciting times. That's coming up in number two. And then we got quarterfinal number four to round out the day. So we're going to be ending earlier than normal. But uh, we got to make sure we get through these quarterfinals all 20 minutes in length. And here we go. This is Pedro Enrique from Portugal riding his third wave. Poor wave choice there for Pedro. He went for a foam climb, but the wave fattened up um, uh, uh, 
quite a bit, so he got out of there. But uh, you can see, I think you could see in that heat that Jeremy wanted to win, and that's why uh, Team Friend was so hesitant, like so anxious by the short break, just trying and listening. I think they were sure that Jeremy was going to make it, but he wanted, they wanted him to win the heat, and that's the reason why. Well, you know, the International Surfing Association has just done an organization that puts together world championships, and they've got more world championships coming up later this year, including the World SUP and Pro and Paddleboard Championships in Denmark coming up in September, the early part of September. Then in late September, they head to Japan for the World Junior Surfing Championships in Southern Japan, and then back in San Diego at La Jolla for the World Adaptive. But also, they put on clinics, judging clinics, surf instructing clinics, and they help promote and organizations. They recently went to Iran to help do surfing and judging clinics in Iran, one of the newest members of the International Surfing Association. And one of the most greatest things that the ISA does is they've given out over a quarter million dollars in money to the best junior surfers from around the world to help their education, their surfing career. Maybe they need to get books and backpacks for their surf gear and supplies. And some of the notable, most famous recipients of the ISA scholarship is a WCT surfer, Chelsea Tuac, last year from Barbados, and Carlos Muniz, uh, Munoz you know, from Costa Rica, the mayor of Jaco. I mean, he was a recipient when he was a young junior. And... Juninho Garcia, who's yep. in the last heat of the quarterfinals of this event. So, really exciting. And uh, I think uh, the uh, appliances for this year are already closed. You know, the winners will be announced soon. But, but as soon as they open again, uh, if you are in need of such a scholarship, you should go for it. Yeah, log on to um, isasurf.org and start getting your things together for next year, for 2018. Yeah, absolutely. Back-to-back -back waves, Pedro Henrique, Dimitri Uver. Dimitri starting off with a 7.5 great score. That was that big air that Dimitri did. Uh, meanwhile, Cristobal de Colbo, 6.67, a 5.33. So Cristobal um, getting that at 6.67 on that wave with the air. But uh, Dimitri Uver getting uh, the better of that exchange as we see the call once again. But these ramps, look how lovely they look. It's just a wave standing up. The tide is making it easier to land uh, those airs by smoothing out the landing with the white water. And this is back-to-back -back waves. Now it's Ramdani from Morocco, one of the two Moroccan surfers in the quarterfinals. That was quite a backside turn for him. And just behind him, it's uh, Dimitri Uber. Uh, yeah, Bo. let's watch him on the attack. He's going to go for the air. Full rotation, spins out of it, but can't surf out of it. He makes the 360 maneuver, but he can't surf out of it. And judges want to see the surfers complete the ride with full control. And semi-control was right there for Dimitri. Yeah, that's what happened in his last few waves. And uh, we're going to take a replay to Pedro Enrique's last wave. I liked how he connected the, these few turns. Look at the speed he generates. He released the tail a little bit, not feeling too confident to go for the air. And just behind him, Cristobal de Cole. That first turn was nice, a nice uh, second carve there, pushing the tail a little bit and wrapping up the wave nicely, Bo. Yeah, a combination of power surfing there from Cristobal. Here we go, live action. Pedro hacking a turn off the top. Not done yet. There's number two. Down the line, speed, floating, fence free, coming down. This is going to be a good scoring wave for our Portuguese surfer. And our judges have a lot to catch up to as there are a few scores still to come for uh, pretty much everyone in this heat as we see team from uh, uh, Tahiti um, wishing their good luck to uh, Arikoe Te Fafana. Yeah, Te Fafana coming up in that next heat. Of course, uh, Tahiti won a world championship gold medal with Hira many years ago. So Te Fafana wants to follow in his footsteps. And Hira came back this year in 2017 for this year's championship. You know what, Bo? I'm so ready to get surprised by one of these guys in the quarterfinals. Uh, it's true that we have some city surfers competing, but how great would it be to have someone not on the CT, like a, a rookie or something of that sort, win over all the CT guys? That would be amazing to witness. Here we go. Pedro Enrique on the replay. I love this wave. The combination of maneuvers, power, style. Watch the speed here and the light footness of his landing. Yeah, and the bottom turns so deep. He really squared off the bottom as we see Dimitri Uver doing a bit of that same type of surfing bow. Nice wrap around there for Dimitri. He's going to hit that section once again. And the last one. Oof. 
Well, there you go, consistent surfing. Remember, he has a one-wave score of a 7.5. Judges playing catch up here. Pedro Enrique has a 7.67 seven, and a 6.23. Cristobal De Cole, he's also in that upper age, uh, um, upper point scale there with a 6.67 and a 5.33. And there we go, our surfer in white, Johnny Corso, the young 18-year-old, Puerto Escondido native, representing Team Mexico in the quarterfinals. Getting pumped with some music, getting hyped, getting psyched, getting excited, get that blood flowing to really keep him moving. Things are heating up here at the Grand Plage Bow, and I'm really excited about the scores about to drop for Dimitri. And there's still a big one coming for a Ramdani for a backside wave. So the judges have a lot to catch up to, and uh, I'm really excited. I think this heat... Despite what's on our screens, I think this heat is way, way more open than it looks. How about two quarterfinalists from Morocco in this year's World Surfing Games? I'm going to tell you something. I'm really surprised, but thinking back at what some people that were at the European Championships in December um, told me, uh, I have to think about that and say that, uh, well, I, should ha I shouldn't be surprised because they told me. The guys from Morocco were smashing it. They were surfing so good. The, 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 the level, the guys that you never heard about, never saw surfing in your life, no videos, nothing, just going to town, doing some great surfing. So I'm surprised, but I'm so glad, Bo. Well, Dimitri Ovre is not going to be in third place for much longer. His scores for his fourth wave are finally get, catching up to the judges. Needing a 4-5-1 or more, and he can move into the top two. If he gets a 6-4-1 or better, he can move into the lead. Yasneen Ramdani from Morocco. Now he's on the ball. He needs a 5-6-8. He's in striking distance, and he's paddling, and he's riding. There, oof, That wave did look a little bit bumpy, Bo, so he, he uh, did good in getting out of it. But um, nevertheless... And there we go, a 5-4-3 for Dimitri Ovre from Guadeloupe from St. Bart's has now moved into second place representing Team France. So Pedro Enrique in first. Combination of scores of a 6-2-3 and a 7-6-7. Seven, seven. Dimitri Ovre in second needs a 6-4-1 to go to first. Cristobal de Cole, a surfer out of Peru, in blue, now needing a 6-2-7 to go to second place. And Yasmin Ramdani only needs a 5-8-1 because he's got a high wave and a low wave. The high wave is a keeper of a 7-1-3, but that low wave is hurting him right now of a 1-5-3. And you can see the difference in approaches, Bo. So Pedro Enrique and Dimitri Uvri opting to go for airs and a bit more faster turns. And then Yasin Ramdani in that 7-1-3, just two backside powerful turns as we see him paddling for this wave he had so uh, he had the fourth priority so no harm done there and a crystal ball the call playing the waiting game just really 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 waiting for something to answer back to that sevens that uh, everyone besides him has and uh, this is white up and riding nice backside turn wraps around on that second section the wave is standing up quite a bit he smashes that section another one and look at him go Bo. yeah he's pointing to the judges all right score that one that's my new backup wave, and he's going to go back out. Five minutes, 15 seconds remaining. Heat number one, quarterfinals of the ISA World Surfing Games. And let's watch Yasmin right now. I like that first turn. <laughs> he had to come back to the white water on the second one. And on the third one, a bit more pockety section uh, stood up. And again, and one more time. He only needed a 5-8-1 to go to second. So, whoa, it's going to be so close, Bo. Yeah, all these seats are so close. You know, advancing to being eliminated, 0.13 at this stage between Ovre and the Cole. So it's only going to get tighter when the Azim's wave comes in. Four and a half minutes remaining. Paddling with first priority is the man in blue, Cristobal de Cole, out of Peru. I don't think even uh, Enrique is safe in the first place because Ovre is going to be needing a really small score to go to second uh, if uh, Ramdani gets the score he needs, he needs a 5.7 to go to second. A few judges are not giving that score to him, but it might just be enough to move him to third. So for now, he's not getting the score. So he won't get the score either way, but uh, Ramdani, five, eight, three, he gets the score. I'm surprised. 
a 5.83. Yazim Ramdani now in second place. Dimitri Ovre from France in third, needing a 5.47 to regain the top two. And he just passes Dimitri by point. Zero three, a 12.96 to a 12.93. That's how close it is. And look, a 12.8, a 6.3 ride from Cristobal to Cole, and he'll be in second place. So 13.9 to 12.8, 1.1 1 .1 separates first and last. That's how tight this heat is. Yeah, that's that, that that's the situation. I mean, honestly, one of the best heats I've seen in the contest. This uh, is one of the closest and highest scoring heats that we've seen of the contest. This is Dylan Southworth getting uh, excited for uh, Johnny Carzo coming up next. Johnny will face Arihoe Tefafana, Buauda Abu Bakr, and Jonathan Gonzalez. Johnny Gonzalez. Uh, an interesting fact, um, Jonathan Gonzalez and Miguel Blanco last year had a final together in Zarauth, just uh, one hour south in uh, Spain. And uh, Jonathan won on that occasion because uh, Miguel Blanco had a priority in the final. Two minutes, 40 seconds remaining. Tight times right here with these servers. Who has first priority? Well, the man in fourth place, the man who needs desperately the wave of a 6.3. Could we be seeing our first French surfer being eliminated prior to the final? Dimitri Ovre from Guadeloupe, now needing his wave of a 5.47, representing his French country flag. Can he get that 547? And here's his answer. Yeah, lines were coming. I could see them from far over. He needed a 457. The, the wave that, that wave, wave looked like something, but uh, he hit the sandbag way too fast and closed out on him. So now he'll sit a bit more to the inside. It looks like he has seen something. You can see him paddle with some intense bow. And there he, there it is. Is he going? He is. And he's up and riding. And he's out. And he's out. He just wanted to see what that wave could offer up. If it opened up, it didn't open up, but at least he had a shot at it. One minute, 40 seconds remaining. First priority, Cristobal de Cole waiting patiently on the outside. He's been in fourth place for a while, needing a 6.3. Dimitri Ovre from France, now needing a 5.47. He is .03 behind our Moroccan surfer, who now has just taken second place. There's the man with priority, Cristobal de Cole from Peru. Does he take it? Yes, he does. Yeah, and we are back with live action. 6.3. The wave is slowing down. He's eyeing the section. He's going for an air. Will he land it? He does. He does land it. And now he needs a 6.3. Will it be the score? As we see, Ramdani fighting back. Uh, the call just trying to hold on to that second place. And look at that. Look at who has first priority, Bo. Is First it? priority is Dimitri Ovre, but there's 50 seconds remaining, and Ovre's on the outside. He's kind of looking around. He's paddling around. He's sniffing. He wants something. And we see Pedro Henrique up and riding. Nothing major there for the Portuguese surfer. Cristobal de Cole's last wave is going to be a very important one. He needs a 6.3. He only did one air. A similar wave he got earlier to in this heat only got him a 5-3-3, but this wave is better. As we see, Dimitri Uver now going right. He needs a 5-4-7. That's it. That's if uh, Cristobal doesn't get the score. So Dimitri is trying to get something going, Bo, in the last few seconds. Yeah, and this wave's not offering up any scoring potential right now, and he realizes that he's down and out. There's the final seconds. Being counted down by our beach announcer, David Prescott and Guillaume. So there you go. Our first French surfer out of the World Surfing Games and has taken up to the second to the last day for this to happen. Yeah, this is the French surfer out of men or women because... Uh, even all the above. All the above. I mean, it's uh, incredible stuff coming from Team France. Scores are coming for Chris Tubalbo. And uh, for the looks of it, it's not going to be the score he needs. Yeah, he needs a 6.3. We just need one more judge to lock in there and... He's got two wave scores. So a 6.13, that was the wave prior, so his fourth wave score. I tell you what, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll have the results of quarterfinal heat number one and get you into quarterfinal heat number two. You're watching the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games live from Beirut, France. Stay tuned.
My damn it, monsieur. That's the famous lighthouse of Biarritz. And that's where we are. We are in Biarritz, in the southwest of France, in the Basque region of France. And we are here for the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games. We are in the quarterfinals or round five, whatever you prefer. And uh, this is heat number two. Buawud Abukakr from Morocco. Arihoe Tefafana from Tahiti. Jonathan Gonzalez from Spain and Johnny Corzo from Mexico. These are the four guys in the second heat. My name is Diogo Alpendre alongside Mike Latronic from uh, Hawaii. We can see the flags waving high down there in the beach. And uh, Pedro Henrique with his sister uh, just behind him. And look how happy he is. That's the winner of that last heat. Uh, making sure that Portugal has a surfer in the next heat. That's the physio. Uh, from uh, Team Portugal and uh, everyone looks really excited that was a tough hit and uh, Pedro Henrique coming out on top he's a former he was the European champion in 2015 and uh, now in the water we have the current European champion in Jonathan Gonzalez you followed that uh, hit pretty closely right next to us Mike oh, what a hit yeah great heat of surfing and just a uh, uh, indication that fantastic surfers are losing now because other fantastic surfers are performing in front of them and that's just the way it's going to be for the rest of this contest yeah and that's what you kind of expect when you start getting to these uh, stages of the competition right we are in the quarterfinals so uh, we hope that uh, some of these guys really stepped up their step up their game and uh, one of the guys that did that was Pedro Enrique who is down there with uh, Anne Flor ready for the interview Pedro Enrique, how exciting and stressful was this heat? Uh, it was super hard. I knew like they, they were surfing pretty good before, on the hits before, and I knew I, I need to find the, the, the real ones, you know, like the good ones. And I was really lucky to, to find a nice and clean wall. I could surf like more easier and more calm. And, uh, and then I made the hit, so pretty, pretty stoked. And getting rid of the first Frenchie? Yeah, he's also my friend, so it's always hard to be, to know like pass through to friends, but that's the way how it is. Like it's a contest, and I find the wave now. Next time is him, so that's the way how it is. So I'm pretty happy to made my hit and to support my team to you know like made some points to them. And, like it's super nice. How exciting is it in these world surfing games to be uh, surfing by team and having that little rivalry be between the countries? Uh, it's fine. Like it's it's cool. It's nice because we always like competing and fighting for something for us you know like for our career and now we we not it's not about ourselves it's about the team about the country it's about the, the you know like the, the everyone so it's that's that's a different feeling and it's really nice i like a lot huge congrats on making it into the, the semis thank you Woo. <laughs> thank you back to you guys and we're back after a great interview with um, Pedro Enrique and uh, a great stuff coming from uh, Team Portugal and uh, Team France also, but now neither of those teams is in the water. Tefafana, Corzo, Abubakar and Gonzalez are in the water and it looks like it's going to be Corzo with the first good wave, Mike. Yeah, Johnny Corzo from Mexico in the white. Looking pretty strong early on, but uh, here is blue. Jonathan Gonzalez actually just getting vertical on Whoa. that first section, following up, really surfing strong on his uh, opener right now and uh, ending well. So Jonathan Gonzalez <laughs> from Spain says, uh, yeah, we may be in France, but uh, can I borrow some sugar, neighbor? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jonathan Gonzalez, our current European champion, uh, showing the world why he got that title, the biggest of his career, um, as we go to a replay of uh, Buawuda Zabukaku's first wave. We've been seeing him do these kind of turns all contest long. Lost a bit of control there, Mike, but he's still going. Yeah, I, I actually didn't really like that first turn. It kind of looked like a fakey, but he followed up with a couple of nice turns. So. Uh, the Moroccan surfer has been really consistent, but uh, you know if he's going to keep pace with these kind of turns, he's going to start to need to really drop to the bottom and hit it a lot harder. Those uh, mid-face turns off the top are not going to get the kind of um, scores that we're going to see 
as soon as John Jonathan Gonzalez actually had a throwaway before this wave. But my guess is we're going to see one of the highest scores we've seen uh, in quite some time, maybe all day. That's just my call. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised either. And uh, But it looks like Enflor is down there with a special guest once again. And Flor, who do you have with you? With Fernando Aguirre. Fernando, you've been working really hard for a very long time to get the surfing into Olympics. How much does it mean to you to have the World Surfing Game here in Biarritz being the first event along with the Olympics coming up in Tokyo 2020? Yeah, for me, you know, it's a, I don't even know how long it's been. It's too long. It's been like a long paddle, I say, like 22 years paddling to get on the Olympic wave. So it's very exciting, but I'm very excited to be here in, in France. Biarritz is the birthplace of surfing, so it's like so, so appropriate. And especially for me, Biarritz is special because part of my family came from here to Argentina 150 years ago. So suddenly I'm like, birthplace of my family, birthplace of surfing. First event in the Olympic cycle, the World Games, record amount of countries. You know, we went from 27 to 47. I was talking today to, to the, one of the vice presidents of the International Olympic Committee, a Chinese gentleman who was looking at everything and says, Okay. This is amazing. Second you need to stay in the games. So yeah, I don't have any problem. We stay in the games. So it's very exciting. But for me, the games themselves, Olympic serving themselves, are a vehicle to promote the sport uh, to, to, to people that don't serve, to, to become friends with the ocean. There's so many people in Africa, in Asia, in the Caribbean, Latin America, that have this beautiful uh, um, competition place, uh, the, the, the playground doesn't need to be built, it's done. So I think, you know, it's, uh, for me it's very exciting to get people excited with the ocean and, and I'm glad that the IOC has seen that and I'm glad that all the surfers come here, I'm glad that the WCL understands what the ISA does, that is, we promote the sport around the world in a way that is fully for everybody. The ocean doesn't have owners, so surfing doesn't belong to anyone. The ISA is just sailing on the ship towards that Olympic wave. But also, we are already in the Panam Games, and, and we're just talking today to the Moroccans and the South Africans, they wanna create the, the African Confederation. So for me, it's, it's all win-win. It's layers of, of stoke, layers of happiness, layers of, of, uh, of salt, salt, uh, salt air, salt water air in people's life. Huh? How exciting and magical is it to see all those nations all around the world reunited here in, those, in this event, the World Surfing Games? How much excitement did you see from all the competitors from all around the world? How much emotion does it bring in? Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, it's, every time I get to, I get to go and, and do the opening of the, uh, the opening ceremony, I get like goosebumps, you know, and I see the, the, the sun, the box, suns of the world, build, 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 build the layers. Uh, look at that, wow. We are here together. It's like you know, it's like a big family. You get together a couple times a year. This is this one of those big time for the family, for the surfing family. Is it a big step into the future of surfing? If I what? Is it a big step into the future of surfing? Yeah, I think you know, a, a good surfer is properly seated, properly on the board, but scrutinizing the horizon. So I like to be. If my my feet are not on the sun, I want them to be on the board. So. So I'm always looking forward to the next wave. A quick word to all the surfers around the world that are watching this competition. Adios, stay wet. And if you don't go surfing yet, go. And if you don't know how good the ocean is, let me tell you, it's the best. Muchas gracias, thank you very much. Back to you guys. Epic interview with the president of the ISA. Uh, if you don't surf, go, get wet. If you don't know about the ocean, he'll tell you about it. Well, you know, and hats off to him and the ISA. They really introduced surfing in a big way to so many countries. I mean, of course, these countries with these beautiful coastlines, but the ISA has really slammed it home. And slamming it home right there is uh, Ari Iho Tefafana really doing a number on this wave, looking good. It's a replay of what we missed during the interview and uh, scoring well. Meanwhile, our surfer from Morocco floats the boat right there. There we go. That's what we're talking about, dropping to the bottom and hitting the lip. So uh, Abukhar from Morocco getting a uh, good off the lip at the end of that wave. Mike, you're from Hawaii. You live uh, close to the north shore of Oahu. Um, you surf there often. Uh, you, of course, have surfed Sunset in the past in Aleiva. You know the, the rip currents there. Um, how long was uh, your longest paddle 
uh, on the North Shore? Actually, it was this year. Was it? Yeah, um, it was a pretty big late season swell. Waimea Bay had about 65 guys out. So I opted not to join the fray. It was about 20 feet, though. It was, it was good, but a lot of big boards in the water there. And uh, one of my friends asked to uh, see if I wanted to go charge with him at an outer reef. Um, I'll just say that it's on the North Shore. It's not any of the known outer reef spots, and it was a brand new spot. I've been on the North Shore for 39 years. I've never paddled out this spot, but it took me 25 minutes just to get out to the lineup. That's how far out we were. Well, uh, Fernando Aguirre has been paddling for 20, paddled for almost 22 years to get surfing in the Olympics. Ah, <laughs> I see where you're going. He's out <laughs> paddled everybody. <laughs> That's where I'm going, but uh, good to know that you're still out there on those outer reefs and uh, still charging. How long was the board? Uh, I had a uh, nine-footer. Couple of good waves right here. So here's uh, Johnny Corzo trying to get rid of that 3.0. He's got a 6.0. Wants to back it up, but here goes our Tahitian off the bottom, Whoa. slamming that section. Coming up, let's see if he's able to hold on. Unfortunately, not able to hold on to that second maneuver. And uh, Tefafana is impressing me quite a bit. It looks like he has quite a head on his shoulders. His interviews have been very telling. And that first turn on that wave, it looks like the ocean has a bit of size to it compared to what was uh, on earlier. And uh, yeah, quite a heat. Yeah, well, the incoming tide has definitely uh, sparked up a, a little more power out there. The waves are more organized. We still have that um, riptide going through the lineup, but it's just... Uh, more readable, more legible and tangible for the surfers now to put together uh, scoring rides with several maneuvers. And a couple scores being dropped. Remember, Jonathan Gonzalez, he's got an 8.0 for that uh, really good left-hander we saw uh, at the opening of this heat. He's just backed it up with a tiny little 2.8. But uh, he's in first place, not sitting safe because Johnny Corzo only needs a 4.88 um, and he's moved into the lead with his last score. Yep, 5-1-7 for Johnny Corzo, jumps in the lead. So now Abu Bakr needs a 6-2-1 to go over Jonathan in second. And Arivo Tefafana got a 3-4-7 on his last wave. Now he's in third, needing a 5-4-8. And uh, on a personal note, it's so good to see Gonzalez putting a contest together. Uh, it doesn't happen often because I f uh, although he has been surfing um, good throughout all his life, of course, uh, I don't think he ever, ever feels really comfortable competing. I think he, he what he really enjoys is surfing good waves. And uh, competing is just a, a career. And for Jonathan, you could always see the potential, but sometimes he wouldn't put it together. He wouldn't concentrate. His technique would go out, and uh, it's great to see him. I, I got news for you. Uh -oh. He has not put it together yet. He is in dire need of a backup score because he's got a two-point... 8-7 as his second score. Uh, he does have first priority at the moment, so uh, this will be his clutch moment. Can he put it together and put something on the board with that 8.0 to move into the uh, seven, uh, quarterfinals? Yeah, that's very true, but still being here in the quarterfinals is already a good result. Um, and of course, being a European champion is a great result too. I'm sorry, to move into the semifinals then. That's right. That was Jeremy F Flores on our screen. We're going to have uh, three French surfers in the water next. It's going to be Vincent Duvignac, Joan Duru, Jeremy Flores, and Luis Maria Iturria. That's the lineup on your screen. In red, this is Vincent Duvignac. Let me ask you this. Do you kind of forebode a feeling sorry for this poor third, fourth man out there surrounded by French surfers? I don't want... Uh, I, I, I think he doesn't want us to feel sorry for him. I think he wants us to get pumped for him to try and be a bit of an upsetter. Okay, well, there's Jonathan Gonzalez. He's just finished a, a fairly decent wave. It's not going to go as high as the 8.0, but it certainly should uh, eclipse that 2.8. Seven. I'm not a judge, but uh, judging by those two turns, he's going to put a nice backup. And uh, here is 
Tefa'afana finishing off a right hand. He needs to drop a 3.47 to improve his situation and get a 5.48. But uh, that was before Jonathan Gonzalez's last wave. There are still the odd right out there, but the major scores in the last few heats have come from the left. That uh, last heat had a, a lot of surfers getting scores on the left, and it, in fact the best wave of the heat was on the left of this heat. That's the eight-point right for Johnny Gonzalez. But uh, let's take a look at the replay to uh, Johnny's uh, last wave. Yeah, he drops to the bottom, does a nice turn to start with. Nothing too crazy, but comes up here, hits it hard, comes down a little late, but rides right out of it. So he's going to get a decent little reward. And here is uh, Tefa'afana. He needs a 5.48 to move into second, but look at this. He only needs a 5.78 to move into first, so really it's Corzo's position that may be more in jeopardy because he's lacking uh, uh, a very high score. He's got a 6 and a 5.17, so uh, he needs to ramp it up to hold on to uh, the advancing spot. 2017 ISA World Surfing Games supported by Visa, Roxy, the French National Center for Development of Sport, the Nouvelle-Aquitaine region, the Basque Country, the radio, France Bleu, our France TV sport, and the media partners, Surfline as the official forecaster also, Surfers Magazine and Passion Extrema, and of course, the, an event presented by the French Surfing Federation and uh, put on by the ISA. So we are really excited about the uh, being here and the last two minutes of the heat, scores are dropping 6.1 for the last wave of Corzo, jumps in the lead. So now Tefafana needs a 6.71 to go second. We are still waiting on Jonathan Gonzalez, wave. He only needs uh, 4.11 to go to first. And uh, taking a look at the first scores dropping for that wave we're waiting for, it's going to be that. So Jonathan is going to go first and Johnny second with Tefafana. And Boawuda looking for a score with 1 minute 30 to go. Yeah, let's go back to uh, what uh, Fernando Aguirre was talking about. One of my favorite things was uh, his mention of the sands of the world as a, a stark reminder that we are all together on this planet. I just love that about the ISA. I really do believe that um, what we're doing here with surfing and bringing people to the ocean, bringing ocean awareness. And that's one of the big uh, 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 forces behind getting to the Olympics. I, I truly believe that Fernando and the ISA want the world to acknowledge the ocean in a, actually in an attempt to maybe save the planet. I think if more people get involved in nature and understand how beautiful it is and how simple it is, it's simply going to resound uh, and, and uh, permeate our, our culture more so than it has. I agree with you on 100%. And uh, that's the message that I and Fernando want to give out to the world. And I agree with that message 100%. As we see, Jonathan Gonzalez on a bit of a, a victory lap. Red uh, is out of that wave. The score is yet to drop for uh, Jonathan Gonzalez in the last few seconds of the heat. 10 seconds to go. And uh, I don't think Tefafana or Abubakar are going to make it because uh, it's a 5-4-3, so Jonathan. So he goes first, Corzo second, and the scores coming for red, Tefafana and yellow, Abubakar, are not scores that can move them up in the heat. So Johnny Corzo from Mexico, the 18-year-old, a bit of a surprise here at the event we're going on a short commercial break and we'll be right back with that lineup three french surfers one uruguayan and two hawaiians for the call that's bo and mike we'll be right back
Welcome back to the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games. We are in quarterfinal action number three. There it is. And you're not seeing blurry countries right there. That's right. Three Frenchmen are in this heat. Joan Deru in yellow. Jeremy Flores in blue. Vincent Duvenac in red. And Luis Maria, he's from Uruguay. He'll be in the white jersey. I'm Bo Hodge along with Mike Latronic. We have two more heats remaining in today. And after that, Mike... We have three heats remaining tomorrow, the semifinals and the final. Well, certainly seeing the uh, rise of action lifted here in the later part of this day. And here is a man that only knows action. Mr. Jeremy Flores off the bottom, off the top, throwing that lip away there, just cracking another move. Very, very tenacious, hardworking individual. And uh, he kicks out, so striking first blood, just a few minutes elapsed. We're already looking at 17 minutes, 40 seconds remaining. Vincent Duviak, Luis Maria Itra, Joan Duru, and Jeremy Flores. Here we go, replay. This will be Jeremy Flores on his opening right. And I love that backhand slap. Here he goes once again, wraps it again. He got off on a slow start in his round four heat, but not here in the quarterfinals. He's starting out good. Yeah, very, very strong statement there for his first maneuver. And uh, look at this beach break. It really looks fun right now. The tide is filled in perfectly. Uh, we've seen it just get better and better for the last uh, hour, hour and a half now. And during the high tide situation, this beach will totally be underwater. It's amazing. It's a four-meter tide, about 15 feet. And here we go paddling. This is our Uruguayan surfer, Luis Maria. Well, kind of looking a little sleepy on the first part of the wave, so he elects to uh, just uh, can that effort. Let's go down to the beach side and check in with Ann Floor. Take it away, Ann. Jonathan Gonzalez, how fierce was that battle for that spot into the semis? Uh, this this was my best hit of conditions and fun wave, so I was happy to, to surf in the mid-tide. It was uh, one, of, one of the best hit I I done during the year because of the wave, so I was stuck to surf with good, good conditions and make a tough hit. What can we be looking forward to the next round? Yeah, semifinals will be super hard. I think they will be few city guys and and the others are very good too. Pedro Enrique is there also surfing really good and I hope uh, this Santa Romero make the semis and we can fight for the final. Good luck with that. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Back to you guys. Thanks so much. And Mike, it's been some time since we've seen Spain in the World Surfing Games and just being just up north from uh, their country here in France, it, it was a no-brainer for them to send a full team up here. Yeah, and what a team it has been. They have just really taken this beach by storm. Uh, I'm sure they surf it quite a bit. And this looks like Jeremy Flores has gotten himself another wave, staying really busy, getting really vertical on those turns. So uh, Jeremy Flores looking to put in another decent score. Yeah, he opened up with a bang, a 6.5 on that opening ride. Remember, he was groveling in the round four heat. Spain now with two surfers in this quarterfinal. Now they have a semifinalist. So now we're working on the second half of the quarterfinals. And Mike, your scenario of possibility of a heat with three Frenchmen came to fruition in the quarterfinals. Yeah, well, uh, I'm not sure whether to feel sorry for the odd man out in uh, white. We've got a surfer from Uruguay, Utrea, or will he rise to the occasion and uh, establish himself as a real threat going into the semifinals? Mike, I would say without the priority system, I think he would be ganged up on. But now with priority, 
I don't think there's there's any problem with him catching anything. Very good point. You know, in years past, I'd say that, uh, you know, the, the French surfing machine is going to sandwich him in. But, uh, you know, maybe nerves are striking him a- anyway because uh, second wave he's ridden here without uh, a, a substantial score. Well, Vincent Duvinac right there in red taking a look around. He has yet to catch a wave. He's kind of honing in on this one. Let's see if he gets it, Mike. Yeah, well, this is, is kind of an internal battle now between the three French surfers. We know that at least one of them will be advancing. And if two of them advance, you know, I, I think the target on his back is Jeremy because, you know, Jeremy has been uh, the performer from France, representing the fr- country of France for many years on the Pro Tour. And, uh, you know, to take out Jeremy here would be a feather in their cap. But then again... They want, you know, the goal is not to take out your teammate, but internally, I'm sure there's got to be some allocation uh, brain space given to that. Well, Jeremy Flores is backed up as six points. In the lead, surfer in blue, Jeremy Flores with 13 minutes remaining. This is quarterfinal heat number three. Still yet to come, our fourth and final quarterfinal featuring Vincent Romero, another Spaniard, Eugenio uh, Ursia from Peru, Miguel Blanco from Portugal, and Jordi Collins, the last American remaining in this competition. Yeah, looking forward to that heat as well. You can see now the ocean, It's so, sometimes it starts to stall a little bit as the tide starts to rush in. But uh, nonetheless, there's a good amount of swell in the water, so we're going to see good breaking waves. We can see uh, Jean Duru Moving over to the right of your screen, he's got himself a double up. It looks pretty good, Bo. Yeah, let's watch Juan on the attack here. There he goes on the open face. Nice carving turn. Cuts back into the whitewater section. On the attack, right through the floater. Light-footed. And there he goes. Here we go. Our surfer out of Uruguay on a fat wave, so he'll just kind of kick out of this one. And on the outside, Mike, Duvenac. Well, Duvenac's looking at another good left-hander. This one is definitely... A bully little section to start off with, just really showing a uh, smooth, graceful style. So kicks out early. So the surfers are kicking out early a lot. I think that's a, a indication that the tide is filling in a lot. Yeah, I was just going to make that same comment. Watching the last three waves, it seems like the, um, the surfers aren't getting what they're, they're into. We're starting to lose the rock on the outside, starting to see a lot more water move in on the inside section. So... Uh, this tide is filling in. We have two more heats to finish up today, and once that's all done, then we'll have our final three on standby for tomorrow. When the call is, we haven't been told, but once we know, we'll let you know. We can always post it at isaworlds.com. Well, really, really uh, nice to see uh, this much swell in the water still, Bo. It was uh, very, very uh, telling the other day when it went completely flat, so... Really blessed right now to see Biarritz showing good form. And uh, look at this little uh, wedge coming in. Well, Team France won a World Surfing Game back in the 80s when Lacanau was the host of the World Surfing Games. They were posting a picture of uh, all the 80s garb that they were wearing back then. And taking a look since back in 2009, more of the modern times of the World Surfing Games, France has only finished second in these World Surf Games since 2009. That was the year Jeremy Flores won his World Championship gold medal at the ISAs in Costa Rica. So you know they are going for Team Gold and with their performance of their women already and all four of their competitors in this quarterfinal, it looks like they will have possibly the gold medal because they've been the first, the most outstanding and the most um, you know, best performing uh, nation so far this week. Yeah, no doubt. So... Uh, you, you saw Luis Marie Utria on that last way finally get a turn, but uh, by his body language, he's sort of, uh, I don't know, losing uh, mental steam. I, I think he needs to really focus on resetting and finding those waves that give him the opportunity. He's in this game. He's had a lot of good uh, rides, and you know he's made it so far in this competition with excellent surfing. I just think mentally he uh, may have uh, stumbled. Well, you can see the tide starting to move in, like you said, Mike. So it is playing a factor starting here in heat number three. We've seen it more in this heat than the other heats. You see White, he's really paddled himself down to that left-hand side. 
So he's trying to get away from the three Frenchmen who are kind of pretty much hanging together. You can see Jeremy Flores and Vincent Duvenac. They're together, and that's uh, Joan Derue off on the right-hand side on the north side. And our Uruguay surfer, he's going to paddle all the way down to the south side. Yeah, real interesting choice there. I mean, we have three locals in the water, and uh, obviously they're going to sit in the spot where they find the best possible scoring potential. With the priority system, uh, I think he's taking a real chance by going off on his own and uh, trying to find a, a different scenario. I mean, look at these uh, lefts just heaving. Juan Deru taking to the air, hard landing, unfortunately getting exploded. Here we go, Vincent Duvenac on his right hand, forehand, punts in air, digs in the nose and goes down. So got some amplitude there, but he came down nose first. And on the outside, Jeremy Flores. Well, thus far, Jeremy Flores just showing why he is on the world tour, just super polished, uh, put together, putting together a heat strategy that is really working. And uh, he's come up with that 6-5, that 6. And my guess is the amplitude on those last two turns is he's going to climb higher. And there's Joan Derue on the paddle back out. He's sponsored by Volcom. Jeremy's got a quick silver. And we see Vincent Duvenac with his rip curl. So very well balanced team here. Here we go. Vincent Duvenac taking a look. And all the hard work France has put in, not only hosting this event, but picking their dream team. And they're seeing three of their four men in this quarterfinal. It's got to be exciting for them. Yeah, and Duvenac just uh, took that wave off of Joan Duru for a beautiful backside snap. He is uh, looking to hold on to his second position. And with this wave, I think he's going to solidify it, Bo. This wave is just giving and giving. A little bit of a bobble there at the end. But uh, that should be uh, really one of the best waves ridden uh, between second, third, and fourth place right now. Well, Mike, you were really ecstatic on uh, Jeremy Flores' last wave. Taking a look at our stats, our highest one wave score belongs to Bianca Butendag. She had a nine-point ride on the first day of competition. Look at Juan Derua, how easily he pulled off that maneuver. Well, he's definitely working on another score here. A little click at the end, whitewash climb. He's still gaining points. He hasn't stopped surfing, so... Uh, this wave uh, will definitely uh, be better than that last throwaway he got and finishes with another good shore break click. So he's going to run down the beach. But, yeah, look at that score coming in for Flores. Yeah, Flores, this is going to be possibly the best one-wave score we've seen in the contest. Definitely in the excellent range. We need one more judge just to lock in their score, and then we'll pass that score to you. But how about Joan Deru? He's back in the game. Yeah, we'll take another look. Now, here's Jeremy Flores. So hard off the bottom, even harder off the top. The second term, turn even harder. So just putting so much power and grace into his surfing. You know, those first few waves, he got under his belt, and now he's unleashing. Well, there you go. A 9-3-3, the highest one-wave score of the ISA World Surfing Games. And here's Joan Deru with his rotation. Yeah, Juan Deru's gotten a good wave here. I think, you know, the score's not going to go crazy. It was a smaller wave. Uh, he did that air, beautiful rotation. He worked it all the way to the beach. So my guess is it's going to be average or above average. We'll see how the judges play it. And here goes uh, Solo Man down the beach. Uh, this is Utra from Uruguay trying to find the answer here on this right-hand peak down the beach. Yeah, Mike, I totally agree. The waves are smaller there. They don't offer all the juice they are on the northern side of the point. Yeah, well, those, uh, the, those sections that um, Jeremy just had, that's what allowed him the amplitude to get that vertical backside hit. I mean, obviously, the skill that was employed by Flores was important, but you, you can't get that kind of uh, maneuver unless you have the canvas to do it on. And here he goes again. Jeremy Flores dominating in this heat with a 9-3-3, a 6.5, and he has a six-point ride as a throwaway at this stage. Now, he's been on the poster. He's been in the lead at the press conference, heading up Team France, saying back in 2009 when he won the ISA gold medal, it was the highlight of his surfing career. And he was, he said it so emotionally. You know, everybody was feeling chicken skin when he was given that speech? Well, you can only imagine that he'd like to repeat that feeling right here at home, uh, surrounded by French 
uh, people from France. Last year, Team France in Costa Rica made podium, but they made the copper. And you know Team France, not happy with that performance. And this year, they came with their dream team with two WCT surfers, both on the women and another two WCT surfers on the men's side. Yeah, no doubt they, they're not messing around. Very, very proud country of France, and their performances have just been outstanding. I mean, there's no doubt that the level of uh, French surfing in general has risen. I, I, I'll be completely transparent. Ten years ago, I used to ask myself, where are all the French surfers? They have this amazing coastline of beach breaks, and uh, I just don't know where they were on the Pro Tour. I didn't really see him emerging. Jeremy Flores, originally from uh, Reunion Island, but now we're starting to see uh, a huge proliferation of uh, great, great talent um, coming out of France. So uh, the next few years, watch out. Remember last year, uh, Charlie Martin was part of Team France. I mean, those guys couldn't even qualify for this year's team. They, they were the alternates for this year's team coming into Bay Ritz. There's Vincent Duvinac in red, and Joan Derue has passed him up with that rotation wave of a 5-9-3. Well, yeah, duvinac has got a 3-8-3 sitting in his score line as his backup score. So three minutes left, Bo. I think uh, the fight right now is for second place. We see our surfer in white. I wonder if that's for the next. Still fell far south of the competition area. Yeah, hard to say, but very, very consistent peaks coming now at this uh, left-hander. Looks like uh, Joan Derue's got himself a nice wall. It's going to go pretty fast, so he's going to dunk under. That's not going to help his effort. Floor is in first, Derue in second. Duvenac needing a 4.44. And here we go. Our surfer from Uruguay has made his way back out to the point. So he's bailed that south area. He realized the, the energy just wasn't there. And I think he's just overwhelmed with the situation. Yeah, I mean, he left the feeding trough, basically. He went out to pasture to find some of his own greenery. And uh, unfortunately, um, a pack of wolves have descended. And they're just chewing away at uh, these beautiful left-handers. Let's look. At the replay, at Jeremy Flores' 9.33, Mike. All right, so he gets ahead of this wave, really just straight off the bottom, straight off the top, and then comes down, slams it even harder. So uh, Even know, over rotating that second turn, too. Fantastic. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. See Surfer in red there, Vincent Duviak. Now last year, the highest person on Team France was Dimitri Ovre, and he was in 16th overall in the men's open division in Costa Rica. So they have improved leaps and bounds in one year, and especially as host. Well, it's a great sign of determination, resilience, and uh, proper uh, heat management and planning. These guys have really come, brought their A game, and have made very few mistakes. Just under a minute to go. France is going to go one, two, and three, but more importantly, they go one, two into the semifinals. Here's a last ditch try for our surfer out of Uruguay needing a seven, six, eight. Well, you know, he's doing good on this wave, and this is finally he's able to showcase some of those beautiful backhand hits we've seen all contest long. I have no idea why he chose to abandon this left, but uh, you know, uh, you gotta, you gotta uh, go down with the ship and, and stick to your game plan, I suppose. Paddling around, high tide moving in. We have one more heat to go. Quarterfinal heat number four on deck. 15 seconds remaining on the clock and the celebration of France going one, two here. This is exciting. Here we go, Jeremy Flores on the victory lap. Yeah, Flores just uh, earning some more backside snaps under his belt. I wonder how many hundreds of thousands of backside snaps Jeremy Flores has done like that, especially coming from uh, St. Lou and Reunion, but uh, putting together a great heat. Three heats today he surfed, so he's a busy guy. He's going to rest well for tomorrow's semis and finals, hopefully. There you go. The lineup for our last heat of the day, quarterfinal heat number four. We're going to take a short commercial break, and when we return, our final heat of day number seven of the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games. Stay tuned. We're live from Beerus. i 
Well, there you go. A beautiful day in paradise. We're in the southwest region of France in the Basque country, known as Beiritz. And we're down to our final heat, day number seven of the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games. I'm Bo Hodge along with uh, Diogo Alpendre. And we are in heat number four, round number five, quarterfinals. Either way you want to slice it, this is it. Let's introduce our surfers. Vincent Romero from Spain will be in the red jersey, in the white jersey. Yonino El Soria in the white jersey from Peru, in the yellow jersey, Miguel Blanco from Portugal, and in the blue jersey, Jordi Collins from the United States. Yes, a very interesting heat. Uh, I think overall, I think Jordi and Juninho are the ones who have put the lower, uh, lowest scores out of the four. But you never know. I think on the, in the quarterfinals, it's like a new event starts because everyone steps up. Well, this man was lighting it up on fire. It was him and Jeremy Flores battling it out in that round four heat. Miguel Blanco from Portugal. And Portugal, their team this year, Diogo, I think massively improved from last year. You know, and they had fifth and sixth place last year, just missing the podium by one heat. Yeah, well, let's see what happens this year. Uh, Portugal already has uh, one surfer in the semifinal, so one heat away of the podium. And uh, Miguel Blanco, two heats from that. Uh, for him, to start off, he needs to um, make it to the semifinals. But uh, we never know what, how it's going to happen. Let's go down beachside with Anne Floor. Take it away, Anne. Jeremy Flores making it to the semis uh, with the best score of the competition, that 93. How does it feel to come out of the water and be able to showcase uh, the power of your surfing in that wave? Yeah, it's my first real wave that I caught in this whole event. So I'm happy I got to push a little harder my turns. But uh, oh, we're three French guys in the same heat. It's, uh, we shouldn't have been, we should have been two, only two and another one. But there's some weird, uh, weird result in the, in the round before. So I'm, I'm happy, of course, because we're two French guys to advance, but I'm, I'm bummed because I wish the other guy could advance. Vincent is a great surfer, and he de definitely deserves to go further in the event. But it's competition, and, um, and we just try to do our best. It's still you know, a beautiful day and a and, uh, good, uh, good crowd, so we put on a good show, so it's good. Is that and the beautiful part of this event and the harsh part of this event, advancing together as a team so far, having to uh, leave a teammate behind, but still like being really good friends and uh, getting to share that whole team result as, as a French team? Yeah, of course. My priority when I came to this event is to win the the uh, the, um, the French team win the nation uh, nation one nation one at the end. So we really want to win uh, the whole uh, whole together. You know, like I don't honestly don't really care about if I win it myself or or whatever. But as long as we we win the the team event. Uh, because uh, we've never done it. French has always come really close to, to winning the title, but ne um, never. So we really want to do it here. So that's why it's a bit, it's too bad for, uh, for Vincent because we could have put more points, but that's how it is. At least there's two of us left. Dimitri did a good job too, and uh, we're going to try to do our best. Of course, and even if he's not advancing further, he's still part of the team. So now you're going to have to go get the gold for him. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. We we gotta try our, our hardest, you know. Uh, every time we go in the water, it's to uh, to give a hundred percent, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll see what happens. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Jeremy. Merci beaucoup. Back to you guys. Thanks so much. And I've known Jeremy for a long time. Um, he's always been that humble. That's his personality. He's he's more about family and friends than more of about himself. And team in this but, case. But let me tell you, when he trains, he's 100%, 200%, 300% about being the best in the water. Yeah. He grew up being told that uh, he was one of the best and that he was going to be one of the best. So he believes that in that wholeheartedly. And uh, in fact, uh, he is one of the best. So Jeremy uh, wants team friends to win the gold and he's going to give his best to make it happen as we see Jordy Collins with a nice looking way in front of him goes big on the first turn doesn't lose the connection with the rest of the wave still going that section is going to stand up nicely look at that wow slashing turn for Jordy look at him go he picked probably one of the best waves we've seen today and he's still going 
Well, the last that. American surfer still standing strong from Carlsbad. Oh. And look at that, that flex. He knows he gave it every ounce of energy, and he didn't leave anything else behind. So that's going to be a reflective of a good score for Jordy Collins on his opening ride. Bo, for me, one of the best waves of the contest. For me, it has to go into the excellent range, but well, I'm no we'll judge. See. We'll see. We had a 9-3-3 from Jeremy Flores in the last heat, which passed Bianca's 9.0, which came early in the week when the women had dedicated the first three days of their competition. And why was that happening? Because usually the men and women will surf together and we'll have our two finals together of the men and women on Sunday. But the ISA, working with the WSL, wanting to be inclusive, wanting the best surfers to come here they worked with the as uh, the wsl and had them come in because the women of the wsl will have their fiji pro um four or five days before the men do so starting tomorrow the women will start their fiji pro that's right and a exciting uh, moment for women surfing and uh, really good to see them uh do that as uh, the conditions are going to be tested soon by some of our staff i believe because we have we haven't finished this early and uh, there's still plenty of waves so yep have fun 12 minutes 15 seconds remaining vincent romero in the lead combination scores of a 603 and a 237 but we're still waiting for that one wave of jordy collins and anytime the judges take extra time they're reviewing those scores so it could be a good score yeah maybe i got overly excited with the excellence but uh I think Jordy Collins uh, surfed that wave, that left-hander, really nicely. I wish we could see the, the, the replay again. Okay, the score is in. A 6-2-3, a 6-2-3 for Jordy Collins, and that puts him in second place in striking distance of the lead. Now Miguel Blanco needs a 1-9-1 to get back up to second, and our surfer in white from Peru needs a score of a 474 and ask and you shall receive but first up this is Vincent Romero from Spain yeah we missed this one wave but uh, look at Vicente go just connecting a lot of nice turns some face ones uh, midway through those big leap ones but uh, Vicente getting a 603 in this wave and again the replay of uh, Collins thanks crew for uh, that and look at uh, him go that first turn was really good then a good wrap he waited a lot to hit this one section. A bit of a layback there. Snaps. And uh, he's uh, going to wrap up with uh, another kind of a layback turn there. Jordy Collins from uh, Team US, Bo. Watch the flex. Rrr. He was a little off balance on that first maneuver. He and was. I, and I think that calculated into the judges' score where you thought the judges might go excellent. He was a little bit off control. When the judges give an excellent score, they don't want to see any bumps or bobbles. There's Greg Cruz, Surfing America's managing director, and he's got a big job, not only the uh, World Surfing Games here in Bay Ridge, but he's getting ready for the ISA World Juniors, and pretty much this team is the ISA World Juniors. Yeah, pretty Everybody much. except for one. And then coming up in about two, three weeks, he's got the U.S. National Championships down at Huntington Beach and Lower Trussell, so that is one busy dude. Tell us a bit about how the, proce the, the process of a selection goes down in uh, Team U.S. Well, there's Whoa. many different re uh, regions in the U.S. as we're watching Romero. I think he surprised himself. He pulled himself out of that maneuver. I think you're right. I think you're right. We'll get ba right back to that conversation <laughs> about Team U.S. But uh, Vicente Romero going to the air, and I'm really excited. He was a uh, his, uh, his claim, no claim, was uh, really funny as we see White up and riding. Yeah, he's behind the peak here. A Peruvian will throw it up. He needs some more speed. He's kind of being dragged by the beginning of this wave. He opened up with a 1.5. So, Yanino finishing up. And you see the body language. You can just read them. Yes. Yes, you can. And uh, Team U.S., how does selection goes for an event such like this? Well, the United States is such a large entity. They have the East Coast Surfing Association, the West Coast Surfing Association. There's also associations down in Texas, the Gulf of Mexico. And they um, all combine at the end of the summer, or actually the beginning of the summer, for the Surfing America, where they take 
um, all the regions, even Hawaii, the Hawaii Surfing Association will send their delegates over there and their representatives, and uh, they'll compete at what is called Surfing America, the U.S. Championships. And there's the full rotation from our surfer, Vincent Romero from Spain, and another different angle there. I just loved his look right there. He didn't think he was going to pull it off, and surprise, 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 a 507. That matches up with his 603, and you think there's one more score to yet to be come in, huh? I think so, yeah. Okay. And uh, there so it is. Coming in at a 7 7 7. So Vincent Romero solidifies the lead with a 13.82 wave total. Now Jordy Collins needs a 7 5 8 to go to first, but he's yet to have a second wave, and he's still in second place. Miguel Blanco needs a 1 9 1, and El Nino now needs a 4 7 4. This is Miguel Blanco on his backhand. You can see that this left isn't as, as stood up as uh, some other waves we, we saw surf uh, in this heat. But to Miguel, just going nonstop there. I'm not sure if that's the 4-3-3 bow. Uh, we'll see in the coming seconds. So the U.S. surfing championships are under 18? Oh, no, no. They, they go up into the, um, the division I compete in, the Grandmasters, the, the over 50 guys. Wow. And uh, but uh, does that event also select the guys competing at this event at the games? Well, Surfing America is the managing governing body of surfing in the United States. So Greg Cruz has, you know, he has everything to pick from. I'm sure he has a committee that picks the the team also. But so. but results from the Surfing America contest weighs large because you're getting the best from all over the United States competing at one spot. And when you become the U.S. national champion, that is a very prideful uh, position. Of course. So it's not like the last four in the under-18 will compete, will be the four in Team U.S. As we go straight to live action with Jordy Collins. Oh, he over-rotated a little bit. But look at the scores coming for Miguel Blanco. Bo. Yeah, Miguel Blanco, he's going to light this up. Here he goes. Now you wanted an excellent score, Diogo? You got it. From per Portugal, Miguel Blanco, an 8.57. That puts him in second place. Our surfer from uh, Peru has now taken over third place with his 6.67. And Jordy Collins, now in fourth place, needing a score of a 6.68, and he's up and riding. Yep, but he's out of there. He isn't happy. Look at him. His body language, uh, talking loudly, and he isn't happy. Well, he's got one good score, but it's always your backup. You can't have a 1.57 as a backup. And l look at third and fourth. They've got good six-point scores, above-average scores, but their backups are in that 1.5 range. Yes. Yes, they are. So our Iberian surfers from just around the corner – taking the qualification spots so far and i tell you what it would help team spain and team portugal quite a lot because alongside france they would be the sole teams with two surfers am i right that's right because we already have one portuguese surfer in the semi-finals and one spanish surfer in the semi-finals and if the heat were to end right now france portugal and spain would have six of the eight spots in the semi-finals joining morocco and mexico as we see Jordy Collins going for a big air, it looks like that's his strategy in this heat, just going big and uh, going for a land. But for now, it's not really happening for him, so he'll have to keep on trying and uh, impress this big crowd here at the Grand Plage. Okay, we're down to the five-minute warning in this World Championship presented by the French Surfing Federation. Our great sponsors include Visa, Roxy, the French National Center for Development of Sport, the Noyville Aquitaine region, and the beautiful Basque Country area. Our official radio station, France Bleu, and our TV affiliate, France TV Sports. Our media partners include Surfline, the official surf forecaster, and also Surfos Magazine, and we can't forget Passion Extrema. So under five minutes to go, Ursia and Collins must not be too impressed by the scores they have so far, although a 6-2-3 and a 6-6-7 six, seven, six, six, seven is not uh, a bad score at all, but uh, with the scores that Vicente and Miguel already have, they have to step up their game uh, to impress these thousands of people at uh, the beach tonight. Today, sorry. Yeah, we're still daytime. Still <laughs> another six hours of light, so don't worry about that. 
But today we're going to end early, and we're going to set up tomorrow for who knows. It could be a 9 o'clock call. It could be an 8 o'clock call. It could be a noon call. It could be an afternoon call. But we'll leave that to the powers that be who know better than us. As we see Jardy Collins again, he's really focusing on these rights. Goes for the air, and now he gets the completion he was looking for. Look All right, that. you're not done yet, guy. You got to get back out there and keep going. All these guys have to keep going, like this man. Joninho Ursia catching that odd right, but there's a reason why it's an odd right, because usually they don't have a lot of potential. But uh, Ursia split the pick with Vicente Romero, so we'll stand by for what the Romero did on that wave and for the score of Collins, too. Because Collins was in need of a 6-6-8 to go over Blanco in second. And uh, it's a healthy score for just one air. But look at what's coming. Yeah. Talk about healthy. Talk about well endowed. An 8-3-3 for Jordy Collins. And he moves up not only to second, but he takes the lead. Accommodation scores for the young American, the 18-year-old, out of Carlsbad. An 8-3-3 and a 6-2-3 has him out of the blocks of elimination and into the advancement to possible semifinals. Vincent Romero, delegated from first to second place now, needs a 6.8 to regain first. Miguel Blanco, now on the bubble of elimination, needing a 5-2-4. And Yino, now needing a 7-1-4 to advance out. Good news for Miguel Blanco is that he only needs a 5-2-4 to go to second. And a displaced Vicente Romero. That score for Jordi Collins well deserved. That air was a, a pretty big one. And uh, the technique was great. The flax was great. And, uh, he tried not once, not twice, not three times, but the fourth try, he landed it. And this is Vicente Romero going for a turn of his own. I think he wanted that air, but uh, he didn't get it uh, nevertheless. Oh, this is Blanco going right. Surprised that uh, Blanco decided to use his priority on a right-hander, as we have seen that the left-handers are uh, giving uh, the surfers the best scores. That's what uh, he did on that 8.57, went left. Well, our Peruvian will have first priority here, Diogo, and he what will. will he do? He needs a big explosive score. He's got that 6.67, but let's watch the replay of last of Vincent Romero. Yep. I think he wanted the air, but uh, had to uh, go for that uh, lip uh, floater. He tried to get that inside connection bowl. There he is, just trying to get that score. But even Juninho, he only needs a 7.9. As we see, uh, Jordi Collins, again, this, this is that 8-3-3. Three, three. Yeah, his other aerials, he was digging in the nose on the landing. And this one, he got the nose free and spun it around. And let's watch Jordy Collins again, your new heat leader. Now he can do some power surfing. Here he goes, setting up, wraps a forehand turn. Look at that rooster tail off the top. Not done yet. A third one. Now he's feeling the good mojo vibes from that other wave. And he should have been able to complete that last ride. He's got to learn to really, you know, not always to go for the air, but to go for some solid, hard, surfing, completions, and surf out of these waves. I thought he broke his board for a second there, but uh, fortunately enough, he didn't. 20 seconds to go. There's a line coming. It's going to be Ursia in position. Oh, he doesn't go, but Miguel does on the left, and he needs a five to go over uh, Vicente Romero. Important way for the Portuguese surfer. The wave is flattening out a bit, Bo, so I'm not sure if this is the score that uh, Miguel needed. Especially when he fell off at the end. Final seconds, and there's the horn rounding out quarterfinal heat number four. And Jordy Collins from Carlsbad will live another day, final day, semifinals. Congratulations to Jordy Collins. He didn't try once, but he, uh, on the, the fourth, fourth attempt, attempt, he found the wave that got him through. And Vincent Romero will join his fellow teammate as two Spaniards has made the semifinals. Yeah, great resu result for Team Spain. Like uh, we said in the beginning of this contest, Spain is a bit of a silent killer, and they, they have this result in them. They had it. They just needed an opportunity, a good team, and uh, a good result would come for them. And uh, we were expecting, we were kind of expecting them to wake up here in Biarritz. Yeah, Jonathan Gonzalez came out of semifinal number two. And I tell you what, Diogo, we're going we're gonna to take a look at some of the best waves of the day. But this heat, how exciting was it? Even Jordy Collins at the end scores a 6.9 to finish up 
his uh, his wave, and if he didn't fall off that last rotation, he could have been in another excellent scoring wave. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, we'll see what uh, unfolds for Jordy Collins and the rest of the Heat. Yoda, the are contest. you ready to watch some of the best rides of the day? I am. Let's take a look at it. Let's go for it, man. I don't know about you, Diogo, but I'm going surfing after watching that. Oh, absolutely. Great uh, job by the Action Sports production crew. And uh, Bo, uh, a short, intense, and a well-deserved uh, day of action. Yeah, day number seven of the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games has just concluded, and we're down to eight surfers. Eight surfers and two semifinal heats. And it looks like we're going to have an early morning call. The exact time still has not been uh, uh, penciled in yet. I'm Bo Hodge. This is Diogo. And welcome to the wrap-up of day number seven of the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games. So, eight surfers remaining. We can tell you two French surfers, two Spanish surfers, one each from Mexico, Portugal, Morocco, 
and the United States. Yeah, super exciting to see Morocco and Mexico in the mix. Um, Johnny Corzo and uh, uh, um, Abu Bakr uh, doing a great job in this event. Of course, young guys, they're both under 18s. So, uh, well, Yasmin made it. Was it Yasmin? Yeah. Wasn't it Abu Bakr, though? No. Oh, that's great. And uh, meanwhile, uh, Team Spain with Jonathan Gonzalez and, uh, of course, Vicente Romero also putting on quite a show. Portugal with Pedro Henrique. And then in this last hit, mm -hmm. Jordi Collins with that big air getting well, the, the, the get-go. He had to pull the Hail Mary, and it took him four tries until he did. And that all of a sudden, he found his mojo, and he found his groove. So congratulations to Jordi Collins. The United States lives for another day, and so do we. We're down to three final heats and a big day coming up tomorrow with the grand finale. And don't forget the closing ceremonies and who will win the team gold here in France. I think you might know, but we won't tell you because <laughs> you're going to have to watch at isaworlds.com. From all the staff here, from Fernando Aguirre, the president, and all the great people, Bob Falso, the director, and Evan and his staff over in the media office. For Mike Latronic, I'm Bo Hodge and Diogo. We say au revoir and aloha till tomorrow.